Hello. How are we doing? Sorry for being a little bit late. Uh, so today, we're continuing on kind of the stream that I just did in Satisfactory last week, which was doing the cosmetics for the Iron Factory. My attention was pulled away in that stream by a lot of different things. Upgrading the Quartz Factory and the power, and then we were trying to troubleshoot power and make sure it was working. It's actually all fine now, so we can just kind of focus on pretty much just doing the cosmetics for the entirety of this video, and maybe... Maybe if we wanted some variety, we can always hop out, do some hard drive hunting, or start thinking about um, how plans are going to go in the future. Uh, kind of a weird small thing is that I bit my tongue <laughs> just before the stream, and I have like one of those tiny little tiny little cuts on the front of it. So I feel like uh, I'm going to sound weird sometimes, or certain words I'm going to be like, ooh. Anyway, we'll see. Hope everybody's doing good, and thanks for hanging out and stopping by this chill, nice chilled out evening weekend stream, or sorry, uh, afternoon weekend stream, at least where I am. Uh, all right, we good? Oh yeah, I actually didn't get my music ready. Let me get that up and running. It is the perfect way to spend a Saturday morning. Craft. Oh. <clears throat> Just bear with me one second. Should have had that ready. Got the alerts working from the previous stream, so happy about that. At least, um, things will be popping off if, uh, people get memberships or donate or whatever. Because I was really annoyed last week that it didn't work, but it should be working now anyway, I think. Ooh, and one last thing then to do. Turn all of these on. Alright, that's just for me. Alrighty, good. Alright, we can properly start. So, um, this is the save file that I actually gave out for people. So, um, I don't have anything on me right now. Yeah, but I left everything in here. Right, so I'll just take all of that. I meant to do a little prep before the stream, guys. I didn't. Um, I knew, generally, last night what I'd left the place at, but I was gonna just get a few extra things set up. Uh, my sleep schedule was disturbed, so I actually only woke up a little while ago because I had to get up uh, earlier this morning and I took a nap. But uh, feeling good, feeling really good. I just need to build up my energy. I got my G fuel. Well, it's not G fuel. I got my gamer subs, and uh, we just need to get what we need to. I'm just trying to think what I'm going to need first, or what we're going to do first. It's mostly just still, yeah, material changes. I think. Coated concrete and the sort, so plastic and that kind of stuff. Take on some plastic, we'll take some co uh, regular concrete, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'll just, once I just get some inventory, I'll just quickly check in on the chat. Now that you guys have had a moment to catch up. Steel for the material changes, because we're going to be using grip metal in a lot of places. Uh, and then I think I'll just need concrete, right? I think so. Maybe get a bit more. All right, let's uh, let's go with that before I never. I mean, I'm I'm gonna inevitably say I need something else, such as silica would be a good one to bring as well. Oh yeah, one of the things I had actually um, written down that I thought we could do is maybe do some of the road signs. That could be kind of a fun small thing to break up the stream as well. All right. <clears throat> Which flavor gamer subs? I'm drinking anime girl thigh, which is a great flavor. It's kind of like a, if you've ever had a Solero ice cream. That's kind of what it's like. It's sort of a creamy orange flavor. Not sponsored. Wish I was. Really, really. If you ever see me sponsored by gamer subs in the future, you know I've made it because um, just one of those products I really, really, genuinely, really like, and I really liked G Fuel before it, but I prefer gamer subs. Hey Arth. What is it? How is everybody? All right. I wanted to ask: Is the where? Yeah, it's it's on. I got it now. The Minecraft music. How do you um? How do you stay from boredom and burnout when playing? Well, I play a variety of different games. I don't just play one game, and I think that's um pretty key in not getting burnt out. Also, I only do one video a week in the game, um, so I kind of it's a bit different for me. You know, I'm a content creator, so. I have the luxury of saying, like, well, this is part of my job. I do enjoy the game. Trust me, I wouldn't play it if I didn't. But, um, it's a bit different for me knowing that, like, I can take a slower pace and go, like, okay, I'm going to sit back and track everything and write down all the production documents, build a big planner, because I know other people are going to see it. There's another payoff that I get 
forget about the ad revenue or the content, you know, the work side of things, but just knowing that lots of people are looking to watch it, I've got a different incentive structure behind doing anything in the game, right? So I know that like, oh, there's people that want to see these different things and I get a, an extra satisfaction on making it um, really organized because then people are like, oh, cool, it looks, looks really organized and <laughs> they, they think it looks good. So it's a little difficult for me to say, like, if I didn't have that, would I truly be doing the same stuff? Probably not. I think I would probably be a lot more messy. I wouldn't probably track as much stuff as I have. I wouldn't know what every factory is doing. I wouldn't have balanced my power network, probably, to be like quite, quite flat. Not completely, but pretty flat. Maybe if I got really into the game, I would start doing that. So I don't know. I don't know. It's a tough thing for me to say. My answer for a regular play player who wants to avoid burnout is to just take smaller breaks away and play other things. And then you'll probably find you have a desire to come back. I also think it does help. Writing things down and knowing what everything makes is a great way to avoid burnout in the game. That, this whole series was sort of started on the basis of how do you avoid burnout, actually. And one of them is that I think it's good to design factories that can be upgraded for the future. So this one and this one and the modular frame factory actually cannot. But the other ones can. So the copper and criterion factory, it's a future proofed factory design. The coal plant is as well. And so is the quartz refinery. And the biofuel, not necessarily future proof, but it should never change. Uh, whereas these first three, they are of their time. It could be seen that maybe far into the future you could maybe tear them down. I doubt that'll happen though, but the whole point is if you, I found that I was getting a little burnt out in my first series when I was like, oh, I'm producing 300 steel or something. Now I need 500 and I, you know, this whole factory was built with Mark 1 belts and stuff and now I need to go in there and update it and add new machines and then that means destroying walls because I didn't plan for bigger rooms. So I found that um, for me personally, avoiding burnout, you can avoid burnout if you plan ahead enough. Obviously you're investing more time at the, in the front, but that way if you take a break and you come back, it's so much easier to upgrade a build or to know what you need somewhere else because everything's just like written down for you kind of. So it might sound like a boring answer, but if the, the more organized you are, I think the less inclined you will be to having burnout um, because you're sort of investing in your future, what, your future self, where if you take a break, you come back, you're not gonna get confused. You're not gonna go, ah, oh, screw this. Have to build the whole thing again and just start all over again. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my general answer for that. Anyway, uh, repeat that please, gamer girl what? So the um, gamer subs, is a brand of uh, energy drink, right? It's like a powder that you mix with water. Uh, and it's, you know, it's got vitamins or whatever else, and it's just basically caffeine and flavoring. <laughs> it's really, really nice though. The flavors are really good, and it does have vitamins and things. There's no sugar, so you don't really have this like crash. You just sort of get a caffeine boost, and it slowly wears off. Really nice. Gamer Sups is one of the unique things that they've really weird flavor names. So. I'm just looking over now here at my collection. One of them is called Emotional Damage. Another one is, m one of my favorite ones is Gamer Fart. <laughs> I couldn't have to reach for it. Guacamole Gamer Fart 9000. Now that was done with a content creator called the Russian Badger. So he named it, I guess. And it's one of the best flavors, despite their silly, stupid names. Um, and that's part of the fun, I guess. So one of the, the ones I said I was drinking now is Anime Girl Thigh. So yeah, hell yeah, shout out. All right, I've stood around chatting like that long enough. Let's do things while we chat. So one of the first things I want to do here, uh, while we were on stream last time, I was doing Coded Concrete on the floors here and then some Grip Metal. So I'm just going to continue that around while I'm chatting and answering questions, hopefully. So, Or just, you know, chatting back and forth. Not a and a necessarily. So I'll just put this on one, put this on two. All right, let's do it. And hopefully I've got the inventory space now to carry this all out. <clears throat> uh, is it a pure recipe? Power plus water. Oh, powder. Uh, yes. This recipe for this iron factory, we could go over it in a m little while. Um, I mean, there's a full video on it, but we could bring up the... Um, I have the production graph or whatever, the logic production graph thing that I do. We could bring that up and see exactly what it makes and use see the recipes involved. But it is basically the pure iron ingot recipe. Um, with some other ones <laughs> to make the iron rods, the rotors. I actually don't think any of the other recipes are that different. Hey, thank you very much for becoming a ch channel member. Mark Parisi. Parisi? 
Thank you very much for coming, becoming a Tribune. Did that display on screen? I heard the noise, actually. It must have, yeah. That's good, because, yeah, they weren't working last week, but they seem to be working now. Right, so I'm basically trying to create a border to the factory that is the grip metal, if you know what I mean. So you've got your walkable area, which is the coated concrete, and then the grip metal is where you're supposed to... Maybe I'll put the modern railing there, so it's like a little fenced-in area. I'm just trying to think, do we need this area here? Yeah, this actually might be fine, because I might display... Have some display signs here that tell me what happens in this factory. So it could be a little open stage walkable area, actually. That could look kind of good. But we'll keep that in mind. Um, so this is going to get rid of a lot of the colors on the floors. Those are just really for placement initially. And they'll probably take the longest to just get in there behind the machines to do. I'll just go row by row, otherwise I'll get confused. So I'll just go up this row, I suppose. I did see there was one to my other side. I'll have to get that in a second. Is a joke about your energy drink? Yeah, no, they, they have wacky names. <laughs> um, don't know what I would call my one if I had one. As a content creator. I always think banana flavor is quite nice, but I don't know how it would work in a drink like that. Like if it could really work or if it would just be super artificial. I mean, I guess it all is. But yeah, I don't know. In Anno 1800, my guy's name was... Uh, Hans von Schlong, so it could maybe be Schlong's, Schl the Schl Schlong's banana or something, I don't know. <laughs> There's something there if I thought about it longer. Um, I need to expand out my chat, it's too small to read, hang on. I like that you called me Daza, Gaza. I'm playing long your series, loving it, thank you. Have you thought about the small item icons in Factory, in, sorry, have you thought about the small item icons in Satisfactory? I think it'd be good in the vids. Oh, actually, well, the reason I have the big icons is for the vids, because people said they couldn't see the icons, so. Uh, that was that goes all the way back to, like, episode one of my original series. I decided to make a lot of the UI bigger, mostly as a viewer-friendly thing. Now, I know that you have to scroll, so the argument can be made, well, I can't see the full inventory. I, sp I don't really think you need to see my inventory, <laughs> but, um, that often. But yeah, I think I'd rather the icons be bigger, just so people can clearly see everything. Uh, a lot of people watch on phone. It's kind of interesting. Even a game as involved as this, people watch it on their phone, I guess, when they're sleeping and going to bed and stuff or whatever, put it on in the background and kind of half watch it, I guess. I don't really know, but all I know is that it says something like 30% of people who watch these videos watch it on mobile. Uh, so considering that, I think um, bigger icons is probably better, although I know almost every other creator just is the other way, so I guess I'd have to run a poll to really know. Or just ask people in the video and see what the comments say. Alright, that's that done. So the ones underneath the machines are going to be a little tricky. Oh no, these are okay, because assemblers are quite wide. It's the constructors that make it tricky. And then I was telling people in the previous stream that... There's a kind of a color scheme going on. Depending on what the product is that's being made, it has an associated color, and so do those machines. So you should be able to track the color back to the thing that's been made. So this is like a blue belt. It has a little blue stripe on it. It leads back over to the blue section. So that's kind of my idea for like following things around. We were playing with it in the stream before. Which was to say that we could draw painted beams that could be colored. So that you could follow on the floor a sort of a rainbow pattern. Sort of like you see in hospitals and airports and things. But couldn't really make the logic of it work. So I ended up not doing that. I'm on mobile currently, while my son has a drumming lesson. Nice. Oh god. Loud. Although you said lesson, is he going out for it, or do, or do you have a drum kit at home and the teacher comes around? I never, um... My dad's actually quite into music and instruments, he used to be a drummer himself. But, um... They were very much the type of parents that were like, no, that's we're not gonna have that like in the house, it's too loud. <laughs> Boomer parents. Um, I can't complain though. I wasn't very musically inclined anyway. I learned a little bit of guitar just by self-teaching myself. We had a guitar in our house. So I learned a little bit, but I'm not really big into music, so I was just more focused on video games. Alright. Alright, just one row of machines left to go. A 
watch all of your series in while in bed, winding down, and the odd time when I'm actually playing and need help, come to your channel. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I I mean, I find I watch a decent... I think... Actually, no, my girlfriend watches a lot of different videos while she's in bed, but I tend to, um, once I get into bed, I try to just get asleep as much as I can. But I'll push it really late into the night if he's basically a vegetable on the couch, just watching anything that, like, gets put on the TV. Um, but yeah, I need to be, like, um, basically sedated to fall asleep these days. And have, like, no noise, complete darkness in the room, that kind of thing, so I couldn't do it. But my girlfriend Rosie, she just pops on some AirPods or whatever and props up her video or her phone, just able to sleep no problem. And my my parents, funny speaking about my parents, I didn't think they'd be the type to ever do that, but they do that as well. My dad like watches his phone in bed and nods off to it and he's like, oh, I need something on to fall asleep to. I feel like that's a very um, smartphone era thing. Did people ever used to sleep with like the radio on? I don't know. Maybe. Some of these constructors can't quite get under them. I have to remove their tiles in a bit. Although there's... Yeah, just can't quite get under it. You can kind of get it from the side sometimes. Oh well, whatever. I'll just go over that bit again. Can't have the little bits of green popping out. You can even... I tried it before, like lock this as a filter and then just like kind of go through it. But it's just really hard to find it. Like I found the sweet spot there with one of them. Oh, no, it did work, actually. It did work. Can we do this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a sweet spot in there. Okay, maybe we don't have to remove the thing. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. She just followed my rose. Keeps it organized. Do that. The green. Okay, got that one. Yeah, that works. The filter works. Sorry, I know I'm, I'm moving around a bit twitchy here, but... At least we're getting it done. Anything left there? No? Alright, just a couple more rows to go. Well, actually, not really. Still got a few to, go, to do. <clears throat> anyway, uh, do they watch your videos? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, my dad kind of does. I think he just checks in, you know, he doesn't really watch them. He's not, they're not gamers, they've ne they never really understood or got games. And weirdly, you know, shout out to my dad if you are watching this, but he came over not that long ago. I live in the UK and he's, you know, they live in Ireland. And not that long ago he came over and I surprised him with Microsoft Flight Simulator or something. Oh no, I gave him a VR headset, that's what it was. And I was showing him Microsoft Flight Simulator because he's actually quite into that. And uh, he was like, yeah, 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 like I, I was in a simulator, like a real life simulator for this recently where the whole room moves like a cockpit kind of thing and uh, he has like an airplane a pilot buddy that kind of uh, showed him that the simulator simulator anyway long story short he was saying like oh I'd love to maybe get that like what would I need to kind of have that set up and I was like well you need probably like a B if you wanted it to look good you need a PC like a decent a decent PC and stuff so he's thinking about getting one but it's funny I called it a video game I was like oh yeah like it's a game you buy on Steam and he's like it's not a game it's a simulator. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> he, the way he said it was very like, I wouldn't be into it if it was a game. It has to be a simulator for me to like be into it. And I was like, all right, like, well, it's on Steam. And, you know, everyone calls it a video game. It's made by Xbox. <laughs> so, but sure. Whatever, uh, you know, whatever keeps you happy there. Just admit you're a gamer. <laughs> How do you open the to-do list? I can tell you now in a second. I'm just going through an autosave. Just hang on. Uh, it's good thought to say, can you paint the floors from underneath? But no. Because I have two layers of foundations. Um, so normally... See, I just do the painting to illustrate what I'm doing in videos. If I was building a factory of my own, I just wouldn't have that. So this is a very me problem to have to go over things like this. But to get the full effect of the factory, we'll have to do it. Uh, in just one second, I'll show you how to do that to-do list really quickly. So, how do you open your to-do list? It's one of the most common questions I ever get, and it's answered at the very first few minutes in my first episode of this series, because it used to be a, a question I get asked a lot. So, you press tab, you'll bring up your inventory, 
You could also press Q to do the same thing, but let's just say tab, right? So you press tab to bring up your inventory, and then you move your mouse to the right side of the screen until you get the shadow appearing. Once the shadow appears, you just click it, left click, and it opens up the to-do list. If you hover over the question mark, you can see the text formatting, and you can basically use that formatting to make a sort of to-do list. So H being header, uh, gives you a sort of bold header headline for it. So it's have it called Iron Factory and then just one little thing here called Cosmetics. And it just looks like that then. So if you want to edit it, edit it, you just open in, press X here, close it, and that's what we got. That's how you do it. Same is true for pri private notes. Private notes only you can see. Public notes the entire server can if you're playing Walton Line. You'll see recipes as well. So the other way you can access this menu is if you press Q to open your build menu, and let's say for some reason you wanted to build five constructors. You can hover over constructor, press the plus five times, or type in five once the number appears there. So you have to press it at least once, and then you could, for instance, put in like five again. And this will then tell me on that same to-do list the like everything I need. So it says recipe, constructor, five, assembler, five. And here's everything you'd need to make it. So when I'm planning out a factory and I know how many machines I need, this is how I work out what I need in my inventory. So I go and grab what I need, and then I go to start the build. This is, I think, one of the reasons why I often don't run out of things and have to run back and forth a lot, because I just know what's needed. Because um, I t typically forward plan the entire factory first. Alright, hopefully that helps. See you later, the legendary dirt. And you asked me what my favorite video game is that I've ever played. It depends, there's so many. The Last of Us, Rome Total War. Those are the, one of the first two that come to mind. Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. More modern gaming, Anno 1800. Frostpunk, probably be up there for me. Um, Octopath Traveler 2, oh my god. One of the greatest games ever, in my opinion. It just came out. But yeah, those would be some of my favorites. I like pretty much all games. I'm not really into um, Souls games. Those are the games I don't really like. Or MMOs. I'm not an online gamer that much. I'll play um, FPS games online a little bit, but I'm not really much of an online gamer. I'm playing Helldivers 2 at the moment. I'm a big Sony fanboy, basically. I buy everything that they do. Um, I used to always buy everything they did like day one. Now I kind of buy it whenever I have time for it. But Helldivers was one I actually bought on day one. Like I just knew I was going to be buying it. I played the original. I had no idea it was going to be as big and popular as it is now. I don't think anyone did. Um, but I, it, it's so weird. I played that on my own. Um, now, you can't really shut off people joining your game. There's actually no real way you can do that, no matter what friends will join your game. So there's nothing you can really do about it. But um, And I don't really mind. It's totally fine playing like that. But I, I'm not someone who parties up with people and has like a microphone and plays that way. Um, I like being a team player and everything, but just kind of keeping to myself. There we go. Alright, I think we're done, are we? Pretty much. There might be a few pockets of color on the ground somewhere. I think, I think we're good. Alright, so I can show you some of the aesthetic for this factory, and maybe we could go over the design layout of it just really quickly, just so everyone's up on the same page before we actually start. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll take a drink. <clears throat> Hot tip, keep a notepad or word file open and have the format for the checklist there, ready to copy into the to-do list. Yep, well once you do it once, it just stays there when you load in, so I, I never really remove it, but it's a good tip. I just always keep one line. That's why there's only one line right now. So I'll just copy and paste that over and over again. And uh, change the word, basically. Something else. Um, so just very quickly, let me open my Mila note, which has my production planning documents. Right, yeah. So I'm just going to blind people for a second here. Bonk. Uh, so this is the entire factory setup and layout. This is my just, it's a pretty basic iron factory, nothing too crazy with this one. Just wanted to make it look a little bit better. Hang on one sec. There we go, that's a burp. Anyways, um, 
Yeah, so we're starting off with five water extractors. We want to build that water extractor room, make it look nice. We have three iron ore miners, each doing 300 iron ore. So we can look at the first stage of the factory and then follow it around. So this is our first stage here. We have a bunch of um, refineries using the pure iron ingot recipe. So we're mixing water and iron ore together um, to basically get... It's like over 500 iron ingots out, so whatever these two numbers are combined uh, out into storage containers. And then some of the overflow goes into a storage container as well. Uh, yeah, so let's just take a look at that first part. So that's the downstairs part of the factory. Here we are here. So basically, there's our three miners. Over there is our water. Water comes down in the pipe mixes with the iron ore feeding each individual row. So it's one row to one miner. There's three miners, there's three rows. Simple as. The first machine is underclocked to 57.1%. All the others are running at 100%. Uh, the reason that we don't just make them all run at, say, 70% or something like democratize them all is because we want the top belt to have more on it than the bottom belt. The reason for that is so that we only actually have to use one overflow splitter. If you've got more traveling on the top than you do in the bottom, the bottom will never get backed up. The top will get backed up first, even though they're going into the same container. As a result, you only need one smart splitter to kind of merge onto its own overflow line with the others, and that's going off to its own container. The reason that we're sending an overflow line, not sending it all upstairs, is because we wanted uh, super even belts of 480 coming out. So by sending more into a container than it's putting out, you always get a nice continuous 480 line coming straight out of it, and that's going upstairs. So the remainder that I was talking about, that overflow line just goes up there. Uh, now, that's not moving because the rest of it's going into the awesome sink. So it's completely backed up at the moment. And that keeps the factory running. So upstairs, these three outputs come up here. Uh, you can see that other output in the distance, right? So that's just the leftover iron ingots just goes straight into a truck station to get sent off to some other factory in the future. The 480 ingot belts are all going upstairs. So one's there, one is there, and one is there. So we'll have a look at the first one first and then follow it around on the production diagram. The first one is going into a bunch of screw machines. So we have our storage container here. 480 out, split into 240, 240, and then split again into 120 four times. Each row is taking in 120 screws. The bottom two on each row are underclocked to 80%. Now, there's no reason for that. They could have all been underclocked to some even number, but it was just the, the way I did the blueprints. This was a blueprint, this was a blueprint, and then this was a blueprint. And because it was its own separate blue blueprint, uh, because these are... Sorry, a better illustrator will be this is a blueprint and this is the same blueprint. This is a different one. And because it's different, I made those 80% and that just kept the clock speed a little bit more easy to deal with. Um, but you could just have it set so that all the machines are the same, I guess. Anyways, what we get out of an, one line in, right? So we're sending in 120. We get 480 out. 480 is our max belt speed. So this factory was designed with a 480 belt speed in mind. That was the idea. That at this point of the game, you should have 480 belt speed if you're following along with me. And that way, that's going to be just our natural cap to this factory. Now, I've done a factory in the distance. That is... Its cap is the max belt speed of 780. So it was built with belts that we don't even have in mind. And the spacing and the amount of machines and the power consumption is all there for the future. It can't really be run properly right now until we build a dedicated oil facility. But for this one, just to keep it simple, I thought, okay, we'll just use 480. We'll take out the max out of the the iron ore deposits that we can actually afford right now. Anyway, that 480 goes in and it gets turned into rotors uh, and it mixes with the iron rods. So we have our 480 here, here, and here. So one of those 480s is getting made into screws, one of them is getting made into iron rods, and one of them is getting made into iron plates. Some of the plates are left over, they go into storage. This should really be replaced now with truck station because all these containers now have been made into truck stations and they have overflow splitters to go into awesome sinks and that's it that's basically it uh, we also have then the reinforced iron plates as well so the layout from a kind of bird's eye view of this place just hop up here will be that all the screw machines are there on my right the rotors are down there the reinforced iron plates are here the iron rods are there and the iron plates are here so iron plates are orange rods are green 
rotors are red, reinforced iron plates are purple, and screws are blue. And that's the, um, that's the layout. And that's everything this factory makes. And then I suppose just to show it, the very last thing would be then, they all have their overflow, their awesome sinks here. And here. So I think there's three in total that they go into. And then we have five, yeah, five truck stations down here. So this one is full up on rotors, reinforced iron plates, iron ingots, um, iron rods, and then iron plates. That's it. So it should be getting bright soon, but we can just brighten it up a little bit quicker ourselves using the Sky UI mod. And today, we're pretty much just focusing on the cosmetics. Uh, before I read the bottom of the chat, I want to get to some of the ones I missed. Uh, I've seen some setups for MS... Microsoft Flight Simulator, their actual cockpit. Yeah, I know, right? The level of detail some people go, yeah, it's awesome. I love seeing that kind of stuff for truck games and bus... Even Bus Simulator, people have done amazing things with those. Frostpunk, love it and hate it at the same time. Great music, though. Yeah, same. Did you ever play Command & Conquer? Uh, so I was really a PlayStation gamer up until... I dabbled with PC a little bit in like the late 90s and early 2000s, but not much. Rome Total War would be like the only PC game I really played. Um, I was more of a PlayStation console household, a console gamer. Still kind of am, to be quite frank. I'm not a fan of PC gaming, it's just pain in the ass in my opinion. But um, I do it to play some of the games that aren't on console basically. Anyways. So Command & Conquer, not really. Age of Empires 2 would be the one that I played a lot of when I was younger, and then Rome Total War. Never really played anything else on PC until Oblivion came out, so I don't know why, but randomly I got Oblivion. Uh, I say randomly just because it wasn't... It, I don't know why I just... Oh, because it, I was a PlayStation gamer, and it wasn't on PlayStation. It was only on 360, and I didn't have a 360. Um, so I ended up getting it on PC. All right, I'm just going to go grab some iron rods, and we're going to start doing the fences for this area. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so I haven't, I never really played it, so I'm not really... I like RTS games, I like realistic games and immers uh, um, immersive games, but I'm not like a competitive RTS player, and it seems like that's where RTS has gone in the last 10-15 years, and that's, in my opinion, kind of why it's dying. Because uh, they seem to focus more on the esports esports genre of things, and I'm sure that's like a healthy and vibrant community for StarCraft and everything, but um, it is actually for Age of Empires, I suppose, but not something I'm into. Uh, I much prefer more the idea of like commanding things realistically, and that's why I gravitated to Total War. But even that's become quite arcadey now, so it's like, uh, oh well. Kind of falling off the genre, in a way. Yeah, the Age of Mythology remake is coming. Yeah, I played that on... See, I'd never played those things. So, I used to review strategy games. Um, so, from 2017 to 2021, I had a strategy review channel. You want this cable now? That one doesn't work. Yeah, sorry. Rosie just came in. One sec. Yeah, see ya. Anyway, I used to review strategy games. So in my quest to fill any of the gaps of my knowledge in, in regards to certain games that I'd missed out on, I um, did something called Throwback Thursday, where every Thursday I would play older games on stream that I hadn't played before. So that's where I played StarCraft, and I played Age of Mythology, and I played Homeworld, and all the games, the classic RTS games, and Star Wars, Empire at War, all these games that I'd never really heard of even, properly anyway, or played, because I just had this big gap from that era. Um, and it was it was cool. It was enlightening. Some of them were really held up and were really, really good. I still felt like Total Annihilation... Or no, sorry, Supreme Commander is like this amazing game that I still feel like is still amazing and uh, hasn't really seen anything do that since. It was really cool, like, playing certain games like that and through a modern lens. But some of them I feel like didn't hold up, like... Star Wars Empire at War, I could see that Star Wars Empire at War at the time would be amazing. These days, I'm like, nah. But it actually has a decent community behind it, too. So some of it is just taste. Anyways, a bit of a ramble there, but yeah. Dyson Sphere Program? Yeah, I played that a little bit when it first came out uh, initially, when it first launched. And I thought it was really cool. But I just don't really have time for multiple factory games. Hello, Dr. Lol. Would it be, uh, would be cool if you spent more time walking around... In the beginning of your videos, you build awesome stuff that we only see at once. Yeah, I try to do, at the very beginning of every video, I try to have cinematics flying around the factories. So that you can see what I've made. And I also make them for the thumbnail and stuff to make it look good. 
But the video videos are so long, I don't really know if I should be adding more time to them just walking around stuff. Um, I feel like that would turn off people, but I don't know. Just wondering, should this go all the way across? Yeah, I guess why not. Now, you can create little breaks and gaps in it where it makes sense to go up, up a floor, get stairs up to the other part. We're not going to color it just yet. This could be coated concrete here. Probably go out to there, I think. Alright. Put more fencing down this way, then. Actually, that'll probably be metal as well, not coated concrete. I don't know, because the beams will be spilling over. I don't think they do that on the other side. I want to keep it symmetrical that way. Yeah, it comes out quite a bit. Yeah, I'll, I'll mirror that on the other side. No truck station for screws? No, this place doesn't actually make screws It, it like as a an end product. It makes screws as part of a... An intermediate product that goes into something else. So all the screws made here are consumed. Um, I actually have everything I make in the world right now here. This this particular um, text box, I guess. So we actually I make 120 screws per minute. Not much, but I do make some, and they're made over there. But this factory didn't need to make any on its own, basically. Not yet. Hey Topikin, would you recommend power sharding this factory in the future when we have Mark III Miner and Mark V Belt? This one, no. I mean, it, this is what I was talking about at the beginning, I don't want to be redundant and say it uh, over and over again, but basically, in my playthrough, what, what I'm deciding to do for this playthrough, for me, anyone else can do whatever they want, is I don't want to go back into a factory and change it. just want to build it once and be done with it. So for the coal power plant, that's built with the idea that that could be fully upgraded. Just all you have to do is place the machines in, like the... Oh, sorry, not just place... I place the machines in early. So all I have to do is power it on and hook up the uh, power. That's it. You over overclock the miners and everything should just work. Overclock the miners, turn on some water extractors, and that's it. Um, now, it'll probably never need it to be upgraded from Tier 2 miners to Mark 3 because that's such a... By the time we're doing that, the power we're going to get out of the factory would be really small. But the point is... If I ever go back in, I never have to redesign anything. So for the factories that I haven't done that, it would be the steel facility there, the iron factory right here, and the modular frame factory over there. So they have kind of set rates, and if I was to go in and change it, the whole thing would have to be redesigned, really, if you want to make it efficient. You'd have to be like knocking walls, expanding it out, building it taller, and I just don't want to do that. Like in my first series, I did that all the time, but I feel like that can cause burnout let's say and also just kind of give you unnecessary problems whereas if you build factories that last for the future then it's kind of one and done in and out and then i just need to upgrade it when i need more of that thing or what i'll end up doing is building another iron factory in the future or another modular frame factory or just you know bake the modular frames into whatever the build is that that's needed like i'll build a fused frame factory that has a modular frame component inside of it that kind of thing that's at least the way i'm playing you know um, and it's been interesting. It's also for uh, partly due to YouTube, right? It's like I don't want to necessarily do a video on, hey, I'm going back into my iron factory to build more iron. I feel like it's a little less interesting than just building dedicated factories from the beginning. Um, so that's the, the other reason for it as well. I'll just wait for this autosave and take a drink. Yeah, the modding community is really what kept, is keeping Empire at War going with the updated graphics and everything as well. That will be, uh, sorry, I read that already. What program is that you're using for factory planning? So this doesn't actually do planning. It's just a visualization tool. That's all it is. So for instance, you just drag out lines and connect them to blocks. And the blocks are whatever image you put in. The numbers, are, it's not even numbers. These are labels for things. I just put numbers in them. You know what I mean? So it's not a tool I would recommend unless it's, it's purely, I only have it here because I don't plan with it. 
I only have it here to illustrate a plan I've already made back to viewers. That's all it's for. And I pay for it. Um, it's not a free thing. It's like $9.99 a month or something. So that's what I use it for. And you can like export it to PNG. It's really a, a team-orientated visualization tool that I just like the look of. So I happen to use it for uh, planning. And I can easily just then change the background to like green screen and then just crop out just this. I'm overlaid on videos, so I would recommend it because it doesn't actually plan anything for you. It doesn't have any game recipes. There's nothing to do with satisfactory. I just thought I liked its clean design, so that's why I use it. All right, uh, speaking of, I'm just going to get rid of that in the background now. Okay, cool. Oh, all right. Why don't you use creative flying? Uh, just because it's... I'm not playing creative mode, I guess. Do I have a merch shop? No. I'm not interesting enough to have anything for merch. I don't even know what I'd put on it, you know. <laughs> I don't have any catchphrases, and uh, I don't feel like my channel art is like very robust, really. Figma is similar to that tool and free. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, so I'm still doing that. Yeah, so I think now we can expand this floor out a little bit. Because you can go over the truck stations, and I don't see why not. Could have it just go one layer, actually, and that would keep it the same as what's on the other side of the build. Let me just check the other side really quickly. Yeah, the question is, will I extend this out all the way, or will I have a little bridge? Well, so we're already connected to down there. Hmm. But then the bottom floor will come out a bit too far. Yeah, I think I'll just leave it as a little bridge, and we'll just have a little solid one walkway all the way around. Now, I'll be creating little gaps in here, and we'll have ways to get up and down to the um, railing up top. All right. Just wanted to create some symmetry. Hey, Peacekeeper. Your Manscaped ad, Manscaped ad was funny. Thank you. Yeah, I got a really great response. Glad people liked it. What if this would be your catchphrase? What would be my catchphrase? <laughs> the Manscaped ad or something? Oh, through Hypertubes? No, that's not going to be it. Remember when you said that? That was iconic, was it? It was iconic. I don't really remember. I, yeah, I don't really remember saying it, to be honest. I, I can believe I said it, though. I don't like hypertubes. But now, I'm, I don't know. I'm not really interested in doing merch anyway. Maybe in the future, you know, but, like, it's fine. Uh, it's not something I want to focus on right now. Alright, so the truck station rooftops are going to go here. I'm just trying to think if it should go lower than that. Because it's going to have skylights and ceilings, stuff like that in here. It'll look quite nice. Does it need to go higher than that? I don't think. I mean, it doesn't need to, obviously, but would it look good doing that? It might. It might look good matching the height of this floor, but we'll make this a... Should it be a two foundation at this point? Damn, I'm so indecisive. Now, I'll tell you what. Grab this. We'll just extend this out. That lined up? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that way I can have the top look a bit different. I'm just trying to think, what would the top be, though? I'll just use this one section before I put down loads. So the bottom section will probably be metal. That can look quite nice as a roof. And then every now and then there'll be holes in it for skylights. But there will also be lights. That's why I was thinking, should it go any higher? Because you want a bit more breathing room for the lights to shine down, maybe. But I don't really want it going any higher than the walkway here. And then what would the roof look like? The roof would probably just be the actual roof texture. 
uh, in the architecture screen. Yeah, here. Be like that all the way out. It wouldn't be yellow, but. Hmm. I don't know. I suck with doing roofs and walls. I'm just so bad at it. Never know what to make it look like. Uh, what would be my catchphrase? Can be your merch line. <laughs> Do you think Satisfactory will have multiplayer servers similar to the Minecraft community when dedicated servers are more supported in 1.0? Um, that's a tough one to say. I mean, there already is like, I don't know what you mean. What I don't know. Oh, you mean from Coffee Stain? No, I I doubt it. I doubt it. Sorry, yeah, not dedicated. No, I, I don't think so, but Coffee Stain aren't that big. I can't imagine they'd be doing that. That only ever happened with Minecraft once they, like, became massive, you know? Um, Coffee Stain don't even support more than just four players in the game, officially. So I just can't see them running dedicated servers. Like, I just don't think that would happen. Um, and hey, Quinlan, Jackson, Carver. And thank you. Thanks. I have updated my save file for download, yep, and it'll be updated after this as well. Yeah, I was, I was trying to think arched like a hanger as well. Actually, I was thinking the same thing, but I was trying to think how that would look next to the floor here. So if this is our walkable floor, and we're walking along, I think it might look weird to have the roof just like arch out and over. But I'm not really, and then I was trying to think, well, could it be a balcony? You know, you walk all the way out if you want, out to some outside kind of thing. So indecisive about it. And then, yeah, if it was like that. So you could have just like a concrete rooftop that you're walking out over with, with holes through it, and then you'd have the glass foundations in there to create skylights or just the um, the windows that we just looked at. It might just do that. That would be quite simple. It wouldn't, I don't think it'll look amazing though. But uh, yeah, you could have that hanger effect where it kind of goes up and over. Not even by a lot, but just by a little bit. Could look kind of cool. The walls are probably going to be metal, not concrete, for this build, I think. Alright, I'm just going to go with my gut, which told me not this. We'll have it be a thing that you can walk around on on top, so you can always just jump off and do other things. The architecture, there's the layered foundation. Concrete on top, grip metal on the bottom, that's the one. So there'll be some sort of exit that you can walk out here and it'll pretty much just be concrete but there'll be fences around it some stuff up here and then like every now and then glass frames in the floor we'll just see what that looks like you can do it kind of quickly and see if it works <laughs> the f hyper is I iconic really wow I can't believe I did something iconic. <laughs> I think it was probably just because it was so surprising. You have merch where it's like Terry the tractor just driving right towards you. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I would need some sort of artist to make some compelling mock-ups and then think about it. I did merch a long time ago for um, my old channel. And I don't know, I think about 50 people bought it. It was all right. Wasn't really worth the hassle, to be honest. Because <laughs> it takes a significant amount of business time kind of figuring that stuff out and setting it up. Does this need to come out down here? No, I don't think so. This will actually be a wall, not a rail. Let's make it open with no gates. Oh, and I like the gates. I like the gates. I just think it's cool seeing them open and close when trucks go through. But if they're a bit janky, then maybe we'll leave it open. Open is kind of cool as well, I, I agree. It's just a matter of yeah, personal preference. Another ship should do it. The UI of Anno Ship Management. 
You think you'll do many more concrete-based builds, like the Quartz Factory? Uh, maybe, yeah. I really like the um, the Brutalist-style build over there. We can have a look at it a bit later again. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I Basically, what I've been trying to do is just keep the series somewhat interesting, just doing different styles all over the place. So I never made a style for this factory in starting the build. That's why I'm doing one now after the fact, and I'm just kind of hodgepodging something together. Whereas with that one, you know, I made a lot of the blueprints beforehand because I knew I was going to do a thick, concrete, brutalist type build. Whoops, knocked over a drink. Anyways, all right. So, I don't know if this will come out over the front or not, but for now we'll just leave it like that. Alright, put metal walls on it to cover that bit up. And some signs to show which entrance is which, etc. So this will be the outside bit that people walk around. So inside, I'm going to have a look now at where the skylights could go. You could also add in the fluorescent lighting. Probably be good over these. That'll be one tile in. Just trying to see spacing-wise would that work. One tile in all the way down until the turn. Oh, it's perfect. All right, great. Love it. These aren't the skylights. These would be actual lights. And then the skylights would be in the center, which might brighten things up a little bit. The lights will be on either way, though, actually, thinking about it, but, yeah. In fact, the whole center strip could be a skylight, maybe. So, if the whole thing was like that, and then we made it glass frame... We have them doubled up, maybe. could do it that way, or you could do the, what's it called, like the actual glass roof, but that has little bits that stick out. Yeah, it's almost like I'd want that to be in the middle, but let's just try this for a second. That doesn't have the problem of having the, the line through the center. Yeah, as for a roof though, it wouldn't really be quite right walking on that, whereas on this it's totally fine, it's like built for walking, that's why the structural beam is there, so I guess I'd probably veto that straight away then. Now before I commit to destroying parts here, oh yeah, actually I just realized, couldn't can we do that even? Oh yeah, we can. Yeah, I don't think we'd actually notice that. Steven, holy crap, thank you so much. $50 super chat. And he says, Once you get blenders, you should check out the diluted fuel recipe for massive fuel numbers. It pairs nicely with recycled plastic and rubber recipes. Yeah, I've actually seen that. Um, I've seen the whole thing. It's been broken down a few times in my Discord, uh, as people have been mentioning it. How, I guess I can't quite remember, but don't you like... I guess you like package, I can't remember even how it's done, but at some point stuff gets packaged and then unpackaged. And I remember I worked out the exact rates for it and I was trying to work out exactly how much more you get out of the resource rather than just doing it. Because I was noticing, it's like there's so many extra machines. I was like, I wonder what the total power consumption of all those are. And is it worth it? And it is worth it, it's easily worth it. Uh, you get like three times the amount out of it basically by doing it that way. But I don't know, there's something in me <laughs> about not just doing it the way everyone else does it, you know? 
I'm kind of leaning more towards making turbo fuel, even if it's going to be less efficient. Feel like that's what I'm going to do, rather than just use diluted fuel, because everybody uses diluted fuel. I say everybody is in. It's clearly the most efficient way to do it, uh, but it's just like something that's been covered on YouTube quite a lot. Now, I'm not going to come up with some better system. It seems to be just the best you can get out of your oil. But I do kind of th think like, eh, it's not as fun designing stuff if you're just copying like what other people do. Even if you're making a new build around it, like you're designing the factory and everything. There's something about it that I'm like now like, oh, I don't want to be just doing what other people do. I'm a contrarian. So I'm thinking I might mo more go for turbo fuel. I'll try to do really large scale turbo fuel or something in the future. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused. I'm torn between efficiency and now, like, the desire for variety, I guess. No packaging required? Not the package diluted fuel, it's the blended diluted fuel. Okay, maybe you probably haven't looked at it properly then. Yeah, there was one in my Discord that was to do with packaging and unpackaging stuff, and... That was interesting, but I kind of thought, like, oh, it just feels like a weird workaround, but... Um... Clearly, lots of people think that's really, really good. For Certainly for the oil plant that... So, blenders are really far away from me, first off. So, I don't have to worry about this for a while. The first oil facility I'm going to be doing will be in the video after the next video, I think. Um, and it's going to be... Turbo fuel. So, I'll probably never do a normal fuel plant. I think I'll endeavor and strive for making a turbo fuel blend straight from the get-go. Um, because also, people are following along, so by the time I get to blenders, anything's on the table for, in terms of complexity, but still somewhat early in, the fa in this game, doing oil I feel like the oil video, you know, you'll have a certain amount of people that are playing the game that they'll be looking up oil and how to do it for the first time. So you don't want to turn them off with something that's extremely complex and unachievable based on the power rates that you'd probably be at in the game. So the first oil facility I do is not going to be something mega, but it will be making turbo fuel. That's the plan. Everyone like the stream? Hit that thumb. Dang it. You're damn right. Thanks, game, Bob. Made it to episode 100 on season 2 for Anno 1800. I'm definitely looking forward to the great war against Arthur. <laughs> Brings back memories at this point, though it feels kind of weird that I'm almost at the end of the series. Yeah, you're very close now. 30 episodes to go or something, I think. I think the added complexity of package diluted fuel is fun to tackle. Yeah, I mean, that's true. The complexity is... The whole point of the game is have, being fun to build. And if you get turned off by the idea of things getting more complicated, it's like, well, that's kind of the point of the game. <laughs> but I do appreciate that. Uh, anyway... Just really quickly, want to go and see. I think in my blueprints I've got fluorescent ceiling lights. Not showing me on the right side anything about them though. Why is that? Maybe it's because we searched it. Cosmetics. There we are. Two by two foundation of ceiling lights using the largest sign available. So that's what I'll be placing in there. Ah, but this was purpose built for something else. It's going quite high up. Oh yeah, this might not work actually. Hmm. Because the bottom layer would be the one layer and then this TV basically is the other layer. This would have to go quite quite high up to fit in there as just a proper ceiling thing. I thought it was only two foundations, but it's not, it's like four. Well, it's, it could be three. I don't know if I could squeeze it into one that's two. Yeah, I think it might be too big for that. Because if, even if that came down one, it would need to be three in height. Auto save. Uh, I have 120,000 megawatt turbo fuel using blended diluted fuel. Wow. Yeah, see, to me, that's stuff. I mean, that's great, genuinely, but that's way too far out for me to be worrying about just yet. Because, like, at the moment, I make, what is it, 100 and uh, 6,000 megawatts? 
down here, and we can double that next time we get Mark Three. When we get Mark Three miners, right? Because it's at Mark Two right now, so the most amount of coal we get out. We have six thousand megawatts. We can upgrade it to twelve. For oil, I guess it depends how much we want to tackle. But there are four deposits out here, and I want to use probably just one of them to make a power plant, and use the other three to make other things. Something like that. Maybe two for power and two for products. Because that's the stage of the game we're at. But then as we build that up and go further, then, you know, in the future after that, then it, we're going to be looking to source maybe the entire Spire Coast for, like, a dedicated fuel facility of some sort. Power facility, I should say. So I think, you know... I can barely even think about what's coming up in the next video, let alone pen down the line. But yeah, I think, um, you know, I never said that it's going to be the most efficient series. If people want the absolute maximum you can get out of a deposit and the biggest scales and all of that, that's not, that's not my game. That's, that's Kibitz or Let's Game It Out. Mine is more build along, break it down, smaller components. And maybe by the end, if we still have the viewers, then do some massive ones. But that is... That factory told me that doing that is kind of not a great idea, at least in the format that I do it. I mean, the views are actually pretty good in it, but by the fourth video, they dropped off quite considerably. I think there was like 80 or 90,000 views for each. There's four videos for that factory, and each one had something like 80,000, but then the fourth one had 40,000. And then after that, every video's only had 20. I'm hoping to get people back with like oil and things and trains and stuff, but I don't think building big is the answer. I don't know, maybe it is. Well, that's why I tried my old series, and it, the bit builds are ultimately too big to retain viewership because my videos are too long. And irregular. It's hard to um, know how long they're going to take. Uh, I want to see if I can put one of those lights in and just change some of the foundation work and see does it make sense. So, I guess we could just try it. 2x2 two two and a 1x2. We need the 2x2. Two I guess we only need one right now. Uh, and copper sheeting. There we are. That'll definitely be the future. I just wanted to make sure you knew about the blended fuel recipe. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I look up on Satisfactory Calculator different recipes. I never used to do that in my first series. I just kind of played the game and found what I found. But this one, I am trying to lo I look up online like, okay, what's the what are the potential recipes that could be used for something? Uh, so I will be doing that, yeah. So I'm sure I would have found it. But thanks for the heads up. And for the super chat, it was massive, so thank you. Uh... Right, so there's no vertical nudging, so... <laughs> Uh, I need to put a wall down. Let's just see what happens if I just cover these top bits. Uh, can't be covered properly anyway. And does it still light up? It actually does. That's good to know. I mean, it could just leave it like that. <laughs> and just be like, well... That's just the roof. <laughs> Not that bad, really. It's quite an even, nice-looking kind of clip. Like a steel beam just going through. Sometimes it does seven at clicks is the most distance, and sometimes it does eight. I don't know why it does that. Because uh, it means that we'll have to do this for each one now. Just want to see what it looks like with a few of them on and see the full roof covered like that and see, is that is that crazy? Or should I just add a layer to the roof? But that would be a bit weird, I think. Or maybe just this uh, this particular light idea won't work. 
So I need to grab a few more blueprints with those, right? So make 10 of them. I understand wanting to future-proof your designs, but I do feel like both the coal station and the copper refinery went too big. Uh, the coal one, it, it's got, it went too big too early in the series, that's for sure. But it will be massively useful. <laughs> but I probably shouldn't have built it that way when I think about it. It can't be powered on. So it's like, that was, that's too big then, isn't it? If you can't even power it. Arguably, that is just too big. But it's going to be great. <laughs> it's basically just ready to be switched on once I get the power. But yeah, definitely threw people in the deep end way too much with those two builds. That's for sure. Lesson learned. Maybe if 1.0 comes around, we'll do another series again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, well, you just, uh, yeah, so I'm mostly just doing cosmetics today, the Iron Factory, and like, um, Shah Zaib said, uh, might do some blueprints if you have some time then for the roads, just to make road signs that look kind of cool. So it's all cosmetics today, no factory building, really, because I actually balance the entire world. It's, everything's running smoothly now, <laughs> so got no problems to solve, really. I'm not going to be starting any new builds. Could actually, um, the only thing I could think of to do is maybe expand and deal with some stuff for the copper factory, actually, thinking about it. Because, uh, their belts need to be upgraded and stuff, so. There's things over there. There is also... Need to build a second truck station. For this mining deposit out here. There's three deposits and there's only two, one station, so it's, we need three inputs. We need a second truck station down here, so that needs to be developed as well. So that's one area that's actually not done yet. Yeah, this looks good. I, I don't think I mind on the roof. I'm not just saying that. I do think... Oh, well, obviously this isn't good, but um, I think the little bit of steel sticking out actually doesn't look bad. It looks kind of like... Yeah, it's just like a roof texture. Hey, Jamie Callin! Back in with the 10 gifted subs. Thank you. I'll read those names in just a second. Let's just cover up this concrete. Get rid of that bit. That bit. Jamie Cal always dropping the hot support. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jamie. Really do appreciate it. You don't have to do that every time, by the way. <laughs> what could look even more interesting in this section is making this grip metal or something, and then maybe that would look even more blended. Like, I like this. This is supposed to be a little roof that we walk out on. So I actually think, like, this is totally fine. Totally fine. As long as people don't mind as well. But you could do something like that, where you just completely like, okay, this is like a little metal grid area then. To house the lights. Could have it strip all the way down, maybe. Go all the way down. Or just have them be their own little sections. I think that looks quite cool. Yeah. Working with the clipping. And then we have these nice, just fluorescent lights in here. Could actually uh, change the color if I want. Maybe. And then we'll just leave these ones as open skylights for the daytime. I mean, these are on permanently. These are the, quote, lights that are just using global illumination. Um, so that was 10 gifted subs. So Schlafer, Tally Matt 65, The Ghost NL, Casper Larson, A String of Curses, Jamie, On the Lag, Sniper, Danny Boy, and Philip Abels were all gifted subs by Jamie Calburns. Thank you, Jamie. Do appreciate it. Thank you. You could modularize the builds a bit more. I can handle a two-hour build, but I have to really see the long-term payoff for something like the Copper Factory, which is six to eight hours. Yeah, totally, totally. Look, I admit, I didn't know. I, I, it was bad planning on my part. So when I first thought I was doing that factory, I was like, this will take two videos. That's what I thought. And the idea was simply, the reason it became so big, because people have asked me, why is it the way it is? It's because I was like, well, I got it into my head that if we're going to do this future building kind of thing, Let's just grab every copper deposit in the immediate area, drive it through a truck into a building, and just refine it there in a big building. So I thought, like, it's not that difficult because really, it's just high volume. It's all just copper and deuterium coming in, and it's only ever getting refined once. Nothing is ever getting double refined or going, like, you know, apart from AI limiters, I guess. That's, like, the only thing. But 
everything's pretty straightforward, generally speaking. On a very small scale, it's like a very simple setup. It's just, it became really difficult when I realized that like, well, if 780 is our belt speed, we're dealing with volume now that requires you to have like eight of these belts. <laughs> so I didn't factor it in. I wasn't very smart planning, forward planning with that. I mean, the factory is, I'm actually really happy with it and everything, but it be because of how big it became, it started to need, it necessitated then this overflow system and the kind of power line system and all of this. So it's like, oh, this became a huge project. And because it became so big, it's like, well, I can't even use it right now then. But I look forward to, once we get the power facility up and running, I think I can basically power this on. And then we have a ridiculous amount of copper. Ideally, more than we'll... I mean, forever, really. Maybe towards the end, we'll start needing bits built into new factories. But if I just go back out... So I, I don't disagree with anything anyone said. And I've said it myself. It is too big. It was too much at the beginning. It was kind of ridiculous. Uh... Why not have a better, have a pretty, definitely have a better layout than that, don't I? Copper, 8.5, maybe. Oh yeah, I must have renamed this wrong. Logic map. Yeah, so it's a truck station taking copper, or like sending out copper ore into the factory, you know, and it's like 13 refineries, but it's just the volume became so crazy. But I wanted to see if it's here. Ethereum logic maps, so that's the same thing. Our map for the water. Oh, maybe I don't have an... Oh, the total factory logic. There it is. That's what I was looking for. So, yeah. So, 5,460 copper ore makes 13,650 ingots. These are all per minute numbers. Um, so, this is the unassigned amount of ingots that we have. 8,775 per minute. So, that's a lot. You know, that's... That's so much copper that it's like every factory I can conceivably think of for the future, for a long time in the future anyway, is going to just use that. Um, then we make fused quick wire. So we make 4,620 quick wire potentially here. 120 AI limiters per minute, 570 copper sheets per minute, 2,700 wire per minute, 2,800 cable per minute. Like, these numbers are really good, really, really high, and things that we shouldn't need, or the things that will carry us through for a long time, like, we should never have to make these things anywhere else for a long time. So, I do feel like it is, if you could put in that time investment, it is totally future-proofed. However, if I could reorganize things in my playlist, I would probably say that that factory doesn't need to be built until after the next you know, power facility, because nothing relies on it right now. So it's totally unnecessary to build it the way I did. Uh, and at the time I did. I should have more focused on doing more smaller builds. Like, that's what I did after, right? It's like, okay, uh, biofuel and quartz crystal. And now it's like iron. They should have come before this. And this is a more reasonable iron factory. That's probably what I should have done for copper. But anyway, it is there. It's been planned out. It's mapped out. It'll sort us out for the future. It's just... Another great filter that a lot of people won't get through, I think. <laughs> Anyways, uh, David, super chatted as well. He said, can you go over the how you plan a factory? How you look for the right spot as well? Yeah, sure. I do that, actually. I don't want to be too redundant. I want to just focus a bit more on cosmetics. But if you stick around for... I'll put it on a timer so I don't go too long without thinking about it. Because I did just talk about a little bit about that. But if I just wait... Uh, let's put on a timer for 15 minutes. And then in 15 minutes, we'll answer that question, okay? We'll go over how I plan a factory, generally speaking. I'm interested in seeing how you're going to do the pillars on that building. The one I'm standing on now. Or oh, on the one over there. Yeah, they need big pillars coming down on the edges. I mean, to be completely boring, I might just use a foundation pillar of four meters all the way straight down. So it just has these giant block legs. I'm trying to, generally speaking, in the series, focus less on cosmetics. Because as you can see, it just takes forever. Um, so the more I can do it by making blueprints before a build, the better. Oh. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, let me just uh, continue this all the way up. Sounds good. Sweet, thank you. For being, uh, understanding. <laughs> Alright, so just have a few more of these to go. For the lights, and that'll be it. But to do that, I need to put the walls down first. 
Again. All right. So that's the lights on the outside bit done. So we just need to do them on the inside bit here, just over the truck stations as well. Then put some numbers and things down, and then this place should be lit, as the kids say, <laughs> for a while to come. Let's get rid of these blocks. Uh, let me catch some more chats. Metal looks good, yeah? Yeah? People like the metal, that's good. With the lights sticking out. What worked for the coal was not best for the copper. <laughs> I think it didn't even work for the coal, to be honest. That's so many people. Constantly, if you're in my Discord, you'll see people just come in all the time saying, like, can't get the water up to the machines for coal. Coal plant's not working. I've, I've rebuilt the pipes a hundred times. It's still not working. I'm always answering people in there, like, what to do. And that's why the save file, the blueprint, or the floor plans and everything are there for hopefully to help people out. But, you know, still, it's... It, if I could do the coal plant again, I would still build it the exact same way, but I would just totally, like, spend more time on showing people how vertical pipes work, pitfalls with them, and all of that. In really, if you're building this type of facility, it'd be much better to build it all in the same plane, so building it out here so that you don't have to build tall. It seemed like it tripped so many people up trying to build vertically and placing pipes and things, uh, pumps and things like that that uh, a lot of their builds broke and they have a problem troubleshooting and I do too like I, I was in that last stream just constantly going back and forth there was some issue and we fi figured it out and it's all working now but it is that type of thing where it's like oh there's some bugs in the games with pipes and it's it makes it difficult so but I didn't know that when I started it that's on me But if there was no bugs in the game, I stand by that factory being an, um, an awesome, brilliant power facility. I do think it's really good. And I don't say that about nearly any of my builds. But I would build that again. You know, I would actually build it again. Because I'm like, this is a great way to use all the coal. And to upgrade it pretty easily. I just love, One of my favorite things about it is the fact that the amount of water traveling on the pipes is the amount of coal that travels on the belt. And I think that makes planning and building it quite easy. Didn't bring enough stuff. Whoops. How many more do we have? Three. Needed a bit more um, in case industrial beams. I'm interested in seeing how you're going to do the pillar. Oh, sorry, I read that already. Then why don't you do the same for the for power with oil? Power is something that's a basic need. If you're asking me why I don't do some massive build for oil, it's because, um, like I said, it was a, it, I lost a lot of viewers doing it, so that's why. Oil, oil and fluid dynamics is something that people look up a lot, so it'll have a lot of people that aren't regulars of the series. I would expect, I hope, I mean, who knows, but I would hope that some people are finding the series for the first time with that video when I do it in the future in a couple of weeks. Not that far away now. Um, as a result, I want it to be like good, efficient, but not intimidating. Not something that's like insanely big and would take you forever. I want it to be a solution for you to be able to get power quite quickly, but not just power, but do other things with the oil too. Plastic and rubber. So it's going to be a sort of a three-in-one. It will be a two-parter for sure. It has to be at least a two-parter. But it's going to be a factory where we do turbo fuel and Plastic and rubber. And then after that will be trains. Building a transport hub. That's the plan anyway. Alright, there we go. So that's brightened up the area a bit. I agree that 88.888 clock on the coal gender is genius because of the water. Yeah, it's just the way it works out with water is... Is so good. <laughs> it's like... It's not just that, but it's breaking it into group rows of 15. 
So you have 15 at 88, then it works with water perfectly. Three of those work perfectly with one miner. Three of those blocks. Uh, so then you can have four miners and you have just four segments of a rectangle that fit perfectly over the blue crater. I just think it's like so good, but I'm forever dis disappointed in myself that I didn't explain it better at the beginning. Because I just wasn't aware of some of the... the it built relatively easy for me. I wasn't aware of some of the pitfalls. And then people didn't couldn't align the build even, so that's why I did the second episode. They couldn't even figure out where to start. Now, in that video, I was always kind of surprised by this. In this video, I start here. I jump down and I say, okay, there's a big rock on my right. And I'm looking out to the left. You can see the north, west, east, and south on the compass. This is where we're going to orientate ourselves. And I say that, and I even make the joke about orientation. And then I made the joke about Americans who need to holster their guns. That's all based on standing on that first foundation. I spent quite a few minutes there. And it's one of the most common things I get, which is I don't know where to start building in that factory. And I find that bizarre because I feel like I really spent a long time making sure we all started from the same spot. But I guess not. I never really look at things as the fault of people watching. It must be the fault of me, right? Because... I must have not explained that very well. Alright. Yeah, this is the problem here. This is supposed to be a walkway. Can I push that in by one? Not really, because the truck station is right below. Uh, I was going to say, it's supposed to be a coat of concrete, but I don't want the metal coming through that. So I'll probably just do coat of concrete every little bit and just have to have the grip metal. So it will be a walkway, but it's going to be a walkway with metal grids on it because that's just the way it is. <laughs> the real Uncle Billy. Thank you very much for becoming a channel member. Uh, appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Alright, so there's going to be a wall here. Good idea. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Alright, so much cosmetics. I feel like I'm doing good then. Explanations are only good if the person watching watches them. Don't blame yourself when they're lazy. No, they're not lazy. I just think that it wasn't very clear. It must not have been very clear. And then things did have to move, actually. So that's also probably part of it. So I don't think it's the people. I think it was probably me. If it was just one or two people, then maybe. But it's like actually a lot of people said that. It was a consistent point of feedback, so... Gotta take it that way. Uh... Not Kisp, I'm back. Bad news. My save. Oh my god, your save got deleted. How did that happen? I lost 10 hours of progress and it had auto saves. Good. But because of a glitch that happened with my PC, it got shut down by my parents. You know what happened. There's no way that it just got the. Like, someone must. You, the only way you could delete your saves is if you go in here. Let's <laughs> delete them right now. Uh, like, you click this and you click delete session. That's the only way you delete them all. How else could that have happened? Or you went into your. File Explorer on Windows or something and like deleted them. I just don't see how that could happen. Alright, so I'm just gonna start blocking this out with big walls here. Actually, just thinking about it, maybe we should use blueprints for this. Yeah. So we're gonna have windows, right? So up to what height though is the question. Not sure. Gotta go higher than that. I think it's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That clears the antenna. Uh, six will be good, actually. Six is enough. Does that go across all the way to the middle point? Uh, hard to tell. Let me just see. 
be ideally higher than those beams, but looks like we're not. Okay, yeah, we'll go up another layer. Why not? Just so I know, for the future, this is the height of our roof. I was going to say, I, normally I do the barrier, like the roads are done, with the thing on top. But maybe that wouldn't be as good for looking out over the edge. I think a modern rail is just fine on its own. we got a couple minutes left on that timer. <laughs> Alright, so that's basically our basically our roof. I don't think I want to change any of the concrete. I think I'll just leave it as is. Oh, this bit though, yeah. to do here is make a design and a style that I'm happy with and then just create like wall panels so what I mean by that is similar to the copper Caterium factory I'll have like the window segment in fact that's probably pretty good at the same height I'll probably just use that although maybe we just make a change to it it's gonna be I think we're gonna use metal it is an iron factory so it feels weird to make it out of concrete <laughs> not that a factory needs to be made out of what it produces but it just seems to work and make sense for this one Yeah, I'm fine with that. Alright, let's have a look at what we got downstairs now. Yeah, that's cool. So we'll need some signs hanging down to and some um, patterns on the floor to let us know which numbers are for which station. Um, don't forget to check the moth for height. Oh yeah, that's a good point. I don't think he flies that low that he would hit the antennas. Probably fine. But actually, I need to go to the bathroom, so I might just stand here and we can see if the moth comes back around. He did just fly over now, though. He will be coming from that direction. <laughs> Alright, I'll be back in just a moment. Just going to the bathroom. Wash your hands? Never. Uh, <laughs> Love your designs, man. Use your original modular frame factory, but just recently updated my own using smart splitters to feed with a 480 belts. Very neat. Nice. That sounds good. Yeah, I love to hear when people like make modifications or do their own thing. Like, use original ideas, but like maybe use some of mine too. It's nice when people modify things. Um, that moth has been the bane of my existence this soon. <laughs> Uh, small ramp behind the awesome sink so that you can walk along an elevated section of the coated concrete. Oh yeah, maybe. That could work. That we're not stepping on the, the metal, is it? And you just have a, a raised coated concrete section. 
Might make it a bit awkward here, though. I don't know how I'd cover that bit up. Because I, I try to avoid using um, foundation ramps because they're... Well, they're just frankly a little bit awkward. But um, if we did that, that's what we have. So it's a way to cover it up for sure. I do feel like it's a bit... I don't know. Yeah, I'm not... A, it's, it's something about this that I just wouldn't be happy with, even if that wasn't there and this was raised up. I don't know. Maybe, well, maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't be too quick to judge. No, yeah, because of how it's going to work the window. No, definitely not. It's got to be all the same. <laughs> but not a bad idea. Not a bad idea for sure. You almost had me. Um, so I need to go into the... Oh, yeah. I actually have to address that guy's question, right? So David Maycomer. Maycomer? Maycomer? Uh, did a super chat and he said, could you go over your plan, how, how you plan a factory, how you uh, look for the right spot as well. You're basically looking for an answer on how, how do you plan out an entire build start to finish, right? So I'll just try to do it as quickly as I can because it obviously be a massive derailment. Um, and it's something I've addressed a little bit in the past before, but nothing too crazy. So let's take a look. Let's say I was designing, uh, well, I'll just use the example of, let's open up Satisfactory Calculator. interactive map so using this website we can see the entire all the deposits we can even feed our save in there and see you know what we're our current situation is and everything i'm not going to do that now but um so you go to resource nodes and you can turn on all the different resource deposits so you want to see where the uranium is sam ore obviously isn't relevant to us right now this is everything everything turned on except for sam ore in the entire world so it's like cool uh we get to have a look at all that and this is both the impure normal and pure nodes so hovering over them it actually tells you minor mark 3 will give you 120 240 360 480 600 depending on the overclocking um so because the resources in the game are finite there's a certain amount of them uh, even though the individual deposit is infinite the amount of resources are hang on just one sec moth check <laughs> oh his little tail fin thing might clip through Maybe. Oh, maybe not. It's actually pretty high up there. All right, let's head back over there. Um, why would you get a mod when you can just kill them? Hang on. Oh. All right, so. When I'm planning a factory, I'll look at this. So it's a two, there's a multi-stage process for it, I guess. So it's like, okay, for doing this iron factory, I'd already decided that it was going to replace the starter factory. So there's three deposits here. Okay, but for something like the copper factory, I had to look at all the copper on the map. So taking copper as an example, how did I plan that one, for instance? So just looking at just the copper nodes, the idea was that I wanted to gra grab as much copper from the grassy fields area and build a factory for it. But I knew that I was going to use um, different recipes. So the Satisfactory Wiki, there's two wikis, I never remember which one's the right one. The official? I don't know. In here, if we go Copper Ingot. Right, so here we have the Copper Ingot and the three different recipes that you can get Copper Ingots out of. Okay, so we have... Standard, made in a smelter, gives you this much. We have the copper alloy ingot, where you mix iron and copper ore together in a foundry. And then the pure copper, gives you copper ingots out of a refinery when you mix it with water. So that's the one I decided to go with. Gives you the um, highest amount of copper out for the amount of copper ore in. All right, so for 10 ore in, you get 20 ingots out. So it's a, a 2 to 1 conversion, or a 1 to 2 conversion, let's say the 6 to 15 conversion so it's almost a 1 to 3 so it's much better right so this gives us the best bang for our buck with copper but I decided to use that one so that's how I a chose the recipe Eugene thanks very much for becoming a channel member so that's how I decided on the recipe so deciding the recipe meant that it we needed water so then I looked at the map here and I said okay well if I'm gonna be grabbing all of this copper ore Let's see how much it is. Now, they're mostly normal deposits, the orange deposits, right? They're normal deposits. So we'd be looking at 
excuse me, at a normal deposit, 600 per minute. So it's 6, 12, 18, 24, uh, 30, 36, uh, 42, I guess, and then 48 or something. Maybe if you count these two, I think I did. Yeah, so 48. So originally, I think I was looking at 4,800 per minute. And then you could include one of these or maybe one of these and add a little bit more. So there's a potential for the factory to have something like 5,000 copper ore coming in per minute in the future, right? When they're all overclocked and they're all making 600 per minute. That's the idea. So I think initially I did say 4,800 was the number I was going with. I've since increased it just slightly. Anyway, so 4,800. So that was stage two. Stage two is like looking at, okay, we know the recipe. We know how much uh, copper ore is kind of available in the overall area. But what does that mean for water? Well, if we're going to have 4,800 copper ore, let's say, I'll have to break out the calculator. Um, so I can't even remember how to do this. But oh yeah, so 4,800 is how much we'd have. So we'll divide the 4,800 by 15, because that's the input, right? So 15. And that gives us 320. So we'll need 320 refineries, which means if we times it by 10, the input for water, we'll need 3,200 3, water. Now, every water extractor takes 120. We need 26 water extractors. So then it became a thing of like, okay, well, how do I break this down so that people could follow along and make it somewhat doable, right? You could just smash 26 um, water extractors all together and start dividing up pipes, but you have to consider the spacing then for refineries and the truck station so it's like okay well this needs a lot of space actually so where do we build it well because we need that much water we need to be able to deploy 26 at least 26 water extractors somewhere unless we decide to overclock them so the options available in the south of the map would be here but there's already a giant coal plant here so i can't use that there is these little bits of river and lakes here too small there's these two which are close but we'd be using we'd really be cramming everything in there and then there's the massive ocean, right, out to the side. So that's ultimately where I decided to go. And then, it was for two reasons, actually, because I was realizing, what are we going to do with all these ingots? And how many ingots are we going to get? Uh, 320 refineries times the output, which is 37.5, is going to give us 12,000 ingots per minute. I was like, god damn, that's a lot of ingots. Divide that by 780, which is our best belt speed in the future. We're going to have at least 15 belts, 16 belts, bringing all this ingots around so it's, it became this thing of like okay how do i tackle this like this as a project and where is this going to go it's obviously going to need a very big footprint uh, for a factory now what can we make out of these ingots well i started looking into then wire um started looking into cable and just things that you would make copper with copper sheet and very quickly, I realized that there's a lot of recipes that are involved with Caterium as well as Copper. So we can make fused wire, which gives you a really good rate, a return rate for wire, if you can just mix in some Caterium. And then I also realized, <clears throat> if we were to make quick wire, there's kind of, kind of an inverse of that, where if you add more Copper and Caterium, you get quick wire in a really high volume. It's actually the only other alternate for this. So I was like, okay, okay. So, looked around the map again a little bit. Um, decided to turn on the Caterium nodes. And I realized, well, next to Copper out here, there's Caterium. And next to where I'm planning the factory, there's Caterium. And they're pure recipes, which is great, because they have a higher volume um, than the other ones. The other ones can only ever do 600 per minute. These could do 780 per minute when overclocked, because that's our best belt. Those 780 and 780 together, 1560. And then I started going through the individual recipes to work out, like, well, how much copper would that consume then if I wanted to use every bit of Caterium into making quick wire and every bit of Caterium we could use into making wire uh, and so on. So that's, that's kind of like how I, how I did it. Then at some point, I started working on floor plans. So I'll go into creative mode and I'll think of, okay, what's the use case for just one small block? Um, so I started working out like a, a number for, I probably looked at something like 780 divided by 37.5, right? Which is the output of a refinery. It's like, okay, you could fit 21 refineries then. So I, I can't quite remember, but and eventually I ended up having 26 refineries in a block. I can't remember why. 
somehow that all does work. I think they're on separate lines. And then, um, it could be to do with the input, actually. I can't, again, just can't remember. And then I decided, like, okay, well, that means that we can have a block of 26 machines. And then we could just copy that over and over and over and over again to use every bit of... Oh, I think it's actually based on the water. Yeah, because five extractors feed into one block. But anyway, you know, it, that's, that's some of the process that goes into it. Now, just very quickly, the process for something like the quartz facility would have been very simple by comparison because um, it's only one resource and there's not that much to it. So, but the process would be similar. So I'll look at the interactive map. I'll just, let's say, toggle that stuff off. Raw quartz was up there. So we've got two quartz deposits. We can see, again, here's what they make. So for future-proofing the factory, we could say it's going to be a Mark III. It's going to have 600 per minute, and there's only two deposits. So it's very easy to work that out, right? It's 1,200 per minute, raw quartz ore. And then if we have a look at the recipes for quartz, quartz crystal and silica are really... The great thing with this website, actually, is you can look up raw quartz itself, and it actually tells you, if you scroll down further, what it gets made into. So here's what you craft it into. So just like before, when you look at the recipes that it can be made, uh, this actually shows you what this can be made into. So it's not just, it's like the inverse. If we were to look at quartz crystal, it's like, oh, here's multiple recipes for getting quartz crystal. But if you want to just look at an ingredient and see what could this be used for, you could scroll down to the crafting section. So down here, I can see that raw quartz could be mixed with water to get a higher volume out of quartz crystal, but it can't be done for silica. Instead, limestone would be mixed with raw quartz to get a higher volume of silica. So the two main things you get out of raw quartz are quartz crystal and silica, right? Those are the two things. The higher end of those alternate recipes, one mixes water and one mixes limestone. So the question was, do I use a factory then up here that has both silica and quartz crystal? Or if we look at the deposits of where limestone is, I can see that over here, there's a limestone node next to two quartz nodes. So it's like, oh, that's perfect for silica then, isn't it? it you probably need actually a bit more limestone when you work out the rates, but still, that's that area is like purpose-built for that recipe. And if you look over here, we don't have any um, limestone nearby. It's like way down a cliff. This is like a much higher... The altitude is negative 96 meters. The altitude for this is 134. There's a 200 meter difference between them. It's not as close as it looks, but this is next to a body of water. So, you know, that was another reason, another way of like, how did you plan this factory? Well, it's like, well, I literally just looked up like what they make, what different recipes are used, and then what's in proximity to where they could be built. Um, so I was like, yeah, this is perfect. We'll leave it as quartz crystal on its own, no silica, and build a dedicated factory out here. The challenge with this one was it's not an easy way to get it down onto the road network, but managed to do it in the end. So hopefully that kind of answers the question. So it's kind of a little different depending on the factory. And then of course, I'll go into kind of a creative mode and build a template, a sort of a, a mini part of the factory as a proof of concept. And then go, yep, this works. Go into Photoshop, you know, scale it out over the entire size I think I'm going to need and then build it. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, that's a very long winded answer, but hopefully that at least explains to people if they're ever wondering, how do you come up with the build? Um, that's how I do it. Same is true for biofuel and things like that. So this is the one we're working on now. Let's just get back to it. So today, what we're doing, if you just joined, if you just joined in, and I've seen people saying hi and everything. Sorry, I was just answering a question there. Didn't want to get too sidetracked uh, by jumping into responses and things. What we're doing at the moment is just doing the cosmetics for this factory. So I'm just going to hide my window. There we go. And get back to it. So it's just a cosmetic focus episode and also just chatting as well. A sleepy seeker, and sorry if I miss people in the chat, you know, just write a message again and I'll catch you. But I do see people saying hi, like Kine and uh, Fab Feral. Hopefully I've said that right. I built so many foundations for a massive copper factory. <laughs> yeah. Is it the one I'm doing? Oh, you have to start over. Oh my god. That's why if you're ever building anything, just build a very, very tiny section and see is it right. Rather than committing to the entire thing and then realizing you're wrong or off by a certain amount. Uh, easier said than done, I know, but that's that's what needs to be done. All right, so we're going to make a, maybe a new blueprint here. I have to get a blueprint machine, and we're going to do the the kind of uh, windows and walls for this place. So what I'll do, actually, before blueprinting anything is just make a section myself. 
like I just said, actually, and uh, that'll give us our proof of concept. So we want to use full frame window. We could have it every, just a window every time there's a gap or a window on every bit of steel. You know what I mean? It could be on every bit of coat of concrete or it could be on every bit of steel. Probably on every steel just to make the windows bigger that way. So I'll just start here. And this would need to go up as far as there. That will come across. Something like that. Now, on the bottom, I'll probably have... Um, I often use, like, little steel beams. Low on steel, but just to show this. See what this looks like. Oh, it's going through the... The light, I think. Is that what's happening? Well, let me... Oh, no, I'm just out of steel. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll just grab some in a minute. That'll be extended the whole way down. And we could use the steel wall on the top, actually, which could look quite nice. Yeah, all right. Let's go grab some steel. this well so let's see I don't really need plastic anymore because that's for floors and we're pretty much whoops we're pretty much done with floors take a tiny bit in case I find a spot that I need to upgrade on the fly uh, yet yeah, we need silica for the windows more concrete I suppose for the walls all right maybe just more silica And then I wanted to make a blueprint designer, so that's going to require modular frames and cable. and cable. All right, good to go. Thanks for explaining it. No worries. Uh, I planned it all. It's just messed my plan. <laughs> Is there a way to delete delete crates on the map? I can't find them. Uh, you can delete them. Go to Satisfactory Calculator, load your save in from the local files and create, uh, check the create button to display them. Once you found them, click and delete. That's one way. Another way that I sometimes do, although it's been a while since I've had to, I'm running a mod called the Pack Utility Mod. And uh, using that mod, I'm not going to use it now because I never use it on the save that I'm actually like keeping, like I'm playing with. Um, but what you can do is fly and also type no clip and that will let you clip through things. But then you could just like fly to wherever the container is, remove it through the walls, you know, just fly through the walls, click it, remove it, take its inventory and just get it out of there. So I've done that in the past. Um, not for this save, but for other saves. All right, so bring that all the way up. What I'm thinking is steel wall on the bottom. And then this on the way up. Don't know if that looked good, we'll just have to see what it looks like. And I was thinking of doing a white factory. Get white in color. Get rid of that bit now. We'll just look at this one section and see like, okay, are we happy with that? Oh, whoops. Um, something I did before, which is on my big shell build, I would use just the one meter, but go all the way up and you get this really nice surface. Now, it massively adds loads of objects to the game. That's like totally unnecessary, but oh my God, I do love the clean look to it. You know, just a big sheet of metal. So I would like to do that, but I'm not going to just because it's kind of a waste just adding so many different objects to the game. And they can actually kind of lag the game a little bit too when there's so many all on screen. 
Now, the only other thing I was thinking that it could do be necessary here. Um, I was trying to think if I wanted a colored stripe going through it. If you add a colored stripe, so yeah, we could have two on the bottom. Let me just see how high up that would be. It means if we were walking along, we wouldn't be able to see out because that's two meters. That's too high. But you could have just three on the top, but it wouldn't be able to be steel then because it wouldn't have the black trim. Yeah, so I'll just leave it. And then along the bottom, just do something like either the painted beam, which would be just black. Kind of match the effect of the wall there. I could sink that down even lower, so it's just thinner. But something like that is an option. Or just very simply using the metal beam, which I often feel like looks quite good along, running along the bottom. Yeah, so it's, not, it's nothing super creative, let's be real, but I think, I think I'm happy enough with that kind of pattern repeating itself all the way down. Let's see, why not? Uh... You can delete them, go to set- Oh yeah, I read that already. The other day I got inventory slots. The other day I got an inventory slots from a hard drive while researching the mom. Didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, there's just one of them. I don't know if I've got it yet, actually, in my game. Oh, there's two. Oh, I thought it was only one. Interesting. Oh, sorry, and I missed uh, what Nergal said. If they would make it to where the penguin giraffes don't clip through walls, I would leave them. But as it is... I hate when they walk through my factory, so they have to go. Yeah, no, indeed. No, same here. Penguin giraffes. I think uh, often people refer to them as the beans, so I just call them beans as well. You can bounce on their back, which is kind of fun. <laughs> All right, anyways, that's what we'll do. Pretty basic kind of look to it, but it should look decent when we replicate it over and over again. So it might just open up a blueprint designer and make a blueprint out of it. So grab this. That's our facing... Facing forward that way. Is this coming really far over the edge of the designer? What the hell's up with that? Just immediately have gone out of the bounds of the thing. Hmm. Does it do it based on center point? I've never seen that before. Just straight away, just putting down one of these. It's like, yeah, you can go over the edge. Like, really? <laughs> Well, anyway, bizarre. I know you can do the trick with the modern rail and just break it and go out and build out of the blueprint designer, but still, I just didn't expect to have that happen. All right, anyways. So, go across like that. Yep. How many up do we have to go? Seven. I don't think I'll be able to put this beam in. No, doesn't like doing that. Oh, maybe actually. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, iron factory wall. Actually, uh, you can name it based on the naming convention of the other ones I've done. Factory specific design. CCF window segment. Grassy Fields Iron Factory. <laughs> uh, wall segment. Cool. I could just set the icon to color later. It's the name that's most important. <clears throat> oh my god. Right, let's grab that new blueprint. Undefined the Gefif wall segment.
Oh, I see the issue. Not gonna work. It needs to be uh, like this. Let's try that again. There we go. Reason you're not using small icons in your pocket? Um, because people watch the video and it's easier for them to see bigger icons. Uh, I love your vids. Thanks, Reese. Struggling with curving my foundations for my trains. Any tips? Don't curve them. <laughs> I have no tips for you, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm going to be using right angles because curving things in this game is ridiculous. You can do it, but it causes clipping, and it's really difficult to line things back up to the world grid. Uh, a good tip would be on the Satisfactory Calculator website, there are blueprints with train junction turns and... Sorry, train junctions, and a bunch of different train blueprints and railway blueprints that are all aligned so that they line back up with the world grid, and they use curves. So you could, um, if you don't mind, you could use other people's uh, stuff, I guess. Hey, Falk. Question, what do CC and CCF mean in your blueprints? It means Copper Caterium Factory. Yep, Copper Caterium, Copper Caterium Factory. What is the purpose of the ventilation for floor in the Copper Caterium Factory? Uh, there's two reasons for it. Um, one, it's to hide the chimney stacks from blowing smoke into the factory. I know that's like a really silly small thing, but you'll look at the ceiling and it'll just be a big fog of smoke when you've got that many refineries next to each other if the ceiling's only just slightly above the chimney stacks. All right, we should walk downstairs and I'll show you. So, I do the same thing here. The chimney stack, and this will be metal in the future. The chimney stacks just go straight to the, um, like, into the floor or whatever, right? So this will be metal. haven't done it yet, but it'll be metal like that. So, it'll just look a little bit more. It'll look a bit better like that, I think. So, why is there a ventilation floor? There's this mini floor to kind of keep track, all the, trap all of that kind of smoke. I just don't like seeing it. It's... I guess it's like a cosmetic thing where it's, you know, you're walking around a factory. I'm like, where's the ventilation for this? You know, we're just blowing. I suppose it's probably only steam. I'm thinking about it. We're just filling up the room with it. And um, when you've got loads of them in a row, I just feel like it gets a bit distracting when you're walking around. You can just see them all piling up at the top. Um, but it's not that big of a deal. The second reason, which is more important, is for in the Copper Caterium factory, we travel or we bring some power along there. Uh, so I can show that really quickly. I don't mind just save here. Then I'll just fly over and just show you really quick. Although people have probably seen it, but it's a nice in-between floor for hiding things. That's a, kind of a cosmetic hideaway. Some people do that for power lines and for uh, maybe belts and things you don't want to see, but I really just do it for power lines. So on the Copper Caterium factory here. This is our ventilation floor. So all the power lines that are in here are hidden away from the factory itself. It creates a much cleaner aesthetic downstairs. And uh, this has all been mapped out in my Milanote document so that I can track power and stuff if I ever have an issue with it. So I think uh, if I go further back out here, power map concept. So this is how power travels along to the water. There's the power map. Oh yeah, that's specifically for water. This is for the actual power room and where they go to the different blocks of refineries and to the water extractors. There should be another power map though, I thought actually, hang on. Group logic map? Maybe I got rid of it. Power map concept? Oh, that's it, there it is. That's the one I was looking for. This kind of shows you where all the power lines go. So there's the uh, six, seven power switches and then they all feed into these lines called cable runners that I've got. These are done with blueprints. 
So there's a row of cable runners. Now you don't actually need to do this with power priority switches now in the future anymore, but I haven't unlocked them yet, so I did it for this factory manually. I'm sorry, just autosave at the moment, so you're just gonna have to stare at a black screen for a sec. Uh, do you think you'll make Big Shell 2.0? Almost certainly not. <laughs> just because it killed the series. So if I started a project like that, it could be the last thing. It might not happen, you know? I don't even know if I'll make it that far. Views are already dropping off. We're down to 20,000 per video, which is still great. But, you know, the Copper Factory had 80,000 per video. So, pressure's on, I guess. Um, is that done? Yep. Uh, anyway, so that was just the, yeah, that was, to answer that question, that's just why. So, it's just an in-between, interstitial in-between floors that allows you to keep the cosmetics of the floor below looking really neat. Uh, this has, I haven't finished the cosmetics of this floor, but it's nice not seeing, like, anything beyond just that line of power lines there. You know, they just go upstairs, and that's pretty much it. Then we have our glass cases. Love this factory. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Let's load back into where we were before. What's your opinion on hypertubes? And please pay your child support. I need to eat. Uh, I don't have any children, so I don't have to pay any child support, thankfully. Uh, my opinion on hypertubes is I don't like them. Main reason I don't like them, it's a very personal, it's a me reason. Uh, which is... It puts you into third person. And I don't like that. If you stayed in first person, I wouldn't have a problem. With zooming along. But going into... And I understand why they do it. Because you'd be clipping into like a little tube or whatever. But sometimes you're in there and like you move the camera in there and it looks great. So I just wish they would keep it in first person. Uh, I'm a very weird gamer. Generally speaking, I like very immersive games, even games like this where it's about optimization and efficiencies. I'm the type of weirdo that's like, well, I like it to feel like I'm actually walking around a factory. Um, but because of that, when you're just going to slam me out into third person, when I get into a car or into a hypertube or whatever, it kind of takes me out. It kind of reminds me of a game and the camera is kind of clipping around and as you're making turns and stuff, you're like, it's just a bit unpredictable. So I just, I don't like that. Um, hey, Preston. It's not a small thing, chimney smoke bugs me as well. Yeah, it's, I just find it's a nicer way to hide it away and keep the factory looking cleaner, basically. Martin, thanks very much for the super chat. And no message. Weirdly, the message just said what it was, what it what it did. I guess if you leave no message, that's what happens. Thank you. I gotta finish it, Jamie? Yeah, I'll, I will finish it. Don't you worry. But um, it's just until something is dependent on copper, there's no real need to finish it. <laughs> so I'm just trying to move on and do other things before we get back to it. All right, so what we're doing at the moment, for people who just joined or are coming back in, uh, we're still working on the... I just added walls to upstairs. We're going to make this wall go all the way around the top of the factory. Uh, for the most part, where we can. Now, I've blueprinted it, but I need to map out certain sections to know where the blueprint needs to start. So, well, this will be steel, and then it's... I don't want to draw anything on the ground. Let me just use a temporary wall then. So that would be a window and a window. That wouldn't, that would, and that would. Wouldn't, wouldn't, that would. Wouldn't, would, would. Ha. Ah. Yeah, it's uneven. That's annoying. Uh, well, I know how to fix that. We'll just start from opposite ends and then make a change to the middle. So we'll grab this. Just push it out so it joins onto the edge there. Right, so with three of them down, I'll start on the other side now, and then somewhere in the middle it'll have to be slightly wider. for 
my own sanity just to make sure okay <laughs> All right, so that's wrapped around. Hey, Martin, I really appreciate that as well, because it actually says it was your first super chat ever on a live stream, so thank you. That means a lot, so thank you. I hope the series blows up so we see it to the end. <laughs> well, you just got to keep sharing it. See, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to get into YouTube talk and discussions because you get a bunch of people, and it's totally reasonable and understandable, armchair YouTubers, right, that will say, like, well, I think you should do this, I think you should do that, I think you should do this, et cetera, et cetera. It's all valuable, but it's often all contradictory. You know, I've been around doing it long enough to know that, like, nobody knows exactly what you should do. <laughs> um, but if I just show off one thing really quickly, go to my channel. I'm a Let's Player, right? I, that's what I've become. And we started here. So there was 600,000 views. I mean, that's insanely successful for me, right? That's great. Amazing. You're going way beyond your own subscribers. You're finding a whole new audience. Lots of people are finding the videos. And uh, lots of people are hanging out. So that was 600,000. So for what happened for episode two? So two, 170. So we lost, if you want to be cynical, you could look at it and go like, wow, 450,000 people were like, not for me, you know, and bounced, <laughs> which is fine. You know, people are just looking up the game, I'm sure, and just want to see more about the game and all that. Um. So then, yeah, anyway, 170. Still very happy with that. Then we get to Cole. Cole has more than this one. So obviously, people repeat viewing it, and as well as people just finding it, because maybe they want to know to do Cole. Maybe they're more interested in the thumbnail. Whatever. Lots of reasons why a video might do better if it just gets caught by the algorithm. 246,000. This is actually one of the reasons I've stopped doing sponsored videos, because it just kills your views, or kills your channel anyway. Um, as much as I can, unless I re I mean, I did like the game, but it's like, goddamn. Uh, and this is why <laughs> you get what people call imposter syndrome, which is, for me, it's not quite imposter syndrome, it's more just reality, which is, people aren't there for me. If they were, I'd have 120,000 views on that. Instead, people are there for the game. And really, my active audience, even though I've got, what is it, 120,000? I've probably got about twenty to 30,000 people that, on average, check in. On the sub feed, really? Anyways, the 240,000, great, brilliant. Uh, the follow up to Cole, lost half of them, 120. Uh, after that, modular frame, 100. Awesome. I would never complain. By the way, if a video has 30,000 and it just maintained that, and that was it forever, that'd be the dream. It's great going over that. I'm of no mind, uh, in no way I want people to think that I'm expecting I should be getting 100,000 views on every video. That'd be, I'd be very successful if that was the case. Um, I would rather, much rather, have a consistent lower viewership <laughs> than have an unpredictable but high viewership because it makes it very difficult to plan your life if you don't know how much you're getting paid next month. But anyways, uh, I've been doing it for seven years, so that's just the way it's always been. But anyway, 106. Then we go to Easy Steel, 223. Cool. Blueprints, 73. Getting kind of low. Uh, jumping back up though, because these blueprints change everything. And a little bit more sensational thumbnail, maybe, on that one. So we got 215,000. Okay, now we're going to make this Mega Refinery, 92. Mega Refinery Part 2, 83. Mega Refinery Part 3, 78. Mega Refinery Part 4, 45. And these are really long videos, so I don't... I'm not surprised at that, but also... A lot of people who watch this, almost everyone, are going to be watching it probably multiple times. No one's really sitting there for two and a half hours. So a lot of these views are... In fact, we could even, I could even show you. Let me just quickly open something up and see. How many of these are unique viewers? Because it does tell you that on YouTube. Yeah. Unique viewers, 24,000. So, almost, you know... And 23 of those thousand people we're coming back this is uh, but uh, almost a thousand it's their first time ever watching any video <laughs> on my channel just super interested how many people are and aren't subscribed half of them aren't for this and they're deep into a uh, part four of a satisfactory series uh, of a mega build so it's just kind of interesting seeing that 
Uh, I never really look at my analytics too much, but it kind of gives you an insight into like these are almost like fake views. They're not fake. They definitely count, and it's great that people just watch twice. That's kind of the idea behind my longer videos. It's not to get people to watch twice, but it's like I know that people will watch twice if they want to get to the full thing, so I don't need to make five videos. I, it works out just the same if people watch the same video multiple times. It's totally fine for me. Anyways, uh, so that was that. Then I do biofuel, and we get 30,000, which, which isn't surprising when you consider that only 25,000 people were unique watching this one. So again, if I was to check this, I actually have never done this. So if I check the analytics of this and see how many of these people are unique, do we expect the same or less than the previous one? Let's see, audience. Less. So 18,000 people are returning viewers, 19,000 unique in total. Same kind of thing again. So we have 1,000 people who found this video that never watched any other one and 81 new subscribers from it. So basically, I'm just trying to illustrate that it's like, people are like, what are you gonna do for nuclear? It's like, guys, I don't know if I'm gonna make it to nuclear, right? To be completely frank. I'm not saying that to put any pressure on anyone. I'm just telling you the reality. At a certain point, views are gonna get low, low enough that it won't make any sense to continue the series. But I'll keep going until I reach that point. That point is probably around the 10,000 mark. Um, I would imagine. So we're not there yet. The last one was 23,000, then the one before that was 24. So that actually went up by 1,000. So who knows? But I'm getting that way now with my City Skylines one. It's like 12 and then 6. It's like, oh man. And where were we at City Skylines just a month ago? 400,000. So am I that awful that so many people leave? Or is it that I don't upload frequently enough? Or I don't know. People will tell you all sorts of different things. I have people at YouTube telling me different things who work there. Uh, so we don't know. So anyway, there you go. But this is why it really does help if you share the videos. Post them on Reddit or only if you like them. I don't want people to actually go out there and do that unless they care. But you know, post on Reddit, share it with a friend, and say, hey, I think this build is good. If you really do think that you like the content, I don't want people blowing smoke up my butt. But if you like the content and you wanted to support it, a like, a comment, all of that really helps. One thing that's actually really great with the series right now is that there's tons of channel members. That is a huge bump that you don't see in just looking at the raw views, right? It's like, oh, 25,000 views. Fair enough, that's, that's actually still pretty good. But there's actually like about 400 channel members backing it. So there's also that, so it helps a lot. Anyway, I have ADHD, so it takes me like five episodes of the series to subscribe to a channel. Oh, no, yeah, totally. I, I'm the same. You have to see a content creator probably like ten times over and over again in your feed before you even bother to subscribe. I'm that way, too. I've just, I just wanted to let people in a little bit. So when people are asking me, like, what am I planning on doing for... You know, that was in response to the question, like, what are you going to do? Are you going to do Big Shell 2.0? It's like... Uh, one, I'm really not thinking that far ahead. And two, that was such a large project that so many people fell off it that it couldn't continue. So hopefully that kind of helps understand where we're at. And sorry, there was a question about Manor Lords. I missed it. Could someone just write that again? If, or whoever asked that question. I just saw the word Manor Lords and I forgot to click it or look at it. Apologies for missing that one. And anyway, this is why I'm very jealous of people like I'm Kibitz or City Planner Plays just other youtubers who are actually good at their job <laughs> because what they tend to have is the same viewership almost just over and over again it's like hundred thousand hundred thousand hundred thousand like every single time and then some of their videos will go way above that and maybe they look at it and they think the same thing i do just on a bigger scale because they're bigger than me i don't know but man i'm jealous of just having some sort of predictable consistency there because i i put out a video and i have no idea how it's going to go just no idea could be 10,000, could be 100,000. <laughs> Just don't know. And it's the thing I hate the most about doing this. Unpredictability. Might make that a double wall, I guess, at that point. How did I not have that? I oh, because of the tower. That's what I was going to say. I didn't have that issue down there. I'll just catch the chance. Just one second, let me just paint this final bit and then we can move on. Oops. That's gonna be a doorway. It's 
so loud here all of a sudden with those miners. Why is it so loud? I think it's not normally that loud. They're all the way down there. Why is it so loud? Weird. I love your content. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, and it's not meant to gain any sympathy votes. I'm just trying to let people have a little insight into like how I make some of those decisions about that kind of thing. Was the manscape was the manscaping ad a financial cry for help? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say it's a. No, first of all, I really like manscaped. I've bought it before, uh, not actually for my brother, and then they reached out to me just recently to do a thing. So it's like, oh, this is a product I've actually used and I think is good. So I'm totally happy to shill. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll shill anything if I think it's good. It's the things that I do. I get offers. The things you don't see are the offers I get that I say no to, which is just like every mobile game under the sun. And I'm sure every creator gets that. Um, but no, if I get off, I'd, like I said earlier today, if gamer subs reached out, I'd love to be sponsored by them. Because it's like, yeah, I drink this, I use this product, I buy it, I stand by it, I tell people about it for free. Gladly I'd get paid to tell people about it. Name it Man's Games. Um, but was it a financial cry for help? No, not really. In January, so YouTubers will often tell you that January, you know, their income for January, ad revenue, is usually about half it is in, uh, than in other months. Yeah, it's usually about half. It's like, because uh, it's January, so not many people are running ads or ad campaigns and stuff on YouTube. So you get paid less. So to offset that, I decided to take a few sponsors that would just basically try to keep it even. Because I get offered them all the time. But then I, in January, I was like, oh, I'll take a few on. Now that Manscaped ad took a while to actually happen. But I kind of signed the deal, as it were, in January. But, um... I hope they don't mind me talking about it. I don't want to talk specific specifics, but it's not like that much money. It's about the equivalent of one video of in terms of earnings. I, I didn't ask for very much. Um, I thought it was just like an ad read, like just, you know, standard little ad read. But then they were like, oh, could you do something like more creative for it? And I was like, oh, now if if I'd known that from the beginning, I probably would have asked for more. <laughs> but um, it's all fine. You know, I enjoy doing it. Uh, they sent me that box and that product, now I use it, so it's like, cool, that's all good. And it was like having a video inserted into my video for free in terms of the revenue side of things, so. Nothing too crazy. Anyways. Uh, that might have been me asking whether you play it when it finally releases. Yeah, totally. So I played the demo and did a five-part series on it when the demo happened. So I'll definitely be doing it when it comes out. I'm actually kind of semi-friends with the developer. Like, internet friends, I guess. We talk every now and then. So I'm... I'm confident enough I'll get sent it. Which will give me a big incentive to playing it. Uh, on, on the channel. It takes time, don't stop, you'll get there. Your series is awesome, as Kip is the this. <laughs> they did multiple seasons to start all over again. Consistency is key. No, I appreciate that, yeah. I've been doing it for seven years, though, so... And it has been growing. It's just that it ebbs and flows. Um, it ebbs and flows. If I stay with one game long enough, I'm sure... Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's all good. I really do appreciate that feeling, but it's not necessarily true. You will leave if I play other things. That's what would happen. Um, <laughs> for most people out there. Or... If, frankly, the videos just stop becoming kind of interesting, right? So, and I don't begrudge anyone for that. I, you know, I'm, no one owes me anything. <laughs> I just need to, yeah, make good, good videos and be more consistent with it. That's all. Um, anyway, anyway, like, I, I hate talking about this because I always feel like I come across, like, not happy or something. Actually, really, everything in the channel is going really well. The series is going to be around for a few more months at the very least, as long as things continue the way they do. Everything's good. I enjoy it. People are very, very... Um, this community, or the at least the reception to these videos, extremely positive. I really couldn't ask for anything more, other than, like I said, maybe just having a bit more predictable or consistent viewership. But I think it's only fair to say that it's probably down to me to be more consistent, and then that will follow. I struggle with consistency because it's difficult to plan out how long something is going to take. And uh, I'm a bit of a, quote, perfectionist, I guess, in that way, where it's like, oh, I, I might spend hours trying to make something look good, and it's not, if I'm not happy with it, I'll just keep going until it is. 
rather than saying like, oh, I'm just going to put this video out now um, to hit the deadline, you know? But I stay up late and I work every day on this stuff. So, you know, I put in the time. It's just, yeah, I find it difficult to for a creative game like this to make it consistent. If I was playing Uncharted or some linear game, it's like, I'll play for 40 minutes, cut it at the 40 minute mark, and I can have a video out every day. That kind of thing. But this is a sandbox creative game where I'm also trying to like come up with cool ideas, make things look interesting for viewers, and also do things in ways that haven't been seen before, potentially. So it's it makes it hard to predict how long things are going to take. And that's my biggest pitfall for consistency. It's the same with City Skylines too. I'm very inconsistent with that because I find there's a lot of pressure to make things look good. <laughs> but maybe I should get that out of my head and just go like, no, you, you do it good enough anyway. And maybe if you just did it every day or every second day consistently... It would grow just the same or better. I don't know. You know, that's part of all figuring it out, I guess. So long story short, though, I'm very happy with how things are going. It's all, all very good. Better than it's ever been, that's for sure. So give it its flowers, as they say. Uh, yeah, let's we'll bring this to here. I'm going to finish off these walls now. Basically done on this side. Does that need to be a window? It could be a window that goes the whole way across. This tower is a little strange in that regard. Yeah, sure. Why not? Actually, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably change the look of that tower a little bit as time goes on. So I went to pick up more steel just through the other side of the walls. Get to that in a second. Uh, I like when you talk about this stuff, it's real as hell. Plus, it's interesting to hear about what's going on behind the scenes. Thank you. Yeah, for the first five years of doing this full time, four years really, when I was doing reviews, I was called Republic of Play. And the idea behind the name of the channel and calling people senators and tribunes and all this kind of thing was that um, it was kind of a crowdfunding thing. Not really crowdfunding, but like open source almost content creation. And uh, every month I showed everyone all my analytics on YouTube all the revenue I made and I had a Patreon at the time and I just wanted to be clear, open and honest and show everybody like what went into everything. And it was really cool. I did it for four years doing that. Um, decided to stop doing it eventually, but and just become a more normal YouTuber. <laughs> um, but that's how everything operated at first. So I am generally quite open. I'm not really afraid of talking about that kind of thing. And it's inter I think it's interesting for people. A lot of people don't know, I guess, what goes on for YouTubers and how they make their money and decisions and things like that, so I think it's interesting. I would want to know if I was just a viewer, so that's why I tell people. And I do want to know for other channels, <laughs> but they don't say so. But I, I'm that way now. Keep it, keep it to myself. It, create, it creates a lot. Of, it, it, this, there is a certain too much information kind of thing where people almost take ownership of what you're doing then. And it becomes a bit too much when you let them in too much. I get that. Is so far we want it to go? Yep. Need to cut that part of the wall. Wow, I actually just did the window. That's exactly what I wanted to do, so that was nice. Alright, we have our wall pretty much wrapping around the whole thing now. think about what next to do. That was kind of the truck station roof. The walls are going to wrap around. Yeah, so I guess we just have still have a little bit left to do here and then we can decide maybe doing some paint jobs for the machines themselves and clearing up the actual insides. It's just concrete the whole way around. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, that wasn't blueprinted, that one. Just so that it's easy to remove in the future in case I'd like it to be. Keep the consistency. The reason I do that is just so that if I ever want to destroy it, I can just destroy it in one click, even if I'm getting rid of the majority of the blueprint. Okay. This will be a door. Right. 
Right, to match that side. Alright, cool. The, the towers will change. They're just temporary right now. Missed a few things there. Let me catch up. Uh, I love your... Uh, sorry, let me go a bit further back. Hey, Darren. Darren. Hey, Ian. Uh, sorry if this is already asked. Any word on when you'll upload the floor plan for the new starter factory? Uh, only when this is cosmetics are done. So probably later tonight, actually, because this will be the last cosmetic stream on it. Now that I've pretty much worked out the exact... Because I just added parts to the floor out there, so that's why it didn't happen yet. Uh, I stopped watching when I stopped playing the game. When 1.0 gets released, I'll come back and watch the series from the beginning. That's really, I appreciate that. I wonder how many people would do that, because I feel like a lot of people would be looking for a series that starts with 1.0, rather than one that starts with Update 8. Especially depending on how many changes there are to the game, when 1.0 comes out. Uh, Well, uh, Finite Steak Machine says, A lot of people here are here just for Satisfactory, but with 1.0 coming up, it's not exactly a bad time to go all in on it. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm of two minds about this, and I have been for a long time. If you're thinking of being a content creator, you're just ever curious about doing it, There's, in my view, there's two approaches. You could go all in on one game, or you could be somewhat of a variety gamer. Now, you could be extreme variety, where it's like literally everything's different, or it could be maybe variety within a genre. So that's the lane I've chosen. I'm variety kind of within a genre. I was a bit more broad, but I'm narrowing and narrowing as time goes on. But now it's... I used to do like Stellaris. I had Imperator Rome on the channel. These are successful Let's Plays I did. But now it's more city builders and more uh, logistics games like this. So it's builder games, I guess, kind of. And I'm fine with that. I love those games. That's, you know, totally fine with that, obviously. It's certainly, for without a shadow of a doubt, the best way to grow a channel is to focus on one thing and do it as well as you can, and as regularly as you can. Doing that gives you the m maximum potential capture of the entire audience that are for that game. So the bigger the game, the better your chances are, but obviously the more fierce the competition is. So finding a more niche game and trying to stand out within that can also be really good. Satisfactory is kind of like that, actually, but also something like a Total War or that kind of thing. It's like, here's a game that definitely has a decent player base, decent amount of people looking it up, and uh, if you can become an expert on that, expert on that, or just make entertaining videos for that specific game, you'll do really, really well, and you'll grow quite fast. However, there's a double-edged sword to it, which is, and some people get out of this trap, they'll use that as a launch pad to kind of launch their channels onto other things then in the future. And if you're a good enough personality, you can maybe carry that into other things. Famously, like Total Biscuit was a StarCraft player, then it became a variety channel over time when he introduced a few of the games into his repertoire and started talking about them authoritatively. Uh, someone like Jack Frags, Battlefield YouTuber, but then he started dabbling in a few other games, and now he's more general FPS. But he grew off the back of Battlefield and that community. There's definitely a, a good approach to build yourself up as one thing if you then want to move into something else, that's possible. But the double-edged sword aspect is that if the game starts not doing as well, um, so let's say Satisfactory 1.0 comes out and for some reason it sucks and everyone, this isn't going to happen, but just imagine it did. And slowly, maybe Embracer says, because Embracer owned them, says that's it. You know, they're going through this horrible time at the moment, Embracer, so maybe they just like lay them off. And the game's out and it's done, that's it. Never gets anything else. Suddenly you've just hitched your wagon to a limp horse <laughs> or something, you know? You just kind of committed to something, built an audience for something, and it's out of your hands how that's going to go. And for a full-time career, that's a dangerous kind of thing to do. However, it can work out really, really well if the game ends up doing well and lasts around and stays around for a long time and you don't mind staying with one game either. So it's kind of interesting, you know? I look at other channels that do that and you'll see... Oh, here's a channel that built themselves up for Hearts of Iron, and now they hate playing Hearts of Iron. They're stressed out about it. They they hate the fact that when they upload something that isn't Hearts of Iron, they don't get nearly as many views. I see this with Total War channels as well, uh, just because I used to be in that community, so I know a few of those guys, and some of them, you know, they tell me that they hate doing it. 
you know, they hate it. It, it turns into a job, <laughs> a proper full-time job. And uh, it's just a job that they have to do because that's where the views are. And if they try to do other things, they can't capture those views. So you could und end up resenting the thing you do, which which could be awful, I guess. Um, so that's why it's a double-edged sword. I'm, I'm a variety gamer. I'll never just be all in on one thing. Because I just I couldn't do that. I would end up being really tired of it. Now I really like this game. I play it because I enjoy it, and there's so much more for me to get out of it. I've never beaten it all the way, and I'm learning as I go all the time. Genuinely quite interested. Want to play around with mods? There's a lot of life left in the you know this for me. So I'm I'm totally fine, obviously. But I do have that thing of like I wouldn't want to go all in. The other thing is just very last point I'll put on it is. I also learned firsthand by being blacklisted by the Total War developers and by Paradox um, that suddenly you just completely get cut off then when you're not first. You know, you don't have the access anymore. So there will be 20 YouTubers that all get codes to, for instance, City Skylines, right? Six weeks before the game comes out, they are all playing it. Now, obviously, they've signed NDAs and everything to do that, but I have to sit there after having just done a City Skyline series, just wishing I could have got a key for that game. Now, I'm still lucky. I got 400,000 views on that first episode, but think of how much, like, even just less experienced that I was with the game compared to everyone else. Your, quote, competition in terms of other content creators. Frankly, like, why would you watch me when you could watch someone like City Planner plays? There's only a finite amount of time in the day. We both do, like, hour-long videos. His are way better, <laughs> you know? So, and he knows the game more, and he plays only just that game. So it's like, man, that's tough competition, isn't it? Like, to, to carve out a niche when there are other people that are doing the same. Um, and then there's other people that are in the good graces of the company that will get DLC and updates and their feedback and everything heard first. And then I, I'll have to just wait because I'm blacklisted by them, you know? Uh, and same with other companies. So it's like, that's another reason why it could be a little dangerous going all in. What if Coffee Stain, like, not that it matters. They don't give their updates to anyone early anyway. Um, which is good. <laughs> but, you know, what if they never promoted me or they didn't like me or whatever the case might be? And it's like, oh man, that would suck, wouldn't it? So, it's also those reasons why I wouldn't want to go all in. Anyways, I digress quite a bit. I like chatting about all this, but I want to get back to the game. Have I played Planet Crafter? No. This community is the best, clearly. They are really, really friendly and really nice. Everyone is really super friendly, actually, here. I think it's because we have an older demographic. Um, I believe there will be a floor plan once I finish. Yeah, I like when you talk about this stuff. It's real as hell. I read that already. I love using your blueprints. I'm not very good at designing. Darren, I'm sure this has already been asked a lot of times before, but how do you... I've just gone over all of that. Even, like, how do I plan out things? The floor plans are done by trial and error. Like, I'll block out a, a section of the game or of the plan for the factory, and then I'll typically go into creative mode, fly up really high, check, like, the corners of the sizes of the build, and then go into Photoshop and design it out with that in mind. So... Well, often I go into Photoshop first. I have my grid, and I'll lay out where, how wide everything needs to be based on machines. But then I go into the game, and I see, like, okay, I'll just do the outer bounds of the factory. Am I now brushing up against any concrete? So this is something I explained in the Quartz build. If you watch the Quartz video of how I built that place, one of the things I talked about was when I was building out the perimeter for the factory, I realized that there are trees that cannot be destroyed, and that was one of the reasons that I raised everything up a few foundations but that was that happened during the phase i was in of figuring out the floor plan like how did i figure it out well i knew the sizes based on the refineries that i would need to go for and then when i was mapping out the area around that i draw basically in the game go around the outer bounds of the factory just the outer bounds just one foundation right i don't have to build it tall or anything like that just the outer bounds and that way i can see like am i able to fit everything within here uh, before I commit to actually putting all these floors and things in. And that's how I do it. So it's, it's trial and error. You know, it's trial and error. You have to do that a lot. I'm 46, probably in that bracket. Yeah, it says that my average demographics or something is like between 23 and 36. Something like that, The on, on the average. And you get like percentages breakdown for that. Um, actually, one other thing. I'll just show you really quickly. Let's tell you exactly what they are. On my website, whatdarrenplays.com slash about or as they would say in Canada, a boot. You can actually see my demographics and my views and all that kind of stuff. That's more to entice sponsors. Sorry for the flashbang. But this was of the uh, January to January 31st. The demographics, US make up 32%, UK 10%, EU 
Uh, 93% male. Shout out. It's actually pretty good in gaming to have 7% female, but it's because builder games attract, especially City Skylines, attracts more female audience. Anyway, 38% are between 25 and 34. 26% are between 18 and 24. And 21% are between 34 or 35 and 44. If you're 46, you're just slightly out of that, but you're probably, you know, closely, loosely into that 20% of the viewership there. Um, so, yeah. It's kind of interesting, but I have an older... I say older, they're my age. I'm 31. Everyone's genderly kind of around that age, so... That's good. <laughs> uh, right. Have I ever done Factorio? No, I'm not going to do Factorio. I played it. I've never done it on the channel. I streamed it a long time ago. I did actually do a review video of it on my review channel, and it did very well. It got like 400,000 views or something. Really, really high for me at the time, especially. And, um... I'm a, again, I'm a weird gamer. I'm the type of Factorio player that plays with the icons off on the machines because I like the look of the machines. I'm also the type of player that doesn't like the little robots that build everything for you. I just prefer to build it myself. And I'm also the type of player that couldn't beat the game because it's very difficult. I just got overrun with pollution and uh, run out of... Basically, I couldn't keep up with the... I would run out of the deposits I have have to relocate my factory but the pollution would be so great that I couldn't get out of the area I was in I could never figure out trains all sorts of problems I much prefer this game it's much easier <laughs> factory is the better factory game but it's not something I'll ever do on the channel because frankly the content creator landscape for that game is dominated by people who are extremely good at it and I'm not going to be that so uh, I've never played Kerbal Space Program no I was going to jump in on the second one but then it had really bad reviews so I never did one thing that turned me off that game was the whatever they're called, the little green aliens. But uh, I, I thought it was a cartoony, silly game. But then people are like, no, it's like serious orbital mechanics. <laughs> and I'm really into like physics, astrophysics. So I feel like I probably would get quite into it, but it's passed me by now. Watching Flats stream Overwatch for 16 hours daily when drops are happening, I'd be scared of burnout and hating the game I'm playing. Well, that's a bit extreme, but I used to stream um, three times a week. Each stream was eight hours each time, and then the other three days a week I was doing reviews. Oh yeah, I was there. I did it. One of the reasons I became, I've never become a content creator. I love playing games, and I don't want it to turn into a job. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I could totally see that. That's why I like playing on PlayStation, because that's separate from my kind of computer and my work, as it were. You're 72. Wow. Nearly dead. Don't say that. My dad is roughly around that age. I feel old because I watch these and I'm 14. You're old at heart. 1992, yeah, that's the way to be. 38, think I'm 28, feel like I'm 48, oof. <laughs> Nergal, what's one thing you regretted in your 20s? You might be able to give some sage advice here to someone else who's in their 20s. 21, starting to feel old. Yeah, so when I turned 21 slash 22, I was just coming out of college. And I don't feel like I've I mean, I have matured, actually, since then, but in many ways, you still think of yourself as, at least in my head, I still think of myself as 20, 25-ish, but I'm 31, so I don't know, I don't know at what point I'll re be reminded that I'm 30, you know, something will have to happen, and then I go like, oh yeah, like, I'm 30. Anyways, right, so those are the walls done, that took ages, <laughs> um, although it's still fun, good to chat and everything. So what we've done so far is we did out the skylights kind of metal grid for the lights we have our blueprint of our walls we need to do a ceiling but also some of the colors inside i might do the colors first let's see what about down here this needs its own walls and everything too now i think for truck stations what would be nice is having hex windows yes yeah, so let's do let's focus on the truck station aspect actually i think that'd be just more fun hex frame windows even just up to there would be fine. And because this is a truck station, maybe we could get away with doing this. So one, then with the hex windows, and then this would have to come up to three. Would that be weird? Would that look all right? Not that color, but it'll probably be white. I'm pretty much gonna do the whole factory in white. Or we could maintain the look we have with the steel. Yeah, let me just test out one of the look to it. 
Maybe the windows wouldn't be at the height that I'd look out of. It's more for the trucks, so it could just be like that. Real basement dweller type stuff. You don't have to give um, advice, by the way, Nurgle, if you don't want to, <laughs> if it's too personal. Um, car insurance is cheaper when you're older. That's about the only benefit. Hmm. I only actually um, got my license in October, so still being relatively new to driving, it's not that cheap for me. Hmm. Just thinking of one other thing, which is... This will be concrete underneath. Like that. There's a lot of things that beat the hell out of my body that I now get to feel the results of every day. <laughs> We're jaded gamers. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to test one other thing here. If I brought that there. Uh, we'd have to come down one more. Then it would be three on the bottom. To cover the, if we wanted to cover that bottom part. We don't have to, but it would make it symmetrical. And then maybe we could color it something. So you could have black as the line on top and the bottom and then white in between. Maybe. I'm trying to see what that would look like. Nah, it's kind of weird. It might look cool given a certain type of build, but not. It doesn't work with what we've got up there, I don't think. All right. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't mind having the concrete hanging over the edge, actually, thinking about it. Wait for this autosave. Uh, it's when you think that your prime of the late 90s was around a decade ago, then realize it's actually 25. Yeah, that's, that's the thing that gets you. Never start smoking or vaping. Yeah, for sure. When life starts hurting, you'll see yourself as 30. Been there. <laughs> It'll be your knees. Try to get up. That actually is happening. I mean, I'm really unfit. I've only just started recently going to the gym. I'm not overweight or anything. I'm actually quite skinny and everything. But uh, I'm very unfit. Like, very unfit. So, in December... So, I got a car in October. And I live in an area where there's no services around here. It's just a housing development in the middle of, like, nowhere. Between two towns, basically. So I wasn't really able to get to the gym unless I got the bus and I had to queue up times. Very difficult, at least for me, when I'm not very good at times, even just for my YouTube series. So, long story short, having gotten a car, I'm like, sweet, now I can kind of go to the gym. Um, I hate the gym. I absolutely hate it. I used to go before I had a personal trainer. Wanted to die every time I went. Really hate it. Don't understand people are like a, who love it. Just pure pain. Always has been. Doesn't matter how long I go for. I never round the corner of enjoying it. Hate it. But anyways, still going nonetheless. And um, I've decided to, I'm only doing running just to just to build up my fitness first before doing anything else. When I had a personal trainer a few years ago, just when I was trying to learn stuff about like lifting weights and things, you know, they were there to kind of teach me that. Oh yeah, I could have this maybe on the way in. Would that be weird? Yeah, I'm just still working out like what could kind of look good here. Uh, I can't remember where I was going with that kind of story, but just generally speaking, I'm going to the gym now, mostly just running. But I started watching like TV shows. I got a little iPad, a secondhand iPad that I just put on the treadmill. I've been running with that. But I was going to say, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, that's what it made me think of it. I'm starting to feel it in my knees that <laughs> I'm like definitely feeling it when I like stand up and stuff and I'm like I'm only 30 what I thought this didn't happen till you're like 60 <laughs> or like 50 maybe uh all right I just have to commit to something here basically the problem is this I would use steel but using the level one steel or one meter steel doesn't have the black bar on it so you don't get that kind of cool effect but the windows sort of have that black on it anyway. So I'm just trying to think, should I just go with this and then leave the bottom concrete? I might just do that. And that way it would have a similar look to the tops and bottoms of that part. And we just have the white walls in between the things. I think that's the way to go. And But that would come up too high. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, actually, this could work. Maybe just go the hex window all the way down to the bottom then. Yeah, I'm overcomplicating it. Just like that. So it would just be concrete on the bottom and that wall, just to give it a more clear indication. So it'd be like this. They're just taking these two segments here. That's kind of the effect of the wall. And then we'll have this every now and then. So it's super basic, but I, you know, I think that's just what I'm going to go with. <laughs> and then we'll just paint it white. All right, let's do that. Let's focus on this area then. I'm not going to blueprint it. We can just do it like this pretty quickly. Is it just... Yeah, so it's this the whole way up. There we go. Didn't need to take nearly as long as that, but there we go. All right, and we'll just color it white. Uh, I was able to convince my three-year-old that watching Moana for the third time this morning was not as good an option as watching you. Don't let me down. Oh man, I can't compete with Moana. I've never even heard of Moana, <laughs> whatever that is. But I already know I can't compete. Not gonna lie. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, little three-year-old. I just start swearing like crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. I'm trying to think of something clever or funny to say, but I just can't. I'm, I'm, I can't compete. I can't compete with Moana. Any ideas how to make your surface detail to apply to some depth to walls? Any ideas on how to make surface detail to apply some depth to the walls? Unfortunately, no. I can't think of anything that would do that. You want some depth to the walls. I mean, if you wanted to get complicated with cosmetics, there's lots of things you can do to make very cool looking factories. I'm going with a very simple look, mostly because it would take me forever to do anything properly creative. But using road barriers is basically the way you do everything in this game. So if I was to do something like that and that, um, yeah, so what you can have something like this. You want to have depth for your wall to an extent. Oh man, this is one of these things that takes forever to kind of master, but there are ways to do it. And get this to line up with the center point there. That might be good enough, actually, thinking about it. Hang on. Yes, there we go. You can hold control to snap onto that, and then move this across to about, like, I don't know, there. And then something similar could be done here. This is an example, but if you were to, like, so obviously you've all this clipping going on behind, but let's say you just reserve that foundation for wall space, right? A whole thick foundation of wall space. So you'd never see this. Let's just pretend. Now you've suddenly got like a kind of a 
I don't even know what you call it, but you know what I mean? Like a, some depth into the wall, like you said. And you could do that in a few places. Now, this one isn't particularly even, but if you spend some time at it, you can actually get it so it lines up to be, ex like, super even. I mean, it's pretty good. It's close enough. But, um, yeah, so those are things you could do. And people do do. Yeah, this one, I didn't, you know, I didn't scale it properly. But the way you can do it is, you get that. You can pop it into a, a blueprint designer, then maybe copy it over. But if you brought this, this up high enough... You can have these kind of like more interesting pillars. So I, I do know like a few creative tricks. I just don't have the time for this series. I'd spend forever on one factory if I was like doing all this. And this is kind of what I did with the big shell, especially when you start going off grid and you start making angles and shapes and hexagons and all these different things. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, Fluxo can give you, yeah, Fluxo is an awesome builder. He'll give you like the guides on what you need to do to get, um, kind of curved builds and angular builds and things like that. Um, I don't know the name of them, but I think they're Korean. There's like a Korean satisfactory player at, that, at the moment. I, I hope it's Korean, actually. I thought it was Korean letters that I saw. Let's see if I can bring it up pretty quickly. They made a nuclear power plant recently that looked phenomenal. I'll just type Korean, see what happens if it comes up. And no, probably in my history. Bear with me one second. I watched it not long ago. Not that long ago, I just kind of went through it quite quickly. Uh, yeah, sorry, just bear with me. Just trying to find it. Oh yeah, found it. Let me mute their music. Um, they didn't go into how they did it. But their build looked really, really good. Uh, is this them? Oh yeah, it must be. Game Lab. So this is a, a, a 50, 150 gigawatt nuclear power plant, and it's a time lapse of how they did it. It's super interesting, like, like creatively, like where it's placed, but it's also circular. Obviously, anything that's like circular angular in this game looks great because you can't normally do that. Um, so I didn't watch it fully. I kind of like skipped through it. It came up just as recommended. They're obviously using some program as well. Or mod, I should say, that allows you to do symmetry. Later in the video, you'll see they place one thing down on the right, and it's auto placed on the left. Um, so they've got like I don't even know how you do nuclear. I've genuinely never looked into it. But they've got blenders and particle accelerators. I don't know necessarily the concepts behind all of that. Oh, is this it? This might be it even here. Uh, they've got manufacturers in. All the piping. Oh my god, it's crazy. Yeah, I must have skipped over it. Because there's a section where you can actually see them doing things where multiple layers were appearing at the same time. And I was kind of curious how they did that. Factory decoration? This might be it, actually. Anyways, so yeah, it's possible. Obviously, you can do... And with asphalt, you can hide, off, hide a lot of the uh, clipping issues that you end up getting as well. It looks incredible, you know? It's not like I don't see these things and wonder, could I do anything like that? And it's like, well, no, not as fast as they could, but I probably could if I spent enough time. Oh, this is it. This is it. So they put a floor in, and then they somehow raise it. See? And they're using it as an anchor to put in actual things you walk around. So it's kind of interesting. There's obviously some mod that allows you to just move foundations or something. But no, I wouldn't be able to do this on my own creatively. It would take me so long to figure out like one section of this <laughs> uh, to try and do. And I'm sure that's what they've done, right? They've probably spent a long time designing it. And then here's them building it start to finish once they've had a lot of the ideas and the, the, ide like the idea in mind. There's no way that this was just done. Like this is the first time they've ever built this. I have to believe, I must believe that they built this somewhere else in their world and they're recreating it now because it for the time lapse to make it like nice and smooth because there's no mistakes or do-overs or anything you know um but yeah it's it's a mod called perfect circle ah there you go i'd be burnt out before i finish it <laughs> um but yeah it looks fantastic only fourteen thousand views so go shout out i gave it a like game lab shout out go check it out oh uh, i yeah you check it out see see the end for yourself i don't want to give it away see the end for yourself all right, anyway, so long story short, I'm not the guy to help you with creative stuff because I've chosen to kind of do minimal creativity and let the lighting of the game do the heavy lifting for me. 
But every now and then I'll probably, you know, the most creative I'll get is stuff like the big Brutalist factory or... Uh, some of the internals, I think, of the Copper factory look nice. And maybe if I can make some blueprints with some curves and arches and things in there, I'll do it. But for the most part, it'll be fairly rectangular factories, I think. Uh, I'm not running any music anymore, so bear with me. All right, let's continue. So we have our, we painted it. It's our insides. We haven't done the towers yet. The roof is on. It's looking good. Uh, that's going to be our concrete walkway on the left. No concrete walkway on the right because we just have the inside. Hmm. I'm just wondering, should this be asphalt? No. We'll just leave it as is. All right. Make this little doorway then as well. And get white. Blue trim looks good. And then we'll put down some floor plat platterns? Patterns. It is funny, like, obviously, it's fun to be creative in this game, or try to be, but for the most part, um, <laughs> for the most part, everyone just flies over their whole factory anyway. You design all these walkways and stuff, and then it's like, well, you know, I can just get around much easier. So I'm actually even trying to think now, is there a way to design a factory that looks somewhat real, but also just considers the jumping and, and the zip lining and the, um, all the other ways you can kind of get around, you know? Yeah, I was thinking we could have had a walkway that goes in there, or we could just... Yeah, we could probably just sneak it up this side, probably, right? I don't know, actually. Not back. Maybe... Because I, I kind of needed this area for turning. Yeah, sorry, I'm just going to redo this. I'm going to leave this for turning. I'll just make an actual walkway so you can walk over the trucks at the end if you wanted to. That would probably make more sense. Again, not that anyone's ever probably going to do this, but... Difficult as it was. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's not high enough. <laughs> Trucks need to turn here. They need to go higher than that. Although, this would probably need to wrap around actually thinking about it. So this can go all the way into here, this can go here. Sweet. So that gives trucks still room to clear through. People often do these kind of things as well, which I, I like the idea of, but I'm not really good enough again at the game to do this kind of thing. But you could do something like this, do a diagonal line and go straight down as a sort of a beam support. So that it looks like it's actually being propped up. 
find the same anchor point which is here and then go to the same height difficult with diagonal though to get them to be the same that's it there i think that probably clips through the wall though oh no it doesn't actually does it no it actually doesn't that's kind of neat yeah something like that or you could always use the um the actual frame foundation that just sits under it but if we maybe painted it black to see if it's worth keeping uh what you could also do i suppose that the wall is put on the sideway beam support like that looks like it's actually gone into it so that's kind of cool and then maybe the beam connector just to hide the gap on the end barely see it anyway but something like that could be a bit better That wouldn't look right. What about that and then that? Can't do both, no? Kind of can, actually. Well, that doesn't look right, actually, with the screws. So yeah, just leave it. Alright. I'll leave it. Why not? I don't think trucks are going to bump into it. I don't think so. <laughs> I suppose we could get our truck and drive it around here and see what it's like. But, um, yeah. Alright, cool. So there we go. I love the series so much. Glad to catch you live. Thank you very much, Brian. I don't even put walls and roofs on my factories yet for the most part, actually. I feel like if I was playing on my own, I wouldn't. I At least roofs. I do like putting a wall around it, though. Something nice about that. Um, there's a mod that allows you to put circles or, or foundations and to erase them as you would. All oh, right. That seems like what, he's, what that person is using. Perfect circle, maybe. <laughs> Thanks, Alexander. Maybe. Uh, did you see how you can make concrete way more vibrant if you manually type the saturation to 5? Because the slider doesn't go above 1. Uh, I'm not too sure what you mean. Type the slider for concrete? I'll do that in a second. It's just about to autosave. Are you saying in the color swatches? That you can paint concrete... Like a brighter white something. So, this is at one. This doesn't change the color of it. Like white is just white for this, isn't it? So I'm not really too sure. You said manually change it. Manually type the saturation. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. I don't know what that means. Unless you mean a colored concrete, sorry. Which that, yeah, I know about that. Open your paint gun. Oh, what? There is no paint gun, right? It's just this. So my color swatches are open now. And on the color swatch, put in like 1.4. Oh, you're saying type it in. Like that? 1.5? We've got 0, 0, and 1.5. This was 1, but you can go 1.5. Select. It does seem to stay that way. It still says it. But it doesn't... I don't see any difference. Oh, yeah. There is a difference. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see it. Wow, cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Is 1.5 the limit? Oh my god. Wow. That's an interesting little tip. Super interesting. Oh my god. You can totally break it. Dennis. Thank you very much for the super chat. Says your videos are really high quality and the best for satisfactory in my opinion. Keep up the good word. Hey, appreciate that a lot. Thank you. And it says it was your first super chat on a live stream. I don't know if that means just mine or any, but if it's any. Well, either way, thank you. But if it's any, I really thank you for being your first. Yeah, that's quite cool. So that must work on walls. No? Oh, so it's only for the concrete. Interesting. What about grip metal? No. 
Yeah, wow. So you can make really, really, really bright concrete stuff. Wow, yeah, didn't know that. At some point, it stops changing much. What about coated concrete? I want to see it over there now. Because that has a similar sort of effect. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Dude, that's game changing. <laughs> that you can do it to coated, coated concrete. Oh, but we can see the lines just a little bit. Maybe because I've gone very bright. And not that bad though. I don't mind it too much. But let's say back down to what you said, which is maybe just 2.0. But just brighter than it was before, but nothing too crazy. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe we'll do that. Paint the whole place a slightly brighter, whited, white coated concrete. Because it is supposed to be kind of a white factory. Does it change the reflections at all when looking? Not really, no. That's good then. Yeah, I was just making sure it wasn't like bugged or something. We're gonna wash our floors. <laughs> that's kind of cool. All right. Yeah, good tip. Thank you for that. Oh, someone just tweeted me. Oh, no, not tweeted. In Discord said the video explains the color things. I'll check it out after. I don't want to get too distracted. Any more than I have already. Um, right. So that was... Oh, yeah, the truck stations. Oh, yeah, we wanted to put on the patterns. That was the next thing. That area is pretty much done now, right? Patterns and then coloring. All right, let's do it. So patterns I probably have in one of these containers here. Oh, maybe not. Color cartridges, right? Don't know if I've left them anywhere. Might have to go to the biofuel factory. I should have hundreds, I thought, with me. I hope I haven't lost them somehow or put them down somewhere and now they're gone. Ooh, that's a little concerning. I doubt I used them all. I would have had like about 600. Oh, they're in that box. Early. Yes. 530. Good. Concerning because it's not infinite to make them. Alright, cool. Oh yeah, and down here it needs to be concrete again. the lights for the rock thing as well. There's so much still to do. And the machines upstairs need to be colored again. A little bit more. Uh, not 1.5. Make it 5. It goes full white. Oh, we just did that. Yeah, we just did that. Yeah, I just had a look at it. Full 5.0. It looked crazy. It was super bright. Try super black as well. Yeah, I might do that. That would be kind of cool to have. Because I often just use asphalt to kind of give that black effect. But if we could do it with the foundations. Um, then I could put that underneath the machines or something instead. That was part of the road blueprint, which is no longer needed. But thinking about it, why does this do that? Oh, it's because of those. A uh, Sriracha. We'll check that out in just one second. This. I think I might be messing with it. Is that a two meter? For some reason it is. It should be a one meter. I'll just check that out in just one sec when I fly up here. Oh, bit of a pothole there. Looks like he was fine. <laughs> All right, so that's five super chat that says, thanks for all the great content. I enjoy Satisfactory a lot. And I think you make great design. Winky face. Greetings from Germany. Thank you very much, Carl. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you. Everyone's always really positive. I am harsh on myself. I don't know. I'm just cynical. Can't help it. All right, looking cool. It'd be nice to maybe put some floodlights just outside, actually. That could be cool. Uh, so, I'm actually going to asphalt this entire thing, and we'll put signs and stuff on it. Uh, I'll have a look at what a fully black looks like, just out of curiosity. So that was black. But that's zero. What? How do you get worse than... Oh, you bring this up, do you? The 5.0? I don't know if that's any different. Let me just see. Or maybe you go down to minus here. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like matte black as well, almost. Oh, me likey. Yes, I like that a lot. <laughs> I look forward to 1.0 where we could actually just have... I'm sure they'll start introducing more materials. But that's like... Uh, it's like Vanta Black. It's not reflecting almost any light. Um, that's cool. Hey, Mark the Man gifted five memberships. Thank you. We'll see who those went to now in just a second. As YouTube determines. Go to 10. Turn it all the way up to 11. <laughs> So that's 10 there. I don't think it's any different than 5. It's almost as black as it gets. That's gone to Ranol... Ranol Lodl. Ranol Lodl? Pardon? Jonathan 5, TMD, and Tyler Gray. Welcome... To what darn please? Membership club. Exclusive club. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mark the Man. You are the man. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you. I wonder what it looks like coded. Oh my god. Sleek. I can actually see all the dirt. Not very polished at all. <laughs> but that looks cool. Yeah. Again, this room is pretty dark, but we just to uh, see what it would look like. This is it next to the extreme white. So we have now gray coated concrete, black. Minus five, minus ten black, and minus or plus five white, all coated concrete. Yeah, it's cool. Definitely going to use that somewhere in the future. Maybe not this build, but maybe the next one. What is the next build? Oh, you know what? This would be perfect for the oil factory. Oil slick, uh, coated concrete, coated in oil. <laughs> Bit of a waste, but uh, should be good. Yeah, it's cool. I wonder if that like a little bug or something that they'll fix or if they'll just leave it. Allowing negative values like that. I hope I hope they'll just leave it. Alright, so um yeah, the numbers. So we have our various numbered truck stops. What do we have to go to? Um patterns. This would be number one. Zero and then one. Would that be alright? Yeah, I don't see why not. Zero one. Well, I guess I'll just do zero the whole way around. Zero right in the front. Alright, simple. Uh, then in here, this is the no-go zone. Two center bits. You do it for yeah, it seems like you could do a lot. I mean, if it's just saturation, that will work for any color, won't it? So you could probably have super bright red or something else, I would imagine. I d I d maybe not. I, d I don't know, actually. It could just be that saturation scale, which is just white or black, right? Um, right, so just... Yeah, I guess just one... Maybe every one, two, three... So 
Well, it needs some sort of line to say, like, it's a separate... You're either on the inside track or you're not. Uh, so I want a sideline. Start it here. So then there's the dotted line, and then sideline. Dotted line, sideline. Alright, so side dotted line, please. It's forever bugged me that there's an L shape here, because it is just a side dotted line. It's supposed to look like uh, that one. So I always mess these two up. But satisfactory things. No parking. Not to be parking along the back wall, of course. Um, what else could we add in? For the right arrow for turning in here. And then just straight arrows as well. Can't do that because it would interrupt that one, would it? Oh no, it wouldn't. It can go alongside that. That's actually good. Yeah, I'll tell you what, so there, here, at the beginning of every dotted line, and then on the left of it, it'll be a turn in. Not that this matters, but I just think from a distance it can kind of look cool then after a while, you know, it's like, oh yeah, it's cool. A few different things going on. So it's like, you can pull into the left there, you pull in there. Okay. And then for them pulling back out... Hmm, actually I was just thinking maybe it should be... Because if you park up here and then you pull out, maybe this should be the left and that should be the right. That would get rid of the dotted lines. Maybe I'll just leave it like that because we know what it means. Off to work, have fun, see you later, Falk. Oil coated concrete, oh shit, when like a word with you. <laughs> Do you have global illumination? I'm curious to see... How the super black looks with and without. Uh, I do have it on at the moment. Yeah, that's why it's so dark in here. So we could just quickly flick it on and flick it off. That's with it off. That's our like extra white floor. That's our regular gray, normal concrete. That's our Vanta black. So does it work with other colors? Probably not, right? Negative... 10. No, because it's just going to be black either way, right? Unless you bring this up. Oh yeah, that's what you would do. You bring this up to 5. That'll be red. And then what would it just have been if I left that normal and it didn't cheat? Oh uh, yeah, see? Big difference. So it's just much more vibrant. Yeah, it's a great tip. Super good to know that. Because you can make really bold floor patterns if you want to. But even just for the black and white, I like the cleaner look of the concrete and then the super dark look as well. That's really nice. I don't know if I'll use the colors, but maybe never, sometime, maybe. And it did seem to just affect wall, um, the concrete floor. Oh, it'll probably affect concrete walls then as well, wouldn't it? Cause it uses that same sort of weird translucency trick. That'd just be it be normal red. Ah, oh, no, it doesn't. Damn. So it is just the flooring. Okay. Well, whatever. So close. Alright, cool. Um, yeah, I don't think there's really much else to do with this, then. Just color. Alright, let's get to coloring, speaking of. Uh, so, I need my dark grey. 
and street light yellow. Bring that all the way down. Need a better graphics card? Yeah, I've got I've got a 3090. Um, so that's why the game runs really well for me. But when Update 8 first came out, it ran really badly. It was really poorly optimized for my card specifically, and maybe a few other high, higher end uh, NVIDIA GPUs. So it's not always a, not always good. Uh, yeah, it's actually another reason I kind of say that that first series sort of died because I couldn't play Update 8 for. Ooh, I just realized this. Maybe you could just leave that gone. Is that all right? This would prevent them clipping through. Oop. Clipping through, I think. Ah, not good enough. I mean, it's not the worst thing, but still, I don't like it. If it's not there, does the beam come through? Ah, the beams come through. Alright, well, maybe I will just leave those little caps on it then. Whatever. I forgot how I did it a second ago, so I'll just grab this. That way. That's fine. Alright. I recently was gifted an RTX 2080 Ti and it works super well on it. Yeah, Steam done like hardware surveys. Oh, they do them every month actually, but the, one of the more recent ones. It was interesting. My card is like 1% popular. Like the 4080 and the 4090 are like more popular than my card. I don't know why 3090 is like just never got bought. Auto save. Hello, leveler. Almost done in here now, and then we can go up to the machine floor again. Work on that. Man, time flies when you're streaming. What time did I start at? 2? 5.30 now. Wow. Sweet. Alright, so the floor is probably... I kind of like the orange look, but maybe yellow would be better. to keep the theme of all the other ones. Yellow in America kind of means something different than it does in the UK. Yellow is normally like a no-go, I think. You're not supposed to cross over yellow lines and stuff. This could be concrete, concrete. Ooh, can't do that. Must be a half foundation, okay. Watch the pothole. Oh. I don't know why I did that. Don't need to do that, right? Yeah, there. Oh, it's already done. Okay, cool. Right, so to continue the... This thing. Yeah, it's in from the road, so that's fine. Just bring it in like that. prevent him slamming in one of these trucks if they go AWOL. Just 
260 viewers. Well, thank you very much. I've gone a bit quiet again, <laughs> just as I'm focused on this painting here. Uh, I do a thesis project on who on a huge 3D pr printer with a robot arm. Wow, that's pretty cool. Oh, those aren't lights. Those are windows to the sky. These are lights. These aren't. These are just windows or glass frame foundations. These are lights. Behind them is a um, one of these, uh, but flat. Lying down flat. Slide line, so that way. And so that's done, yeah, by mistake. Can't put down that side line on a half foundation. That's all good. Good. All right, almost done with this section anyway. Really should. Why am I so confused? Um, hot key this because I keep using it. He says while well, never hot keying it, and then make it yellow. The same yellow. Yeah. All right, cool. There we go. Cleaner. Cleaner outside. Just about. Uh, I think I'll probably put a, probably put a floodlight on that as well. Do the upper roof as well to be the same. A real one in the lab. Yeah, that's cool. An interesting bit of uh. You just gave gave up that information. It's like, hey, just so you know, I do this. It's like, cool. <laughs> What's the thesis about? Why do you need a huge 3D printer robot arm? Alright, pretty happy with all that. So... Uh, what's next then? So that was the, that's basically the entire truck station aspect done, right? Pretty much. I don't think there's anything left to do in there. We still have to do these towers to clean them up a little bit. But yeah, this is the truck station area. We could have, go for a little test drive actually, just for a bit of fun. Just to do something different for a minute. So I might go out, grab the truck, drive it in, do that loop, make sure it works. My vehicle. Oh, I thought my vehicle was here. No. Uh, it's down that way. There it is. I was wondering where I left it. You're not tired, darn. I'm not tired at all. No. Yeah. Feeling pretty good. I used to stream eight hours back in the day, and my last start especially stream was eight hours. I don't plan on going that long, but I just want to keep focusing on trying to get as many of these cosmetics done as I can. When I downloaded your save after episode 12, curious if you remember where you logged off so I can have your equipment. Uh, almost all the saves I've ever added around that time, I think, are my body or my person should be next to the hub. And next to a bunch of boxes with my stuff in it, because a lot of people asked for that. Um, if it's not, I can't remember what episode 12 is, but if it's the Copper Factory, I'm probably just in there. I'm sorry that I don't remember any better. But if you load it into Satisfactory Calculator, you'd probably see where I am. But yeah, sorry, I don't remember. Specifically, anyway. Because I got that feedback a lot, so I started just always logging out next to the hub, next to all my stuff, in a container, so... I've gotten better at it now, but yeah, if it's before that, then I'm not sure. I do feel like I shouldn't be in a place that you won't find me. It's not like I'm in some random part of the jungle, you know? I normally saved it next to the build I was currently doing or at the hub. It should be one of those two.
I integrate a sensor to measure. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. It gets uneven because of the heat. I can't say too much. Then I write a lab report about it. <laughs> Interesting. There's a recall. Oh, sorry. A friend of mine bought the 2080, was new. You ordered one, but somehow was shipped two. There's a recall, and he ended up getting both replaced. You run SLI for a while. Wow. That's hardcore. That's super hardcore for those types of cards. Whoop. Does SLI really work? I felt like a lot of companies didn't really use it, don't use it, because it doesn't work very well. Or like not a lot of games support it, I guess. If it is the CCF, then he's sitting in the truck area. Yeah, it's either the truck area or I feel like maybe the power room, if that's done at that point. Forty ninety is great. Yeah, I'm thinking of buying a new one. Not that I need anything new necessarily, but... um. Uh. You can just you can just write it off basically as a company expense. So it's like, yeah, I could do with an upgrade and then sell the old one. Doesn't hurt anything. Although I don't think I need it, you know. I don't think I need it. <laughs> so the way this is going to work is that you'll always be pulling in here. There won't be that much traffic in this place. It's not going to be like the Copper Caterium Factory. People will just pull up to the one they want to go to, grab what they need, and then move back out. That's the plan, anyway. Should be alright. <laughs> High speed pulling out of that place. This is a, a quick test. I'll just make a route. A very short one. Probably a bit close to the wall there. It's probably going to hit the gate. Let's say that we're pulling into number three. Which is just ingots, I think. The line is flickering for some reason. Be two foundations placed on it. I don't know where I'm going. I just thought maybe I could come down here to turn. <laughs> See if the truck can handle that. Sorry, Bean. It's more about just pulling into that place and moving around that I want to check. But I think I might have hit the gate on the way in. But we'll see. Go back off for a minute. How much did it load? 1,400. Wait for him to reset. Ugh. Back in just one sec. Hey, Nom Bizzle. AKA, oh, he's already reset. I'll have a look. I found that almost no matter what I do, they tend to hit the wall on the way in. <laughs> but I think that was clear that I was just doing a bit too much. I should have made a sharper turn. But that's all right. Still gets in. Obviously, I'm not going to use this, but it's just to see in future when I do actually use this um, multiple trucks to come in here. Just wanted to see like what it looks like. 
as the truck is driving around. Yeah, seems fine to me. Seems fine to me. Alright. I'm gonna tell you to stop. Delete that. Uh, how do I. Just to save a lot of pilot, delete the path. I'm not actually doing it. There we go. I'm gonna reset this to say. Unload. And we'll just feed that back in because I don't want this material right now. Back off and come back in. Yeah. There we go. Just fill it back up. Oh. You know you had to truck down by the storage containers, right? Yeah, it's actually full of stuff though, so I couldn't have brought it up here. It's full of uh, quartz crystal. Is that done? Yep, cool. And just to prevent that happening in the future, we'll just set that back. Bonk. Hello, happy to catch you live. You're my favorite creator playing Satisfactory in Cities 2. I hope everything with you as well. And have an awesome rest of your stream. Unfortunately, I can't stay. Oh, no worries. But thanks for stopping by, Moogle. Appreciate that and for the kind words. Shout out to Moogles, generally. Alright, cool. That was just a nice little test, just to see what it looks like going in and out. And to drive around a little bit for fun, for funsies. I'm going to go pick up my Explorer, and then we'll get back to it. So I'm going to go up to the top floor now and work on uh, a lot of the paint jobs for the machines and the belts and stuff, because a lot of them aren't done. Then a ceiling needs to go on with some lights, and then the walls to the bottom floor, and that's everything, I think. Oh, we have to do the water extraction area. Damn. It'll take a while. No, it shouldn't take too long, but I have an idea that I'd like to implement. It'd be nice to make a kind of a slanted roof with glass for it. Kind of like a greenhouse it's great but of course it's important to optimize the path ah don't need to worry about any of that so for instance I've got a I've got trucks all piling into the copper criterion factory delivering uh, whatever they get out of their miners and you don't need to I don't know what you mean by optimize the path but they all just come in they spend I've the only thing I've done to optimize I guess I would say is every 10 seconds or I've made sure that the loading and unloading is only 10 seconds. So it's the same for them all. Now they all hit the wall on the way in, by the way. <laughs> um, anyway, the point would be this, is that they... What's the point? The point is basically that they grab everything out of the miners and deliver everything here. So they're not running short for time. And there's only one truck for each miner. So they're actually relative, like quite efficient. They all wait one behind the other and they go to each station. They actually deliver everything manifold style. So... I'm not sure what I'd need to do to optimize it. It would be nice if you could somehow tell a truck to only leave when it's full. That would cut down on the amount of constant burn rate of coal, I guess. But other than that, we just follow the road and stay on our side. And I've never had any issues. This place could do with having those ceiling lights put in. They weren't designed when I first built this, so I'll have to update that in the future. Leave this here for the future. And just delete some of these, maybe. I need a general deposit place. Something where you can just drop it in and it can get turned into tickets. Not like wasting material. It's not too bad if it's just ingots, I guess, but still. Oh, I see. I meant don't hit the... Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Death, for sure. Generally speaking, I'll try to avoid hitting walls. They seem to always hit the walls of the gates. I remember redoing that route multiple times where I was like, okay, I'll take the turn even sooner and I'll take it even sooner. And still, it's like they're attracted to the edges of the damn gate or something. But um, it doesn't really affect anything. It's all fine. Especially when you're not there, it doesn't happen. You can see that they just go straight through. Physics only happens when you're in the region. Unless two paths literally cross each other head on, then they will deadlock. But that's not going to happen, as long as you stay on your side of the road. Even for uh, junctions, it shouldn't happen.
perfect. Now, I was just having a look. Why is it like that? Oh, that's the asphalt. Oh, yeah. The little black strips. That's kind of annoying. But anyway, I'll, I'll handle that. Right, so um, next up is if we're just going to be doing coloring. Actually, I don't really need anything. We'll just hop back upstairs. And I'll get out my color codes so we can just color code everything really quickly. Right, so I've uh, mentioned this to people before in the stream, but just to go over it one more time. Uh, basically, on this side, we've got all screws. So these are all screw machines. The red color is rotors. The purple is reinforced iron plates. The green is iron rods. And the orange is iron plates. So I want to color code the kind of area around here based on what the area itself is making. But also, we have to kind of go over little bits with some extra railing. So I'll do the railing first, because then we can color that all together. Like this. Now, the bits where I leave little gaps like that, what I do with that is I just basically put down a little ladder, and that kind of makes it look more purpose-built <laughs> for being having an uneven edge like that. But it kind of works out. So. Totally fine. And might have to start down here, actually. Yeah, I was trying to think if the rail should, if this should go down further. I mean, this bit, maybe. Do about there. What about on this side? That's alright, because we're going to have bridges going across to this section as well. Looks a bit better that way. But I think that's as far over as it really needs to come. Nice being able to look down. There's no need to have paving out or whatever metal grid out where you don't need it. Any screws? Yeah, it's quite a bit. Using the cast screw recipe, each belt is doing 480 per minute. So there's 480 coming out here, there, there, and then one other at the end. So there's four groups, each group doing 480. Whatever it is, 480 times 4, 1080 or something, or 1920? Yeah, 1920. How much we make, but we don't actually produce any that gets stored. They all go into machines. This factory doesn't, like, make screws. It makes screws as part of another thing. It makes rotors and reinforced iron plates, which require screws. It's working well. As you can see, the belts are nice and full, but not stopping or jittering, which means working as intended. Should be, anyway. If we find any inefficiencies, we'll find them today, that's for sure. Need to start with the lengthways bit up here first. Just realized one part where that might not make sense. So um need to just see where these Yeah, so that's going over right there. So it'd be nice to continue that bridge. Not that it matters, you can't actually really walk around the area thinking about it. I mean you can go in between the machines, I guess. Yeah, you can. So it would be somewhere like here that needs to go back over to there. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And we're just slightly higher up than it. Well, that seems like a perfect place for one. As you can see, it would have to be down the middle, which is why the uh, railing is actually offset with those ladders on the edges. That's why. The same for here. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so, to do that, then, I guess we'll need the ramp that goes down. Uh, I just need to see really quickly how I've done it on the other side. If the ramp is... The ramp is at the beginning. Okay. So it's one, two, three, four. Four across. Can't nudge it when you put it down. I don't know why... How I did this. I think I just did that, didn't I? Didn't I just literally look at it and move it over or something? Damn it. There's a way to just get that to move over there. Okay, I know what I can do. I can just use the uh, barrier. Alright, so. A bit tedious, but we can just do that now. One, two, three, four. So that's one, two, three. It looks like these groups are... Oh, no, they're not. They're not closer together. That's fine. And then bring this down with a ramp. And then you'd be in. 
That does seem closer than the other side, is it? I hope not. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six until you get to the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Huh. I wonder why that happened. One, two... Really only two founda- three foundations between here and the next row. Oh, yeah. I see. This needs to come out again. And that way as well. Hmm, yeah, I guess so. I mean, why not? Alright, so make it symmetrical then. I had to use the barrier last time too, did I? Oh, my memory is so bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I, they, I, they must be a little bit closer together than... Just to, just to put me at ease. That's 24 meters. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. It is still 24 meters, so I don't know why my... Walking around is shorter here, but I think it's because this comes in further than these things. You know, we're like pretty, we're in line with the bar. So that would have to be the edge there. Be in line with the bar. Well, that must mean that we're coming out further on this side than I should be. But it doesn't matter, I'll just, I'll just leave it, it's fine. It's not like that it really matters if one's a slight bit shorter bridge than the other. It's just strange that I didn't want it to be clearly off-center, but I... Oh, but it is. <laughs> yeah, so it can't have that. Can't have that. Right. So this needs to be shrunken in. Yeah, this this isn't supposed to start here. It's supposed to be further in. Because it's supposed to be in line with this bar coming down. And that's where the bar is supposed to come down. But I don't know. I'm just trying to think would it not be nicer then. You can't walk along it then, otherwise. Because it'd be right out to the edge of the machines. Whereas on this side you can. There's like a little bit of room. Yeah, weird. It's just not fully mapped that one out, I think, in my head. You, I mean, you could. It's just that these things are in the way. That's that's why. Are they not in the way on this side? Oh, they are. Okay, well then maybe that's just the way it's going to be. Or going to be. Yeah, alright then. Sorry for um, running around a bit, but I think I've got it now. Then. Get rid of this. Yeah, it's just very tight then, isn't it? You can't really walk here. I don't know why this is so breaking my brain. It must be because the assemblers aren't going all the way to the other edge. That is the bounding box of the assembler. Yeah, so it's just the... Okay, that's fine. Okay, fair enough. Alright, so it is going to be off-center a little bit. Whatever. We'll put that back in. We'll leave it at that. So that's how far we'll come out. That gives us a little bit of walking space. The same amount of walking space, actually, between here and there. And between here and here on the other side, so that's fine. Alright, and I'll put the, yeah, I'll put those in at the end. That looks great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm being overly picky with it, but this will look good in, once it's done. So I'll, I'll probably will just bring this to about here and then tuck it in so that the walkway doesn't go out too far on that side because it doesn't do that on the other side. That was uh, part of what was just tripping me up as well, which was the these ones. There's only four assemblers, whereas the others have six. We'll see how that works out for us. Okay. Um, right, so that's going to be one of our bridges over. So these bridges will be shorter than the one that's going to be back here. That's that's why the count was a bit different, but that, that makes sense now. 
These two can be changed. Yeah, actually, I really shouldn't have put these in. These should go in after the walkways because they're going to be off-centered. Uh, so, we'll have to use our thing, whatever it's called, barrier. Put that in there. Should be making good progress now, now that I've got it figured out. In Skylines, you say you aren't math-minded. How do you explain this? Uh, it takes me a l very, very, very long time. That's why. I'm not math-minded, but I work really hard. <laughs> but I'm not mathematically-minded. It's really... I'm really not. I'm not very good at math. I wasn't very good at math. I did go to college to be a programmer, but... I got the bare minimum you could get to pass to get into it, and it t I had to have tutors, it took me a very long time. So I'm not mathematically minded naturally, but I mean, you can brute force learn anything if you're good enough, or you put enough time into it, I guess. So that's what I mean by that. Okay, that's all good. They must be done down on this side, so let's grab this again. Yeah, I haven't actually played the Satisfactory soundtrack for a while. Maybe I'll switch out the Minecraft for a bit on the stream here and just let the normal soundtrack play. It's been a while. Turn the factory down a bit. Alright. Might not kick in for a little bit, but it should come on. Play the boombox. So oh, yeah, we could put on some Deep Rock Galactic, maybe. I only have one tape for it in the game at the moment, which is just the... Uh, yeah, Deep Rock Galactic soundtrack. Sure, let's do that. Do I have any of the tapes? Oh, you can buy them in the awesome shop as well, can't you? I did that already. Cool. Maybe I'll just change the volume just a little bit. Right, bridge one, two, three, and then four is the final one. How have you been? I was out on vacation, back now, glad to catch your stream again. I'm good, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good, thank you for asking. Hope your vacation was nice, relaxing. You don't mind telling us? Where did you go, if you went anywhere? Yeah, so I feel like this needs to come in here. So that the ramp can start that way. These bridges are going to be even shorter, I think. Those ones might be okay. This one maybe can come in. I'm 186 hours into my save, and I think I messed up that it's enough that it's unrecoverable. No, no way. How could it be unrecoverable? And have you been following along? Or are you just doing your own thing? Because also, I've often said to people, like, instead of just restarting, why not just, you know, store up a bunch of goods, keep your progress, and just rebuild some new factories? Like, what you could do is you could power down and leave like a bunch of things abandoned and then set up new things elsewhere in the world now that you've already progressed. I know that's a bit weird, but part of me hates the idea of people like losing all their progress, you know? What is the best computer recipe? Sorry, um, I really don't know. I'd have to quickly look it up. I mean, I don't, I don't really know what the best anything is, per to be perfectly honest with you. I just look up um, stuff and see what suits my particular factory and build. It depends. I mean, the, the definitive answer usually is if you look up um, things on Satisfactory Calculator, for instance, 
you'll find whatever is the least amount of inputs to the most amount of output is usually what the quote best recipe is. It's like what uses the ore at the very beginning of the chain most efficiently. That's typically the answer. But that does mean you have to work out a lot of stuff. You have to go pretty far back with computers, you know? I'm just trying to think where do I put the ladder in. Ladder could go there. Nice. Alright. Um, so yeah, earlier on the stream we were looking at like, oh, why did I choose a certain recipe for copper? It's like, well, for the amount of ore that goes in, you get the most amount of ingots out. But you'd have to do that for like every stage of the way towards computers to find the optimal way to make computers. But it also depends, you know, I feel like um, when I'm doing heavy modular frames, a lot of people don't like using screws. Now, I'm not sure what the most efficient recipe is, but I'm going to try and make heavy modular frames without screws. And you can do that. You have literally no point in your chain where you make screws. But is it most efficient? Probably not. But it might be the most, like, easy to do. Oh, I was in zoop mode, was I? Don't worry, they never have to know that it's not really a floor hole. No one will ever have to find that out. It's just a nice way of saying that this isn't clipping through it. <laughs> I'm doing my own thing, working on tier 7. I've been handcrafting way too much stuff to get there, so I want to refresh. Right. Yeah. I can kind of see why then. Carrying down old factories is a huge pain because you get a ton of floating crates. You can only delete 50 things at a time, so you end up with a 50th as many crates as you had buildables. Well, I guess it, it kind of depends, but I, I would say that what you could do is just go into a factory. Yeah, the people who use Satisfactory Calculator just to mass remove things, it gets put into one container, which is nice. But you could also do what I did in my previous series, which was I had two or three factories that made computers along the coast here, and I ended up just going in and removing all the machines. I left the building standing. That was all the concrete and iron plates and all the a lot of the belt work and stuff. Well, actually, a lot of the belts I did remove. But I took almost everything out of the factory to build it somewhere else. It didn't take that long. Like, genuinely, it didn't take that long. 30 minutes, maybe, to empty out the entire place in a couple of containers, because the machines are made with far less components, generally speaking, than all the walls and the foundations and all that kind of stuff. Um, so what I was left with was an abandoned factory, like a factory that was just hollowed out with nothing in it. And that was kind of cool, just to look back on and go like, oh yeah, that's the old computer factory there, it's like abandoned. <laughs> uh, and I just removed all the power. And then I built somewhere else, because the map is so big, it's like, you don't, probably won't have to build in the exact same spot again. Maybe. It's just an option if you wanted to, like, maybe trick yourself into not having to restart everything. But it's not a big deal restarting if you feel like you can uh, do it again and do it better. Yeah, how far does this need to come out? If at all.
I would say maybe leave it actually. Alright, let's just do the um, rails for the inside bit and then we can start painting these two groups. Just take a bit of a break. Break it up a little bit from what we're doing. Not too super monotonous. floor holes in a bit quicker now. Realize we could just do it like this. Aim one there and just move it across. Makes it go just a bit faster. Cooking now. Good. Alright. So, finish this area off now. So, is there going to be a ladder there? Can't be a ladder there. Uh oh. <laughs> My little trick might not work now. Like, you can always do this, but I don't like the idea of seeing that. And there's a belt the whole way here. I'm not moving the belt. Damn. Damn, damn. You could have a ladder coming out of the splitter. Uh, perhaps. like it's placed at the top or something. Could even just be a floating ladder. Maybe you just have to jump onto it. Whatever. It's better than having the gap, in my opinion. Wait for the autosave. All right, let me catch up. Finally caught you live. Is this the iron factory? Yes, it is. We're just doing the cosmetics for it. Tearing down? Oh, yeah, I read that already. Once you get skill steel screws, it opens up a lot of efficiency in using them. That's true. We still have to deal with, like, it's just a bit awkward dealing with such high volume. The screws are just so high volume. Excuse me. I'm gonna do my own. Th oh yeah, worked on. Read that already. I love it. You finally get Mark V belts, which would have helped a lot with screw logistics. Shortly after, you never need screw recipe again. <laughs> you could just convert the old factories into gardens or something. That's funny. Your way to. Uh. ladder but it'll, uh, I think still look a little bit better than having the overlapping rail in just one random spot but it is strange <laughs> like okay you can get there if you just jump <laughs> uh, right keep going and that one oh problem here, but that can go all the way to the end, right? Yeah. This is where our ladder can go. The ladders look kind of cool. It looks almost like they're helping hold it up or something as well. I was thinking of putting pillars in, but I don't think I need to. Those under, under strut pillar things are good enough. Uh, the reason they've been chopped away, let's just do that now and start the paint job, is because they came too far over for the blueprint designer to be happy with them. 
that little bit would clip over the blueprint, so I couldn't put them on initially. Do these first, and then we'll put the supports on the bottom. Before I came to the US, I had a spot in Kingswood. Sorry, where in Ireland do you live? Uh, I had a spot in Kingswood and prior in Ranala. I actually I haven't heard of either of those places. Um, but I lived in North West County Dublin. So basically... Oh, this can go through the whole thing. I never thought of that, actually. Sorry, it's going to be redone again. Um, yeah, so I lived at very, the very northwest of County Dublin on the border between Dublin and Meath in a little town called Naul, N-A-U-L, where I grew up and lived for 20-odd years. Uh, kind of close to Balbriggan, which is on the coast. music is so weird. Wow, wow. Love a bit of synth though, who doesn't? Alright, is that all of our beams done? <clears throat> a lot of them done. They need to connect to each other actually, as blocks, kind of like that. Let's do that next. Start it here and bring it down the whole way. Oh, it is just two groups. Actually, never mind then. You don't have an accent. How's that? Uh, I don't know. I get that question a lot. Um, I lived in rural Ireland and I played a lot of video games, watched a lot of American TV. Lived in England for eight years. So, I don't know. Just kind of lost it. Girlfriend has the same accent, sort of, and she's from the same area, actually. Me and Rosie being together 12 years, and um, we came over here together. She was the face of the Manscaped ad we had recently, but just very quickly we can play a little bit of that. You can hear her voice. I always use her as a reference to why Maya, it's not just me, you know, it's like there are other people like me. <laughs> and I guess because we both don't have the accent, we also don't feed each other that accent so we you know don't keep it um let me just see real quick so this we did an ad for manscaped not to hit you guys with another ad here but let's just wait till we can hear it for a second i need to go into the game and turn off turn down that music real quick that's good enough wow you really know how to optimize everything don't you yeah she's impressed like to me, you know, she doesn't really sound Irish any more than I do. Um, and then it's the same at the end. Now tell me more about those resource management skills of yours. Thank so yeah, I don't know. You know, that's her accent. Mine's kind of similar. And I think when you're trying to speak on YouTube and just trying to speak clearly, um, you end up kind of ref like... Uh, ironing out the edges of your accent. It's not something I purposely did. I genuinely did not purposely do that. Some people think I did. I wouldn't care if someone does do that personally, but I didn't. It was just a natural over time. You can actually see me. So I, I have videos on YouTube go all the way back to 2010. And um, my accent's still pretty neutral, pretty monotone, and pretty soft, but it's stronger than it is now. So it's been getting weaker as time goes on. I guess as well, parents don't really have a strong accent. My mom a bit more than my dad. But yeah, I, I put it down to video games and American TV and podcasts. I just live on that stuff and grew up on that stuff. I lived in rural Ireland where I, you could make the argument you could have a real strong accent living in rural Ireland, you know, but it was quite the opposite for me. I went to school with seven people. My class had seven people in it. So I had three friends or two friends, two boys, was it? Yeah, two friends, two two boys, who were my buddies growing up for the first like 12 years of my life, but we didn't live near each other, you know, we weren't within reach of each other, because we lived in rural Ireland. I mean, eventually when I got older, it was like, yeah, when you're like 10 or 11, you can start cycling to each other, but what I would do up until the ages of that, 10, age 10, play video games all day, man, 
I'd hate fever, I ain't going outside. <laughs> so yeah. You sound a little Dutch. A little Dutch. I feel like Dutch people... They say a lot of... that They throw SHs into things a lot. Maybe I do, I don't know. Um, anyway, love your work. You got any theories about the story for the game of 1.0? I hate to be really boring, but no, I really don't have any. Uh, we talked a little bit about what I think they might do. I can't remember what I said even. It was a while ago now, but I'm not expecting much from 1.0. I'm expecting, quote, story to be very, very minimal and very light. You know, it's going to do something with Sam or and the ar artifacts, I guess. It would be awesome if they went full on, like, um, Subnautica and there was a proper, like, good interesting story going on maybe they will but um i kind of don't really expect much so i don't really have many theories or anything it's like there's nothing really to go on right now other than an alien world harvesting materials for some company they could do the whole company's evil thing i i don't think they'll even do that i think they just prefer the satire of the company so, I really don't know. As for what the Sam or the artifacts could be used for, I feel like they'll probably just be used in the mom tree. They'll get all those artifacts, put them into the mom, and it'll unlock something that we haven't yet seen. And what's it going to be? I don't know. A machine or another upgrade of some sort? Or I'm sure there's content in there that, like, you know, will be used for it. I just, I, I couldn't tell you what it would be. I have, like, ideas of what I would do in the game, but I have no idea what I would actually use that stuff for. Like, I can't really think of what, what I would use another ore deposit like that for. Right, this music is super loud again. I'll have to turn it down in a sec. It is really good, though. It's it louder when you put it in your pocket. Anyway, um... Yeah, so the things I would like to see in the game will be stuff to do with underwater, like a new bi basically like an adding a new biome to the game without affecting anyone else's stuff will be by building underwater, allowing you to do stuff maybe with oxygen, um, so you'd have to pipe oxygen down there into factories or something, or, you know, there's unique deposits down, down on the ocean floor then. That's kind of what I would do. That's obviously like a big DLC slash expansion style thing, but for 1.0 and handling, you know, the artifacts and handling Sam ore, I'm not really too sure what it could be used for. I like the idea of um, having a, a teleporter and it has to be powered with Sam ore, so you can only ever have a few of them because there's a finite amount of ore in the map. You could use that just to kind of instantly bring ore from one place to another or whatever you want. Sorry, not ore, but, you know, teleport objects from one side to the other because there's a machine. So imagine, like, it's just a spitball, and I don't even know if I like this idea, but you could have a big particle accelerator-looking portal, a big stargate-looking thing here. But it requires, like, 120 Sam ore per minute to operate. But then you can, and maybe it just has one big input or something. You just have, you can send a belt through, and the belt will come out another end. If you also power it. Something like, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's what it could be used for, but I, I really have no idea, you know. Scott, thank you very much for becoming a channel member. That's Scott Senatored out of his mind. Bro is lagging AS as fuck? I'm lagging? Never mind, it was mine. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I'd like to see... Oh, that's not going to happen. Procedural tr terrain generation. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Not in this game. Two things I'm guaranteeing you that's not going to happen. Procedural terrain. Um, w Like, thousands of enemies or something like that. Like, base defense. I just don't think that'll ever happen for this game. It's not Factorio. They put a lot of time and effort into making the map. I feel like... Uh, they're never going to do procedural. Maybe if they ever do a second game, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll prove me wrong on that, but I re I would be, I bet a lot of money they're not going to do that. Not that I would, I'd like to see it too. It'd be kind of cool if you could have a real dynamic world. It would be nice. I think at the very least what they could do is maybe randomize deposits or place some extra deposits around or have different versions of the map, the same map, uh, which has things in different places, maybe, or just create map tools so that people can make their own. That'd be ideal. It is Unreal Engine, so it wouldn't be too difficult uh, to get people involved. Other games do it. I don't 
remember doing that one, but okay. Right, so, colors, white. Beam. Ah, let's paint some beams. Alright, looks like we're all painted up for that section. I love this kind of bracket style of has like housing for the machines. Quite cool quite cool. If I could afford planned it well enough, I would have really planned it so that it contained all of them all on the same kind of grid. That would have been nice, but that's really difficult. <laughs> oh, I love this music, it's so cool. You think Project Assembly will be the gate to another planet? No. Yeah, I guess they need a reason for sending all that stuff off, but and then, you know, you can look at the other planets and you can see that there are other crash sites and stuff on it. Or they were there. I don't know if they've been removed. Oh, yeah, there they are. There's one right there. They look like hard drive crash sites, crash sites to me. Some people were like, oh, they're space elevators. No, they're not. They need to be way bigger. Um, they look like hard drive sites. So that could be a tease of things to come. Maybe they thought that was kind of cute. Or it could just be the case of it's like a little Easter egg, you zoom in enough and you see things, you know? That's, I'd, I'm a cynic, right? So don't take my word on any of this stuff, really. But my, I am a cynical person, and my cynical opinion is that path of least resistance. Um, Occam's Razor. What's the most likely thing there? Is it that you can sometime in the future go to that planet and harvest things in that world? Or is it more likely that some developer just thought it'd be cute? If they put a couple things on the spinning planet that goes around the world, that maybe someone would check it. More likely that, I think. Um, but yeah, you know, what's what's going to be at the end of reaching the space elevator at the very end? I don't think it's going to be anything that will live up to the time and effort it takes to get there. It's The joy of doing it, I think, really will always be the thing that you get. I mean, but... Uh, the best thing I can think of is, yeah, just maybe some sort of teleportation stuff that could make life a little easier in the game. But that disrupts the game flow a lot. You'd have to really limit it. Like I said, maybe you have to feed it with Sam or... The, the game design philosophy is really all about, like, um... It doesn't ever make life easier the further in you go. It typically increases complexity. But at the very end of the game, they couldn't just introduce something that makes everything easier. It would, unless it had substantial requirements to get it up and running. So if it was like Sam or it's like maybe it would have insane power demands to have a teleporter, you know? And it's, so that way it's not like, oh yeah, just go into creative mode and use teleporter straight away from the beginning of the game. It's like, no, even if you did that, you'd still need insane power requirements to get it up and running. Anyway, so I don't know. I'm rambling at this point. I really have no idea. I don't think you're going to get a new map. I don't think you're going to get a new world. I think at best you'll get some... 1.0 is going to have lots of new materials... Uh, some new shapes and things for foundations and stuff. Some content, like content stuff that's for things in the game already. I don't think you're going to see many new mechanical features in the game. Or buildings that operate in ways that we've never seen. Because that just opens the floodgates for bugs and issues. If they're going to feature lock themselves, most likely it's just more content and polish. And then, like I said, they've had that story side stuff. Which, I imagine, again, everything will be delivered through your inbox... You'll get like messages and maybe some audio recordings of things that are happening and reasons why you're doing it. Maybe the company's evil or there's some reason that the company's doing it. It's like nefarious and or they just want Sam or and there's like lore and reasons behind it. There's nothing nefarious going on. But this is like planet 2AAB blah 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 there is a lot of them apparently so maybe there's something in there for like other pioneers or everyone's worlds are in like some multiverse I have no idea you can, you can make up anything so they could go in a million directions but I would be a cynic and say that they'll probably not because they're lazy or anything just because of the nature of the game the team is small and it you know it just is what it is I just don't imagine it's going to be some crazy big thing I just don't think so it seems antithetical to the idea of even doing early access if you're going to have a 1.0 that's going to then require you to do several more like um, bug tests and uh, QA passes and all this stuff. Kind of what early access is for. So I imagine it's just going to be enriching the existing game with more content. That's relatively easy to test. And then, yeah, maybe giving you a lower reason for why this is happening. And maybe something at the end for like... 
again, teleportation or just a big cosmetic you can place down and like a big statue that said you did it. I honestly think that's kind of what it will be. But I don't even think they'll do anything as complicated as, you know, going underwater. Because that's a huge amount of development that they need for that. Underwater, dealing with it like an oxygen system. They have gases in the game, but even for the player, like there's a lot more stuff that goes into that. And movement and do you have a craft for underwater and do you have like a little jetpack for underwater? Like a little thing that boosts you along. Flippers for your feet, your legs or whatever to help you swim faster. Those kind of things like in Subnautica. Think of all that. And it's like, I don't think that even that would be, that would be too much for a 1.0. That's like a one, that's a post-launch DLC slash big expansion, I think. So that's my, my opinion on it. I expect not that much. And uh, I'm cynical. So that way I should be pleasantly surprised if it is more than that. So. I know I'm not a big modder. I haven't looked at Satisfactory Plus. I don't plan on doing mods just because of the nature of the game and YouTube. Like, if I don't want to... I'm telling people to follow along with me. So I don't really want to have to tell them to go get mods. Then if a mod gets doesn't get updated, then suddenly we're all out of luck. You know, we just have to wait around. Because I've run mods before, and when, you, when the mod stops working, depending on what it is, but if it's content, you're just left with big holes in your factory and recipes that don't work in the machines. And all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, eh, not, not going to put myself on the reliance of uh, other people. Um, but as a game normal player, I would totally be playing mods. Love them, you know. But I haven't really looked into them because of that, if that makes sense. All right, anyway. I can dream. Yeah, I don't mean to stamp out people's dreams. See, I I'm just jaded because I've had a lot of dreams of my own that haven't happened. And I find that if I set my expectations to be low... I'm usually quite pleasantly surprised. Um, when I set my expectations to be mid or high, I'm often very disappointed. So I went into a game like Warhammer 3 recently, Total War Warhammer 3, with very low expectations. I expected it to be just like the jump from two, 1 to 2. And it, wa it was actually more than that, and I was really happy. The community, man, they were very upset. Because that game took 5 years. Well, it didn't actually take 5 years, it still took 1 year to make, like they all do. But it didn't happen for five years after the second one. So they kind of thought like, oh my god, it's going to be, there's going to be all this crazy stuff. And it's like, no, Creative Assembly make a game every year. And they just took a break from, they had a longer gap between releases because they were doing other games. Because basically Warhammer doesn't actually do that well for them. Despite what their community thinks, which they think it's for some reason it's the big money maker. When actually, not at all. Um, although it does do well. It's DLC ma mainly is the thing that does really well. Yeah, I'm totally going off on a tangent there, but yeah, if I, I just find if you set your expectations low, maybe it's a very nasty or cynical way of looking at life, you'll be more pleasantly surprised. And I genuinely am, like I just don't really think about it, and I, I have a degree in game development, I know what it takes to make games, and goes on behind the scenes, so I can also just, from a realism standpoint, say like, they're not, there's no way they're gonna have another map that you go to or some portal at the end of the game when you complete the space elevator that you go to another world. Like there's, you understand how much work, they would be tucking away so much work secretly <laughs> behind the scenes for that. They'd be making, it's like making a second game. <laughs> almost, almost. It's probably like 60% of a game is like the world. Well, I, a lot of it is the mechanics and the machines. I guess if you're just doing the same thing in another map, but for them to be making a secret map that you can somehow move to, That'd be really mild, mind blowing, to be honest. Now, for them to have made another map, I wouldn't be too surprised if they had some sort of other map in the works. I, I don't think they do. It wouldn't be that mind blowing just for another map to exist, but not for it to have any relevance to the world that you came from or for you to be able to transport yourself there and back. No way. No way is that happening. <laughs> um, but the idea that maybe they're working secretly on a second map for you to play, that'd be. Yeah, that's reasonable. It's just an Unreal Engine map. You could cobble that together not too long. Uh, even as big as they are and everything. But if you're just using the same kind of assets just to restructure this map and do a different one, you could do that. If you spent a couple months on it. One developer? Yeah. Was that the best use of that developer's time? Probably not. They have a lot of stuff to do in this map. But anyway, I digress. Super digress. We'll keep, keep working on this. <laughs> hey, Philip. 
Based on what parts we send up are called, I feel like the project is some sort of Dyson Sphere. You know, I never really thought about that. It's like, what are all these parts going up for, and where are they going, what are they assembling? Is there going to be something in space that you can go up to? I'm going to say no, but man, it'd be nice. You Don't, don't start giving me hope. <laughs> You're only going to hurt me. But I tell you what, look, if all this cool stuff happens at 1.0, come to my stream then, and you'll see me be... Well, you won't see me, I guess, but I'll be grinning from ear to ear and be super ecstatic and hyped and excited. But if it's not that great, I'll just be like, yeah, you know, it's what we expected. Anyways, let's continue. If I was Coffee Stain, I'd be looking at what modders do and trying to integrate as many of those features into the game ready for 1.0. But I feel like a lot of that stuff would require a lot of testing. If you're going to start adding in production rate checker checkers and all this kind of thing, it's like, why wouldn't you have done that during early access? The whole point is so that you um, get the feedback. <laughs> and I know they're going to keep developing the game after the fact, but still, it just seems, again, antithetical to the whole point. Really? Even though I do also understand the reality if they want to have a bit of a splash when they hit 1.0. Uh, marketing wise and that's why they're NDAing it and not telling anyone I'm super surprised there isn't hasn't been a leak already feels like there's definitely gonna be all it takes is one person to leak it not that I want them to I don't want to I don't care I really don't and I'm not encouraging that but um you just you just assume that someone would do it because honestly they probably wouldn't do anything <laughs> I've never really heard of a company going after someone for leaking something unless it's like mega Mega huge, but a company like coffee stain aren't that big. They're not gonna do anything NDAs are mostly there to scare you. I used to work at creative assembly. We'd make people sign NDAs all the time There's no way we had the ability to really enforce it and Someone leaked one of our upcoming games ahead of time. We still were just like oh Oh well, you know like we're not gonna pursue this for potentially huge amounts of money when the person likely a doesn't even have anything they can pay us with and what just to make an example i don't know it's not really worth it people act like games is uh <laughs> some sort of like cia like you know these are video games at the end of the day it's, it doesn't actually really cost them anything to lose out on the name of a game getting out there early when a game actually leaks like the physical game you can play it though that's pretty big you're hurting sales at that point, but for the most part, other times you're not. Alright, so this would have to be purple then. So that was the red area. That was really quick. Is there nothing else? Oh yeah, we need to color the, um, the belts, of course. Yeah, there might be some cool cinematics at the end. I never really thought about it, because I've actually never beat the game, so I never really thought about it. When you feed the space elevator and you send it up, and nothing happens, like, what will happen at the end of the game? If I was a designer, I really don't know what I would do with that. Well, Rockstar are quite different than Coffee Stain. Yeah? You, there's a little bit more on the line with Grand Theft Auto 6 than there is with Satisfactory 1.0. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, the, it was a nice way to fill some of the gaps that we were left with on the belts, or on the um, modern rail. Um, but like I said, I, you know, the company I worked for, like there were... Total War Three Kingdoms was leaked ahead of time, and Warhammer 2. And Warhammer 1. No, sorry, not Warhammer 2, Warhammer 1. Total War Warhammer 1 was leaked. Uh, twice, actually. Once internally by accident, and once externally by someone else. And it was the kind of thing where, like, that's a company, Creative Assembly aren't small. They're the biggest UK developer in the UK. Uh, 700 people work at that studio. They make a game every year. Some serious money on the line. But they felt it wasn't worth, like, pursuing someone leaking a game. Or the existence of a game. Because it's it's not really going to affect their bottom line. But a Grand Theft Auto, that, does, that actually has shareholder impact. Sega don't care if Total War... The whole game leaked. Fr frankly, Sega couldn't give a damn. Sega owned Creative Assembly. But take two, Rockstar, the biggest game in the world, that's way different. So you need to, you'd need to take an example that's on par with something like Coffee Stain and Satisfactory, and I would say that Total War are even bigger than that, and they didn't care. 
Um, and I'm sure, if I was them, I'm sure you would have... You would start thinking now about, like, what do we do if it does leak? we got to be ready for that inevitability. If we're going to let people play it, there's a chance that someone's going to leak it. Even if it is a small chance. There's a, there's a chance that that's going to happen. But I wonder what the contingency plan is there. Do you have trailers, like, ready to go? Because that's, obvious, that's normally what you do. You're like, okay, if this does leak, that would suck. But, you know, we'll have everything ready to go on our own terms so that we can get ahead of it. If it's kind of gotten by the goalie and it's gone out there to people. Alright, anyways. Uh, so, this is going into the purple area. We're doing the red belts. So, red is all over here, basically. We're using red and white for the belt. So, anything... any. Well, this is the weird thing, actually. Only the belts carrying out the rotors will need to be colored red and white. So it's not really that much. Most of them will be already done then for us. Yeah, these are already colored. It's fine. There were these ones. I think it's just the joining on belts then. That was done. Did I do the top one as well? I think so. What's with the Matterhorn in the background? Um, gotta be honest. Heard the name. Don't know what it is. Mountain. Which one? That one. Oh, that one. Is that the exact shape of a Matterhorn? The Matterhorn. Oh yeah. Maybe it was Earth all along. <laughs> That would be kind of interesting to start recognizing things from our world. Um, Alright, so that's the... Those machines are all done then, so purple is next. Alright. So I didn't mean to bring this all the way down this way, because these two... So the purple starts here. It's just this bridge over that has to be purple. It's purple about there the halfway mark and then this can be purple pretty much to this line just to kind of create little zones with their respective color so then this will be to the halfway point as well there Anyway, I don't know. I say these things somewhat authoritatively, but I, I really shouldn't. It's more just um, speculation on my part based on some experience that I've had working at these companies, but who knows. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I'm just surprised that it hasn't leaked. I'm running on gummy bars in four hours sleep. Oh, what's the matter with you? That's nice. For the uh, Matterhorn. Uh, didn't rock... Oh, yeah, I read that already. When you finish the game, and do I, I'm not going to finish the game for a long time. I've never finished the game and I have a thousand hours in it, so that'll give you an idea. Alright, so that's purple. Excuse me, basically done. We just now need to... So purple is going to be for the reinforced iron plates, so we got to follow that belt out. I actually forgot to do for the rotors, so we'll just follow this one, and then that'll be purple. And this allows us to trace anything back. If you're ever confused in the future, you come to this factory and wondering where these are coming from, just follow the purple line. Although it should be obvious anyway, but it's nice to have it color-coded accurately. I could even color the station actually purple then if we wanted to. Uh, the truck station it goes down into. Alright, so that's that. So we'll have to invert that color now to do the actual uh, splitters and stuff. I might actually just make this white thinking about it, but yeah, probably. But these can be purple.
All right, good. I think that's that. Everything else should be colored purple then. Uh, might just invert them one more time. I did forget to go over just one or two little uh, lifts. The lifts don't fully color properly until you reload the game. That was all good. That's all good. Yeah, so that lift needs to be colored. And I think I will actually just leave these white. Because the belt color will let us know what's going on. Did you play before the water update? I know that was, I believe, like the last major change they did. I think it broke so many people's worlds. Um, so I played the game when update 3 came out. I think that's when they added trains. So that's when the first time I bought it and played it. And... I don't think I was there for... It might have been update 4. I can't remember. Whatever Trains was. That's basically when I played. And I only played maybe... I think I got to Trains and then I just stopped. Um, and that was it. I never played anymore then. And then I came back for when they did update 6. That's when I played my main series. It's funny even because you say that because the um, the water update, I mean, pipes are still broken to this day <laughs> in some ways. So I, I would rather they just fix what's there than even adding anything new, to be honest. But probably going to break a bunch of more things. All the, I'd imagine anything new that gets added to the game will have its own little issues that need to get ironed out as well uh, with bug fixing. It's good to see that obviously they have that closed beta now, so hopefully they catch a lot of that stuff early. Um, Alright, so that was the purple and red area. Oh yes, I have to just go over the red output belts. I forgot to do that. So the rotor belt down here. So that's that. And is there one further down? It's a mix of everything, isn't it? So I suppose you could have that color, it's fine. Okay, so that's that. I just need to color those things as well. But this would be I would consider this to be green section and this to be yeah, red section. Power poles need to be put onto the roof as well in the future. So that's done, and that'll be green section. Nice. Alright, so we'll invert these colors. And then we just have two sections left to go after this, but we can do it a little bit quicker now that most things are put down. I think that's that. Bonk. Alright, cool. Looking good. Ooh, right. So I was adding these glass frame foundations as well on the floor, which I think can look kind of nice. We're looking down. Do that on these different groups as well. Cool. A little bit left down on this side that I haven't done yet. It's going to be the blue. Which it looks like I haven't saved. Uh, that's alright. We can just grab it from one of the signs here. Alrighty. Finish off this bit of the fence. Now, 
ladder needs to go there. I can't remember what happens to the ladders when you color them. There's, they only take one color. They don't don't take alternating colors. That would be a blue ladder for the blue section. Yeah, that's alright, I guess. Why not? Um, drop some likes if you enjoy the stream. You seem to like watching paint dry. <laughs> just <laughs> just show it. Yeah, I appreciate that. I love how um, I never say that. People often just say that on my streams. They're like, don't forget to leave a like and stuff. I'm a terrible YouTuber. I never think of all these things, those things. I just like to play the game and chat with people. It's like the worst thing. Uh, it's the thing I'm worst at in this, is at this job, is um, doing all that kind of stuff, really. Need to put any of that there? Nah, you don't be walking, won't be walking along there anyway. Alright, so this is really coming along. I'm really happy with this. This is starting to really take shape now. With some lights and things, I think the colors will really start to pop. There's still a little bit of coloring that needs to be done for the belts coming in, but that's okay. We'll get to that. Alright, so that's the purple side is done now. So now we need to go over to the green side and the orange side. So that's orange there. It's green. Alright. But yeah, I did make that joke before. I was like, oh, we're watching, we're literally all watching paint dry. Uh, actually, there's a little bit more to do before I can finish this place, so put in walkways, and then some of these can be glass floors again, just like the other side. I don't know if that should just connect across. I guess, why not, right? I'll just have railing there. The idea was to have some stairs every now and then as well. So somewhere here would probably be good. Oh, there's your issue. trying to race ahead of the autosave, but uh, <laughs> didn't quite get the layout I wanted there just yet. Anyways, um, I always forget, but I'm middle-aged. <laughs> yes, you could have that come down and turn. That's yeah, a bit messy. That's alright. Sure, why not? Okay. Uh, and then it would just need the little pillars. So to do that, that's coming down here, which is this spot here. So I'll just push it in by one. And the same with here. So that's going to be there, I think. So bring it in by one. Painted beam all the way up to there. And then the support goes on top. Hopefully we're not clipping through. No, good. And we are nice and supported, pretty much. All right, anyways, so with that in mind, let's just do the railing and then we can color this area as well. Doesn't need to come out any further. There's no real harm if it does, but does it need to? I guess for the walkway around the side, yeah. Why not? Hmm. 
That's alright. Yeah, that's fine. Just leave it like that. Okay, cool. Railing. Hey, Rose. Rosie's back. Leave that gap there for a ladder. Could be nice. This one can't really fit in here. Ooh, Rosie's had her hair done. What the manscape just for? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Let me see, actually. I didn't really look at it. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, it looks nice. I like it wavy. Anyway. Yeah, so you can't fit a ladder there. Or, I mean, um, one of these. Bit of a shame. Nah. Just have to leave it bare. You, maybe you could get away with one of these and be like, just watch yourself. <laughs> Don't want anyone tripping and falling now. That way the belt still sits on top of it. Hello Darren, love your content. Do you recommend building small factories like to process iron, copper items, or a big one? Getting all the different types of ore. Thanks. What's well, you just described two different ways of doing it. There's no right or wrong answer. Some people in the game build one giant mega facility and feed everything into it over time. So they'll just pick a spot and just decide this is the place where we're gonna make everything. Maybe with the space elevator in the center or something, and design everything around that. Um, one of the issues there is that it can cause lag uh, when you've got lots of objects and machines in the same uh, place you can end up getting a very laggy game in the mid to late game so unless you've got a good PC I don't recommend doing that but it's not like the worst thing in the world people do do it uh, for sure uh, actually I'm just gonna bring this through that's fine um, but yeah it, de it also depends on the scale. I think early on it makes sense to have smaller factories, smaller individual factories. And later on, you then want to start thinking bigger and building bigger to deal with higher and higher volume. So early on, I think to if you're just starting the game as well for the first time, you really don't need to go bigger than um, just one, you know, a few little small factories doing their individual things. Anyway, I, I get a bit sidetracked, but here's what I've done. You know, I've created smaller factories and then I do have one big one that's going to be there for the future. So I'm trying to future build in this series where I look at the numbers ahead of time. So I'm like, okay, quartz. There's two quartz deposits here. And I'm like, oh, what would be the max amount that we could ever get out of them? Right, so you look it up and it's like they're normal deposits. So they can actually produce 600 ore per minute each when you get Mark III miners and you overclock. So it's like, okay, the potential for this factory is 600. Well, it's 1,200 because there's two of them. 1200 per minute so with that in mind we can then look up the recipe for quartz quartz crystal or, or something else and we can say okay it takes in 67.5 per minute this one or this one takes 37.5 this one's 67.5 so 1200 divided by 67.5 is 17.77 so it means that we need 18 refineries because it requires refineries to make all that stuff and that would be the max that we could ever use. So that's how I do it. So it's like, it's a small factory, but it's built for the future. So it is an individual factory component, but I've all, I'm building it with the idea that I can't use it all now, but in the future, when I get Mark III miners, I'll be able to bump up the throughput of the factory without having to redesign it. So it's kind of a middle ground, I feel like, between the two. Do we build big or do we build small? It's like, well, I'm building individual factories on their own, but they're they have the capability of of ramping up a lot in the future. Now, if the question was more about do you build one giant facility or do we build smaller factories around the world, I think building smaller around the world is just better. More fun, I think. There is something really nice about the idea of having a mega central facility, though, somewhere. Um, but you're asking for trouble, <laughs> I think. It's a much tougher project, so I would do it the other way first. And if you still like the game by the end of that, then maybe you could try, what if I built all of this in one place? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so that, that's my answer, I guess. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's kind of... People do it both ways. I need railing here as well. I'm okay with that. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, yeah, let's start just next to it then, if we can. Does that go into there too much? Ugh, so annoying. Well, pioneers that operate this facility will just have to know not to fall down these different places. Keep it, you know, safety first. And we need that floor hole in here, don't we? Can you bring me a biscuit? Thank you. Uh, do you find refinery recipes or did you add them? I found them. Yep. I don't have all the recipes in the game at the moment. All the um, hard drive sites I've unlocked so far are marked with these little crates. Those are the ones that I've been to. So I think maybe 20 in total, maybe 25, maybe. It's the amount I've gotten so far. Yep. I like the system of building in videos and beautifying on stream, but you, could you showcase more of the cosmetics in your videos once they are finished? Even just a 10 to 5 minute segment. Uh, sorry, Rosie, I didn't hear what you said, but thank you. It's the last one. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so my videos are so long already that adding another 5 to 10 minute segment of just floating around cinematics isn't really worth it. Whereas at the beginning of videos, that's when I tend to do it. So at the beginning of all my videos has like a minute segment where you can see things. I, I feel like that's the best I can do. It's just the videos are too long to consider that. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, just as an example, like even just looking at the last one here. You know, you'll get a general idea of how things look when I do, like, fly arounds. This is the build that we just did in the previous... Or actually, that's the build that will be coming up. So I even show the end at the beginning. And that was the one of the other ones. So it's the same with, like, the copper facilities and things. Um, everything I've done, I think? Let's see. Yes. Yeah, so I tried to put cinematics in at the beginning just to entice people and be like, oh, this is like kind of what the world looks like. Like, this shows the factory before it's even we've even started it. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it's kind of go like, this is what we're going to be building. Um, and, you know, I didn't want to show everything straight away, so I use other bits as well. I don't know. I try to have a mix of both, but, yeah, I just can't afford to have, in my opinion, 10% of the video be cinematics. I try to, like, uh, this was cut down from six hours, and it's still an hour and 40 minutes. And I really do feel like I try to include everything that would allow people to build it, and is also somewhat interesting, I guess, and cut out all of the times, like, I make mistakes, or I do over things, or things like that. Uh, recently, an editor contacted me, and they, they, you know, they edited this down into, well, not this video, it was a different one, down to, like, 40 minutes. And all they did, no offense to them, appreciate the effort, but all they did was they cut out all the gaps in speech. It was almost like it was run through AI, which it might have been. So imagine, like, any gaps in speech. It was just cut, 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 cut. Just like jump cuts, right? So no transition cuts, just cut hard cuts between any time there was space between something I was saying. And I, I don't talk very fast. Well, depending who you ask. A lot of people play my videos on increased time speeds. Um... And that's fine, but it, and they were like, oh, you know, here's my rates, I could be an editor for you, blah, blah, blah. And I get that a few different messages, but this guy was really persistent. And he did seem to understand, like, my content, whereas you do just get general emails all the time about people asking to edit. So I sent him back. Let's see if I could show you what I sent him without maybe revealing the entire email. But it might be kind of interesting for some people to see. Every time you say biscuit, I think of an American biscuit. No, it's a proper biscuit. In America, they call bis... I don't even know what's up with America, but cookie... I can't even remember it, but a biscuit over there is like a scone, which is really weird. I mean, that one is just like so lost in translation, I don't even know how that happened. Um, 
And then a cookie is like what they call a biscuit over here. But a cookie over here is literally just one thing. It's a cookie. It's like a biscuit with chocolate chip on it. That's a cookie. Um, I'm just trying to find this email, what I sent to the guy. Just what I sent to him rather than what he said to me. Uh, yeah. Got it. So this goes for anyone who's thinking of being my editor. If you just anyone out there is curious. Just try to hide his name. Not that it matters too much. It's not his real name anyway. Punk. I sent this back to him. As a... I was a little curt in the email, I guess, but anyway. Your email went into my junk folder because of the link attached in the first email. Yeah, so he, he had hit me with like three or four in a row saying like, look, if you don't want to respond, just don't respond. But it wasn't that. It did go to my junk folder because his first email had a Google Drive link to ask me to download something, which was the video that he worked on. Anyway, I said, I appreciate your effort, but I'm not currently looking for an editor. The type of editor I would need would be pretty much a full-time job. Editing out the gaps between words in my video isn't something I think makes the video better and more enjoyable to watch. I do long-form content on purpose, and it's supposed to be somewhat chill and relaxing, but hypercutting the audio isn't something I think would work for my audience. This timeline below is from my City Skylines video, right? So it's 55 minutes long. The first 10 minutes are a time lapse, cut down from 3 hour recordings to 10 minutes. It takes a very long time to do that and then provide additional voiceover and licensed music. Here's another I did for Satisfactory. Um, damn, I basically just showed his email. Oh well. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, here's another edit from Satisfactory. Again, this was cut out of a 6 hour 15 minute file down to an hour and 20. With extra documents to provide... Uh, pr and info provided on the video itself. So the overlay bits are like the floor plan sitting on top and... All of this kind of stuff. And there's like the six hour, 15 minute recording. One of the files that was used. Not counting the separate cinematics and things. Anyway, for me to hire an editor for this type of work, it would require someone to know exactly my style and be comfortable with working with eight hour blocks of footage and audio and making an hour, one to two hour video out of it. As well as supplemental shorts and promotional videos for social media. Don't financially have the means to pay an editor like that. And have no desire to have an editor for anything less. Uh, so thanks for your interest. So I just thought, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you would be a full-time job <laughs> if you were editing for me and there's no way I could afford to pay someone for a full-time editor but that was kind of interesting to point out like how much effort and time goes into these things right and why it's pretty much an unsustainable business model <laughs> uh, I was recently out with friends and Rosie was just saying to them they're kind of friends of friends I didn't know many of them and they're like oh yeah Darren's like a youtuber and uh, Rosie was like, he works like seven days a week. They were like, you work seven days a week? Because they were joking on how easy it is to be a YouTuber. And I'm sure it is maybe for some. I don't know. Probably not. Um, and I'm sure they were just joking. But it was like, I don't know, guys. It's like really difficult. I've been doing it for seven years. And yeah, for seven years, I've, I work seven days a week. Uh, this year is actually the year I've taken the most amount of days. Like, taken some days for myself. Because things are going well. So it's like, oh, I can actually afford to. But um, it's just funny. All right, anyways. Right, so last bit of... This really was this one of the slowest ways of doing all this, I think, but... Oh, well. Can't bring it that way. This is far out as we're going, it seems to be. Yeah, I feel like this could come out further. Bring that down to there. Normally I would just go with the rail built in, but because we have some uneven gaps, that's why I didn't. And that's why we have separate railing, but they all need their little extra unique colors, which also adds a little bit extra time to all of this. That's the green section pretty much done now. You have to go actually we have to go down and check some of the belts. Just these gaps here that are still yellow need to be painted. So that's green, green. So this way we can follow our little green stripe. Pretty much no matter where it is. Get back to the rod machines. And then we'll go over and have a look at what we did on the stream. At the end. Yeah, so we're gonna need you. This side's okay, is it? Yeah. All 
All right. Uh, we are. I blame it on how many cultures that influence our food. How weird you guys are. Don't ask Germans what Krapfen is. <laughs> I've say that, said a bad word. Any reason you don't use the walkways or railings built in? Yeah, hopefully I just answered that, yeah. Because of the gaps. We're creating uneven gaps, so I'm using ladders to fill the space. And that way, it allows me to... Normally, I always use the railing built in where I can, like downstairs and stuff. But up here, it's just a bit different with the sizes and scales of this place. So I'd be tempted as well to put these in little sections like there. I might go around and do that on my own, but I don't like these just going straight through. <laughs> I think as well, when we take the power and put it on the ceiling, the place will look really clean. That's the idea. You're too nice. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time, I wouldn't have replied to him had he not been so persistent, but um, he also commented on my videos and wrote a tweet. So that's why I was like, okay, this person's like actually really going out of the way to try to get through to me. Um, Whereas if it was just, I often get these ones where they're literally, they, you know, they don't even know your name or anything. They don't know what you do. They just say like, hey, I make, I do blah, blah, blah. They're just literally just throwing out emails, seeing what sticks. And that's fine. Everyone does that, I guess. It's whatever. Um, so some of those I wouldn't respond to. But that guy just seemed like he deserved a response and a, a detailed response as to why what he was saying wasn't making sense. Because sometimes they get a little aggressive. He didn't really, but sometimes they do where they're saying like, you know, you're leaving a lot of money on the table, like, by not having an editor. And they'll tell you, like, how you're doing things wrong and stuff on YouTube. And try to listen to see if some of it makes sense, but I don't think so. Because <laughs> um, there's an obsession with short-form short form content on YouTube. But I, I have a partner manager who works at YouTube, and he's like, no, no, no. Like, if you find an audience for long-form content, you should stay, lean into that more. That's great. Really good. Um, it's rare, but it's good. And it is. <laughs> Long form is what pays the bills, really, for a smaller creator. Because if you only did short form, you'd have to have way more videos to make up the difference in ads. You know, the reality is one hour long video can have much more ads on it than a 10 minute video. And I spaced them out fairly generously, I would say. To the viewer, that is. What the hell's happening? Oh, there we go. I'm not holding click. But it's after painting loads of things. Oh my god, still doing it. I don't know what's wrong. Okay, it stopped now. God damn, I'm after painting a bunch of things wrong, did I? Oh, some of the machines down there. That's so annoying. It's about to autosave as well. Damn. It thought I was holding left click when I wasn't. It must have just gotten confused for a second. Um, did you miss anything important? We talked about Satisfactory 1.0. And then I've just been coloring machines, so no, not really. <laughs> just chatting and coloring machines, I guess. We're watching paint dry together. Oh, this is going to be a pain. All right, I won't go too crazy, but I think it's mostly just this little section here I've got to redo. So it's red on the bottom. This wouldn't be a pain if the colors weren't bugged right now, where I have to try to go down, like, to here, I think, to get red. Nope. Well, I need purple anyway, so let's do that. So that's purple. Uh, that should be red. Yep. That color's okay. This one's not. So you gotta invert these. Yeah, some of that... I mean, I don't want to be super boring on street, so maybe some of that stuff I'll just go over and just double-check it on my own for the bits that aren't done quite yet. Alright, and then the last one would be those machines. Sorry, they needed to be red as well, so... Yeah, I think it's okay. Because for the most part it was coloring these things and they don't have railings built in, so I think it's... I, think I don't think it did as much damage as I maybe thought. Okay, anyway, let's continue the green color thing. Paint drying hype. 
Put anything handling rods up on these upper floors. Has their green line attached now. All good. That can be painted too. Now they loop down and come back around manifold style, don't they? Yes, to here. Green. Alright, good. That's that done. Need to invert the colors in a minute, but there's still some white and green stuff to do still over here for this section. So all of that was painted correctly, so we go in here. There we go. Bring this section all the way down, basically, to corner point. Yep, pretty much to there. Alright, everything else... Oh, yes, the in-between... Well, that's iron ingots. Yeah, no, that's okay to color that, I guess, as well. Maybe. <laughs> Actually, yeah, 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 that's fine. So that's a good idea, thinking about it. So these ingots are going first into the ingot section. Or, sorry, the iron rod section. So coloring that makes sense. The green, so we know where it's going. Yeah, perfect, actually. And they don't... Oh, no, hang on. Oh, no, 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 it is correct. I, was, I thought they were going into the iron plates there, but they're not. This is all rods. Good stuff. As long as it's rods, it can be painted green. Green in there anyway. Good. Good, good. All right, we're flying ahead now. That's that done. That's all the... Oh, yeah, and then the... Just the junctions between here. Alright, and then their outputs. They're just the bits where they're connections, so it doesn't have to do too much craziness. And when we reload, those will color in correctly as well. So this is the rods not making their way back out. And then it goes into... Here, down here. Alright, so that's rods all done. So we'll just have to switch, invert those colors, and then the last thing is then just to color the splitters correctly. They're just the ones that don't have any yet. And that'd be color green. <laughs> sure, why not? So we'll just, yeah, we'll come in from the bottom actually and follow that up. This is going in this way. It's into its first green one. Green. That needs to be white, actually, but that's fine. Whatever. Alright, and the belts across are colored as well. Cool. Have to change the music again because it's just playing the Deep Rock Galactic five soundtrack five tracks over and over again. Even though it is good, wanted to make sure those lifts are colored correctly again. Yep. All right, and this one. Oh man! So we've done all the screws, all the uh, reinforced iron plates. The rotors and the um, rods, it's just the orange color left to go. Hello Chris, how's it going man? You choose me my job for the last seven years? Yeah, 2017, September of 2017 is when I left my company to set up to do this basically full time. In one shape or another, but yeah it's been uh, six and a half years. Which is wild. Wild to think about that. 
My other YouTube channel still has slightly more subscribers than this one. This one's about to pass it, though. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. The other one got to 123,000. This is 122. Uh, okay, so orange is a little trickier to do for these ones just because it's hard to tell. <laughs> it's just for the iron plates. Now, there's not as much of it, so it should be quick enough. Um, but yeah, we want to follow the ingots in. So these aren't the ingots for that. It's these ones. They go to our orange section, like so. And we'll just continue that color. So that color has already been done for in here. Has it been done for here? No. But the outputs need to be done. It's a bit laggy going around with the coloring tool, actually, thinking about it. Must have been a mistake in the blueprint. Alright, I think that's pretty much it. So they come back out here. Curl around. They join a merger. That's where they go down to become to go into the truck station, but that's where they go to go to overflow. Good. Alright, just make sure the top layers are done the same. So after I've done all this now, before I had actually made this on the blueprints correctly, the correct colors, so that if people do download the blueprints, they shouldn't have to do this. There might be a few errors every now and then, but not to this extreme anyway. All right, so that's good. Uh, we need to fill this in. And I guess it'd be nice if we could get down there somehow. Actually, you know what? These could probably use stairs. The other ones couldn't because they were slightly higher up, I think. Oh no, these are the ones down. Yeah, the, the higher up ones can use stairs all the way down, but these need a ramp somewhere. I'm just trying to think where's the best way to... I mean, you could just curl it here, I guess, and have a turn. I'm just trying to think of what also makes sense for getting over to where you need to go. Like, if you're coming out of the stairs there... Probably makes sense that you could somehow get up and over to it, so maybe that could be a T-junction. And then the corner. And then just the linear bridge. I'm out of rods. Funny. We're in the rod section. Takes me back to Factorio doing that. I used to do that all the time in Factorio, just run along the belts to grab things. Alright, there we go. So now we've got to, as soon as we come out of the staircase, be able to get upstairs if we want to. Nice and easy. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. It says Stream Elements. Thanks, Stream Elements. You're the best. What am I building? This is an iron factory. I'm just doing all the cosmetics for it. Uh, the factory is largely done already. bother me that that clips through again it's like I keep running into these little situations but I guess it's just you gotta just know not to jump off the edge and die or you can put the ladder there and we kind of need one on the other side yeah, I don't know why I haven't run into that problem anywhere else where it's like uh It 
seems like you'd almost want two ladders. But anyway, fine. Right, so this orange section, so let's color it up. I would say start coloring it from here. The rest of the factory can be just basically blue. Alright. Orange section, is that where the green ones end? Yep, so this is orange all the way here. That's into either, I guess, so that's fine. And this is orange. Alright. Last bit of, um, oh yeah, so I'll go get some actual rods. Just get some downstairs. Hey, leveler. How you doing, man? Or lady. <laughs> Okay, so just need to paint these last little bits. We've done all the belts for this area. Um, just need to do some of the mergers and then the last bit of railing here. And I think that's it for the coloring. Beyond some little bits that I'll probably no doubt forget about. That's it, is it? And then, yeah, we did downstairs already. Okay, oh yeah, here. Oh yeah, so you got to follow these belts across, so these will stay orange. And go down, they loop around um, manifold style, and then they go in there. Fine. So we do that twice, over on this other side as well. And uh, yeah, like I said, so this gives us a way of tracking our belts back to their origin location kind of thing. Like, oh, orange, it's a iron belt, so we could just follow that back. I know it's... If it was all red, it might be a little bit more confusing, but just having like color-coded like blocks I think is kind of nice. Alright, so copy that, paste it there, make it white, and then just do the last little bits of these things. My default colors are yellow, so the orange ones are a little harder to see, but they're not quite colored yet. Same is going to be true for coming in this way, so we know that that's where those go. One's on the end as well, the same situation. Alright, I'm gonna reverse this around one more time. When you get into trains, I can't wrap my mind around how to handle importing different resources from different places into one station, like quartz silica and plastic rubber fuel. Uh, so the way trains basically, I mean, I, I won't be getting into it. Our next episode is like uh, a parts factory. So it's like kind of smaller things that you'll need in order to make things like trains, like computers and stuff. Um, so it's going to be computers, crystal oscillators, heavily modu heavy modular frames, but all on very low production scales, like extremely low. Just to say that we automated it and have it in the background for building fuel generators. Anyway, so after that parts video, Next one is going to be two episodes for oil, I think. I assume it's going to take two. And then after that, it's trains. So, a little while away, yeah, that's a month for me, you know, almost. Um, but yeah, a problem with trains that people have is, one of the classic problems is, let's just take some of this as an example. Let's say this is our train. Yeah, well, let's just say this is a train, right? So we have the front of the train here, and then three carriages, three freight carriages. Whatever goes into those, 
it has to come out in that order in the factory when you deliver it in. So the stations, let's say these stations are just these floor holes for now, right? So these are the, you know, the stations. So that's the front one, the front station. And then you've got the freight things that are all lined up one after the other. If you're going to say that a train is carrying screws and then rods and then plates, then this is going to receive screws and rods and plates in that order. If you then bring a different train in that has something else in these, there's no way to tell the train to stop like here to feed in like maybe other ones that you had further back unless you put another station in the middle of it. So basically when you're planning out trains, you need to think, okay, I'm going to have A, B and C freight, car freight cars and any factory I design that needs these things has to be laid out in the order that the train is going to be delivering it in. So it just takes a lot of forward planning if you want to do that correctly or you can have a, what some people do is they'll just end up building a series of separate stations next to each other. Uh, to deliver things in and then the other option is you could have a sorting it could sort inventory if you want to dump them into let's say you just always you, <laughs> it depends how you want to do things really but you could have um a situation where trains are always four carriages long and stations are always four carriages and the station sorts what it receives based on uh programmable splitters wouldn't advise doing that personally but some people do do that that seems like a real limitation on the train station system, no? I don't know, isn't it? It Doesn't it work that way in Factorio as well? It's like whatever you line up, however the layout of the train is, it has to be the same where it goes. That's just the way it is. So if you're producing A, B, and C, then when it pulls in, it's always going to pull in A, B, and C, and those are, that's what's going to come out. You'll have to specifically design programmable splitters to then say, beep, bop, boop, uh filter out anything that's like not what you wanted to go somewhere else but the amount of them you'd need you'd have to have huge amounts of space if you were delivering potentially like 10 different things so it's very um annoying to do it that way so but this is why my well i don't this isn't why but it'll be interesting to see how it works with my method that i'm doing for this particular playthrough because this playthrough is going to be different than how i did my previous one let me just save it really quickly Yeah, that's a good way of describing it, Matthew. A generic offloader. If you don't mind the space that that could take up, you can have like a nine-way sorter take up just a couple of foundations. As long as you know that it's going to be between one and like ten things arriving. But the more those things there are that could be potentially arriving into your factory, the bigger that that sorting system would need to be. Um, like originally I had a design in my old series for a hyperforge. So this was a smelting building slash foundry there, so basically i'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> n i meant to type v there are nine things nine types of ore in the game one two three four five six seven and then we have bauxite and uranium so there's nine okay nine types of ore so one of my original ideas was to build a hyperforge that could receive any of those nine in any segment of the train, right? Any segment of the train could be filled up with anything because they could be coming from all different deposits around the world. Um, so you didn't want to have like a train with four empty carriages and then two on the back just to line up with your station. The idea was like, why not just be able to feed anything into any part of the station? But that meant that we needed a nine way sorter. Um, so it was just easy enough. You can just, I won't bore you with it, but you just make a, a sorting system that allows you to sort material into nine different belts. Totally doable. A problem that I found though was was to do with the throughput. If you're trying to build a factory with the maximum throughput in mind, so you want 780 coming out of this train station, 780 and 780, so each freight carriage can have 1560. That's the max, right? If you want to have that, um, I, I can't remember exactly why I'm not going to be able to explain this well, but it's really t difficult to do that if you're going to then add a sorting system onto it. Because potentially, if you're adding a sorting system, it's be it means that you might have a factory that's doing... You might have um, a train that's like A on the carriage and then B. But then you might have another one that pulls into the station and it's B and then A. And the problem with that is that depending on the layout of the train... You might have to wait for the other train to like get out of the way first so you might not be able to achieve your full throughput because the train there's 
Trains backing up the slots that you need, and you're waiting for them. I think. Can't really remember exactly. There's some problem like that. I know it's not explaining well, because as I'm saying that out loud, I'm like, well, that's solvable. There's definitely an unsolvable problem where when I was trying to come up with the Hyperforge idea, we had it on stream and I showed people it. It was like, oh no, this is just actually wildly inefficient to sort ore. It would just be much better if you had a dedicated line for iron, a dedicated line for copper, and so on and so on and so forth, rather than trying to be smart about it and bringing anything into any one station. It seemed like that made it a bottleneck. But yeah, I can't tell you exactly why. But yeah, I've been there, just can't remember exactly why, but been there, thought about it, didn't really think it would work, so ended up not using that in the end. Um, but yeah, what I was gonna I was gonna say something about it though. Yeah, two nine four nine Revan says the sorting option is not very optimized and clogs easy. Yeah, I think that's probably part of it, right? It well it clog it gets backfills. Not if something goes wrong, but just like you're limiting your throughput options when you do that. Uh, I got lost when building the Caterium Copper Factory, so download the file of it's completed. Where are you making the plastic and rubber? Nope, I can show you that. Well, it's all on the map, so if you download the latest file, you should see here. Full production. So it is out there. But we'll just hop out to that really quickly, fly fast. This is where I make my plastic and rubber. Very small amounts. I think it makes something like 20 per minute. 20 rubber per minute, 20 plastic per minute, and then 90 petroleum coke just goes, or less than, yeah, 90 I guess just goes into the awesome sink. Um, I've since made a recipe, or have a recipe now for circuit boards. That actually uses rubber and petroleum coke. 30 per minute and 45 per minute. So I could easily set up a, what is it? But assembler, excuse me. Not gonna do it, but yeah, I can make an assembler, pop it right here and just send some of the rubber and the petroleum coke into it, just to make it passively a little bit of circuit boards in the background. That's kind of what this parts factory is gonna be doing. It's gonna be making very small amounts of stuff just to make life easier. How's our factory looking, by the way? We're close to putting that ceiling on it. It's kind of taking shape, looks kind of cool. Getting there, it's good doing something anyway. <laughs> I was just gonna show very quickly um, the old save. Show you some train stuff. Break up the stream a bit. It's a bit repetitive just doing colors all the time. Yeah, that's a really good point, finite steak machine. You won't get enough you won't get the max throughput of the freight station belts. Yeah, that's something I realized just recently. Is that it's impossible to get fifteen sixty per minute on trains. It's impossible. Because they turn off the belts when a train is loading and unloading. That was a fear of mine when I was building the copper and Caterium factory, I was like, oh my god, none of these numbers will work because trucks are gonna pause the truck station. But trucks don't. Only trains that do. So that means that trains need to be built with a lower throughput in mind, not the complete max. I think it's probably just the complete safest thing to do is use 700 per minute rather than 780. Um, yeah, Revan said, it's the fact that you're limited by the belt. It won't move fast to push all the material through. I don't think that's the, the reason. There's, that doesn't really make any sense. Like a sorting, a sorter... Right, something that uses lots of programmable splitters. If you've got a belt of 780, it'll move 780 through. And that's just, that's it. Nothing is getting stuck because it's going through a splitter. As long as the belts are all doing 780, then 780s will come through. But things do, you tend to bottleneck yourself on a sorter. Because of the nature of like having to, if you want to, anyway, it, I feel like I'll just go around circles, but. You're right, but I don't know if it's for that reason. <laughs> um. Anyway, this is my old factory, or my old save, my old series. Welcome to Big Shell. The series, the, the, the project that killed my series, because it took too long, and the views fell off. 
while building it, even though I think it's awesome. It's a super computer factory, by the way. One of the most complicated designs I've ever done. Every bridge had to have its own blueprints to determine what was going through it, whether it be pipes, belts, or certain configurations of the two. It was pretty cool. I really love it. It would be nice to do it again one day, but that was the layout for it. The F was the only one that was actually kind of done. It was the, um, the fuel generator part of it. All the other struts are just like ready to receive what they need. And then I did all the logistical layouts. All it needs now is just the machines to be placed in. I just never got around to it. Um, but the logistics is actually done. The belt work is all done. It's weird. It's the first time I ever did belt work before doing machines. Right, so what I wanted to show just really quickly was something to do with trains. So this is my old train line that went through the whole world. So I had all my factories were connected via rail. Um, pretty much. And that was a train that delivers fuel to various factories, actually, yeah. Alright, did you get my question? Do something similar in the new series. Smaller, I guess? Something similar... Uh... Oh, like the Mega Forge? No. No. Um, I've shown this factory before. It's obviously overgrown now with some trees and things popping through it. It wasn't there before. Um, but yeah, this has three train lines. So basically, you have to sort of make train lines that you know are going to receive certain things. So it's like, okay, this is going to receive casing here, and it's always going to be casing here. As long as you'd work that out ahead of time, then you should be fine. But it does mean that... Right, so this is the actual station. Station, then gap, then aluminum, casing, then petroleum coke. So it means that we need to make a train that's going to pull into other factories that are going to have the same layout. Sorry, I have to get... Flip. There we go. Not fly so crazily fast. Anyway, basically, it means that the train that's pulling in there, its second carriage is always going to have to be aluminum casing, which means, this is my aluminum factory, as trains pull in, the casing has to be on the second carriage over. You know what I mean? And that's why trains can be tricky and difficult. But in my new series, something I'm... And that's... I mean, it, it works. It's totally fine. It's just... It is a bit complicated to have to think about it that way. But that's why in my new series, I'm going to be building these. These are transport hubs. The idea behind it is that on the bottom floor, it's all just trucks, truck stations. All right, so trucks all feed into here, and they'll just unload into whatever bays are doing whatever. They're not all going to be Caterium, that's just the default at the moment. I never actually used this. There is one down in the south of the map I used, but anyway, this is where I got the concept for it, or where I came up with it. Um, so this is just like this big truck station, and it's getting uh, fuel delivered into it, and it all gets delivered into every single... Uh, truck bay, right? So down the middle in the back, we have fuel just being delivered to everything. Packaged turbo fuel. It's kind of a waste of turbo fuel, to be honest, giving it to trucks. Because it doesn't make them go any faster. Um, anyways, this place is actually used for this, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of the... One, one bay out of all 14 are used. Anyway, so I'll be building these. The idea is, on this floor, it's all just for truck stations. On this floor... This is what we can do with all this material that comes in, stored in containers, whatever, reorganize it and send it up to trains, or send it down to go out via trucks. So the train stations will be here. And then there's drone stations on the sides to send stuff out across the map. So that's the idea of a transport hub. And the idea, at least for me, in the series that I'm doing now, is that trains are all going to have pretty much the same layout and have really large stations, because each transport hub is going to be built in each biome and connect to all the other transport hubs. And factories are only ever going to connect via road. And that means we can just load everything up into a transport hub that has a dedicated set, like sizing, right? So it's like X goes here, then Y, then Z, A, and B, and C, or whatever, right? So the layout of the freight cars are the same for every transport hub. That's the idea. And that way the trains can all be sort of democratized. And anytime you build a station inside of a factory, you know the exact layout that everything will have to be. And that should make things a lot easier. When you open a station menu, you can see what setup should be unloaded. I've never seen that before. Let's see. 
When you open a station menu, like this one, how do you see? Because I'm clicking these and it doesn't do anything. And these are the trains. It doesn't tell me the layout of them or anything. Are you sure you're not running a mod? Oh, my game crashed. That was good. Sorry, game crashed. Back in a second. <laughs> you just caught a stream at the worst possible moment. You make such good designs for your factories. I don't know, I really don't feel like mine are that good. We were showing some other Korean gamers off today and it looked like insane what they were building. I just make big rectangles. <laughs> Yeah, the hex build building, big shell. I love it. Super cool. We can build it again, maybe. <laughs> Although I, I would resist trying to build the hexes again because it does make layouts really, really complicated inside. If it, if they were just big rectangles that floated, it'd be a lot easier. Station. When you check how load in station. Not sure what you mean. When you open station menu, you can set up what should be on load. Station. When you check how load in a station. Oh, is that a station there, though? That was me interacting with the train station, wasn't it? Bye, Luminous. It's Factory Cave is amazing. Oh, yeah. I guess that one's different. That is one of my favorites, actually. <laughs> uh, that's that's just the, the game's awesome graphics and lighting, doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Like, that location looks great with all the bioluminescence, you know, it's not like I did that. But yeah, I'm I'm proud of that one. It does look good. You don't need to be super detailed and non-rectangular to be amazing builds. <laughs> well, see, I've got the luxury of, a, well, kind of, of time. I can put a little bit more time into the game than most average people can. Sorry, this is my old save, so it just takes forever to load. My new save doesn't take nearly as long as this. And I think it's largely because of that big shell. All of it's made out of one meter pieces. Or a lot of it is. It's all these like little one meter bits going around. The entire outer walls are all using that. Oh, this is never done. It's such a mess. <laughs> Oh, I'm using regular package fuel. Almost fell. There we go. Yeah, so these bits here, it's like... Think of how much there is in the game, how many objects there are in the game. It's like crazy. Just for one wall. Anyways, um, yeah, so I could just go to a... So you said a station. This is a station right here, right? Train station. Their comment was, when you open a station menu, so pressing E. The timetables, train station, timetable. You can set up what should be unloaded. I think so. If you're on a train... Edit the timetable. Yeah, I don't think so. I, you might either you're using a mod or we're misunderstanding each other, but you can't specifically tell a train, for instance, to only unload one of its carriages or something like that. Either all or nothing. And the layout is depending, and you can only tell it to stop at stations, not at freight platforms. So you can't tell it to like stop a little early to line up with something else. You're just not allowed to do that. You would have to bake these in further down every now and then or something to, to break it into segments. It's an option in the edit timetable? Yes, you can. Oh my God, this would be mind blowing if you can do this. Hang on then. All right, so. Timetable. So it's in, when you say edit timetable.
Oh yeah, no, I have seen this before, actually. No, you're right. You can do that. It doesn't change where you line up, though. But you're right, you can actually say, just unload a certain carriage. No, you're totally right. Totally got that wrong. But the, yeah, so that's my bad. I did just say that a minute ago, but the original point was that you can't make it line up with a certain part of the thing, right? The whole discussion was... um. That's, you're totally right, I'm not taking that away from anyone, but the point, I think, was more this. That if you've got A, B, C, and D freight cars, right, one, two, three, they have to line up with the freight collection. Well, it's got freight, freight platform that they need to, and that's determined by where the train stops, which is determined by the train station, right? So you can't change. It's not like I can tell this train to stop there so that the... Its second car lines up with the first car, st you know what I mean? The first platform. But I know, I am aware that, yes, yes, I know that you're, I am aware that you can edit this. Sorry, I did forget that, and I totally did forget, and you're right. And I did just say a minute ago you couldn't do that, because I forgot. I did forget that. But you can go in here, and you can say, yeah, go to the station. Uh, if, when you're empty, like, add a certain item, I want this thing to be dropped in. You can also... Um, pick it up, how long it waits, and yeah, you can totally do that, that's that's true. But that's, my m original point was that you can't control the order of the freight cars, because I can't remember who it was that we even got onto the train discussion, but they were saying, like, how do you do trains? Like, I'm finding it hard to line them up with each other, various stations, and it's like, well, that's the difficulty, isn't it? Um, the solution to that is have separate lines, more than anything, or have multiple stations on the same line, so that it can stop at various intervals. So yeah, but no, you're totally right. I spoke at a turn there just at that last moment that no yeah yeah you can totally do that and a big aspect and i think my trains do do that in this world the specifically the train that does it not this one but you saw the other one earlier it has fuel at the front and i only unload fuel at the front in certain places because obviously i don't want it pulling into a, a station where it's supposed to be doing something else and unloading fuel and then clogging up and messing up the whole factory so I, I'm aware of that. It literally does do that in this world, so it's just something I forgot. My bad. Yeah. That was my old railway. See, I'm not going to use this build anymore. I'm going to design a new one. This was okay. It was um, two frame foundations with concrete in the center. And then the various signals and everything. And every factory pretty much had railway going into it. This is the one that was really absurd, for people who might remember if they watched my old series. This had a 13 freight carriage... Or specifically just for oil. It's actually full. Well, these ones won't be full. Yeah. The ones on the end is full because it's not getting used. But um, I remember people thinking, told me it was crazy. And then I found out just recently. I don't know how true this is. I haven't tested it. But everyone was always saying, like, you should only ever have four uh, freight cars anymore and it's inefficient. I should do a race with them side by side each other to see if... Excuse me, to test that theory. Um, but in my experience... That's not true, but then that person said, oh, it's only true if you're going uphill or downhill. My entire railway doesn't have a single incline on it. I built it at a certain height that just worked out, where it didn't need to go up or down anywhere. But this is the one that's 13 carriages long. So I don't use the oil of the previous four because um, it's a long story. <laughs> but I can. I might do it. I think if the factory's upgraded, it would use it. But yeah, instead of me building the rail going up or down, I just go up or down in my tower blocks, you know? So this is the uh, blue crater factory in my old world. So we have this insanely highly raised train station. But it keeps a consistent... Um, keeps a consistent height across the entire world. But yeah, that was a fun, fun video doing that. And a fun thing. And it works. I love it. Now there's a, a big catch with this one. <laughs> it's not done. Which is, so all of the oil is outside, and it's getting pumped up. You know, I love my vertical pumping. So we're pumping everything up. From the bottom all the way up to the top. Five pipelines worth of oil going along this kind of pipe room, and then being fed up into every single fluid freight platform via a series of fluid buffers. And they're all getting loaded onto the train. This train running every eight, I think it takes something like two and a half minutes to get to its destination. If it for some reason ran, um, I think it's six minutes. If it took six minutes rather than two and a half, my power network would fail and the train would stop running. <laughs> uh, thus meaning that it would never run again. 
Now you can mitigate that with batteries. I don't. Th I think I've got some batteries. It's not enough, really. I never got round to it. Just one of those things. But yeah, it was awesome to see 13 carriages doing its thing. Big logistical feat, working out the times involved of that. How much oil can we deliver? How long does it need to go? Should it be broken into two trains, or is it? Can we do it with just one, one super long freight train? And uh, super happy with that. I'd love to do that again. <laughs> And I do think with transport hubs, I'm probably going to go more than just four carriages. But I might do that test. And see what the deal is with the whole four carriages promoter thing like Nathan says. Because if it doesn't matter on a flat surface, then I'll just make a flat railway. And make long carriages, because it's cooler. <laughs> it's more fun. Freight trains are supposed to be wildly long. Anyways. That was the old world, the old motor factory, the old steel factory, screws. And this is the actual operational transport hub. This is the one where trucks actually do go in and use it. Um, but it didn't have anything out the back. That design came later when it decided, well, I could just flip it and put another side on the back of it and make it, you know, a, a more flexible, what's it called, uh, transport hubs. This is the places where we just hoover up all of the ore in this area. So all the iron deposits are here, iron deposits here. I think there's even some coming from around here. There's just truck stations built in. We just pick up all the iron and bring it in there. So I did that very late in the series uh, for this one, but this is built into the beginning of my new series and it feeds that copper factory, which is obviously there in my new one. So pretty fun. That's weird, those signals are like off. I d hey, what's going on? Why are the signals all black? <laughs> That's pretty weird. I've never seen that before. There's a little bu bug or something. Hey, they just came on. It's probably because I'm flying around. Probably a bit confused. Oh, I tell you why. It's because I got no clip on. I've got no cl collision, so it doesn't know I'm here. <laughs> that's funny. But anyway, yeah, that's our. Um, just go in there now. That's where it gets. Oh, did I just enable it? Wait. Anyway, this is where all the oil goes, and it just goes down the layer into all of these little buffers that all comes down over here down the layer and then fed into all of my uh, fuel generators not these refineries is it oh yeah it is sorry these are the ones making fuel so each row they're all making fuel here and then they're all going into all these generators basically and these are all overclocked I took every power shot I had. People rightfully said like, and I, I they were I didn't spawn power shots. They're legitimate power shots that I got in the map from slugs. That being said, some slugs regenerated as I was playing the game um, when they're not really supposed to. But yeah, people pointed out it's like that's a lot to be overclocking. You could just like stack these on top of each other three times or two and a half times or whatever, and just feed them that way without having and save all the power shots. Which uh, I probably would do if I was doing this again. Anyway, fun to have a little look back on the old factory. Let's get back to the new one. The new far superior, cleaner world. Um, nostalgia signals are buggy. Yeah, I think it's because I disabled clipping and I was flying, so it just didn't have time to catch up with the fact that I was looking at it. Are we humans or are we dancers? The song was on the other day for me in, in my car. What time is it, by the way? Oh my god, it's nearly 8. We will have to wrap it up soon, I think. I didn't finish... I thought for sure I'd get all the cosmetics done, but I'll have to put the finishing touches on myself, I guess. I am generally quicker when I'm doing it on my own because I'm not going off on tangents and showing random things, but it's all fun. I enjoy doing it. And I agree, Taylor.
Truck somehow put a pile of copper ore into the coal line. Now my manifold is all gummed up. Should it take forever to fix? That sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's worth noting that if you drive through... Is that true? Yeah, if you drive... Th if you drive a truck through a station that's not using, as part of, like, doing a route, and then you get out of the truck and let it do its own route, it'll stop and unload. So you, you make sure you avoid going through the bounding box of a truck station if you're not going into it. Or, if you do, then you can just get out, turn on the nodes, and then edit the node and remove it. So that it doesn't actually stop there. It'll have a special yellow one, even if you never stopped there. The game thinks that you were trying to when it saves the route, so you'll have to, um, yeah, get ahead of that. Alright, um, almost done. <laughs> Said that a billion times with this thing, but I think we actually are. That was orange, that was orange. That's all done. Alright, so let's invert this again. And clear this area here. See some of the last fences then to be done, I think, for the entire area. This orange section. And then it really becomes purple section, I guess. One, two, three, and four. No. Does it want to work? There we go. This purple? Yeah. All right, and then we're back to blue, which I still have not saved that color. And he just wanted a hug. All right, I think that m might be pretty much it in terms of painting today. Um, yeah, the only bits would be here. Just got to invert this to be blue. Oh yeah, actually there's one of the things, just these need to be blue as well, because they're receiving screws. Oh, and they're supposed to be green. <laughs> that's the, I think that is the last thing to do. But that's actually a bit more rewarding because you can see it a bit more clearly. Wait for that, yeah, that's okay. Wrong one. All right, there we go. So just need to switch that to green, and that should be the final color check uh, change, I think. That's just for anywhere the rods are coming in, so not down here. And that was supposed to be colored blue as well. Right. The rods, where are you? There. That's where they come from. They come from the green section. See little little color errors every now and then, but it's the kind of thing where I'll probably just go over it on myself by myself, just with a little podcast on, just make sure it's all ship shape. Uh, looking pretty good. Uh, all right, so this needs to be orange. 
Those are using plates. And the plates go up here. Those are orange already. Yep. Okay, that one's already done. Alright, and then it's just the mistake I made at the very beginning, which was to copy and paste this back in. Alright, I think that's it. No road signs? Yeah, probably not today, because I feel like that's quite... Um, it's a thing where it'll probably take me a while to decide on one that I'm happy with, but I'll definitely do one. It's for sure, it wouldn't make sense in that to have them up and over the roads. I was actually looking at like American sign style billboards for that, how they could be done. Uh, okay, so a roof. Roof needs to be added on. Uh, the question is, how do we do it? <laughs> um, probably just use a the actual standard roof thing. And then just put some glass parts in it. So we'll just use the old standard fix-it roof. Just iron plates. Should it be flat or not? I think flat. I don't care about uh, having a little curve to it. It would be like that. I just need to map this out so they flip every time they get placed down. Question is, are we doing the side like that? Yeah, I guess so. And the towers could have more like pointy bits on them, maybe. That might look a bit better. Alright, we'll just commit to this then. Screw it. Go. All the way down. And then some of these will make glass just by going over the, with, the, with the material checker. Probably just go smoother if we get some height. Maybe. Square supremacy, yeah, you're damn right. I can do curves, I just don't want to. Ugh. Another factor I'd like to build, um, maybe in between oil or just after, is like uh, ammunition. Ammo factory and stuff to make like novelisks and bombs, just everything for clearing out some wildlife. Only makes sense now that we have a biofuel factory. Alright, love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> so what does it look like down inside now? Ooh, super dark. Still cool though. Love it. And then we'll put some lights on these things. So I have the, uh, well, we're, uh, let's not get ahead of myself. We'll do that last. Oh, I hate when that happens. Oh, we gotta do it from up high. Oh, sorry, have you made a main factory like a headquarters? Uh, no. I actually never ever did that. I'll probably do it in this series. Uh, I had ideas for... What was it? Making like medicinal inhalers and also just having some generic machines placed around so that... I feel like I always do this. I run into the problem where I'm like, oh, I just need some blah blah. And uh, either I haven't made it yet or, you know, it's like a, something that I'll need for a future. It's like, oh, I need some radio control units to build a few of these things. But I don't have a radio control unit factory yet. So it would be great to just have a generic manufacturer. Or a few different rooms with generic like machines in them. That all just go in and like quickly just change the recipe. And they already have containers and stuff set up that just need to be fed. Not just that, but then a blueprint designer room. So a room that with the hover pack we can just easily fly up and down in. I had that in my old save actually. Uh, space elevator can be there as well. And then the hub and then be like, you know, a mom table and equipment workshop. All those kind of things that you'd expect. But I can't imagine it's going to look like amazing or anything. Some people do really, really cool designs on it, but I feel like I'm just going to make one just more general purpose. It doesn't have to look like super, super good. Explosive rebar, yeah. Gas novelisks. And that's the other thing. Yeah, things to make like 
more iodine filters like all the kind of things that you'll as a player a pioneer that you want to go and grab just for outdoor adventuring should be made there so you can dump in your medicinal inhalers you can dump in whatever materials you need to make um filters whatever that kind of stuff is or that can kind of be maybe more automated with trucks i guess but that should be made there so you collect it there at least But yeah, I don't know. I only, I only really plan ahead as much as the next video, so I really don't know when any of that stuff will happen. It's just like loosely thinking about it. It's like, yeah, I guess sometime that will probably happen. Um, I'm eager to get to oil and trains because I just feel like that might give the series, I'm hoping, gives the series a little bit of a bump in views. Whereas making a little home base, I don't think would really do anything for the YouTube side of things. It'd be nice to have. I can't believe I had all the material for this. It says it requires concrete, but didn't it say in here? Oh, for some reason I thought it was just plates. Okay. Best weapon is the explosive rebar, poison gas, creatures, and rocks. I just discovered there's a context menu when you right click in sign text fields. What? This is a sign. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Undo, cut, copy, paste, delete, and select all. Hmm. Interesting. I don't need to color the awesome sink. Actually, the awesome sinks are going to be colored the default blue and white color I have everywhere else. Get that ready on the color bar. Finally, the entire roof is done for this part of the build. There's no building for the water extractors just yet. I like to see the towers all rising up to the same height, which is nice. There's still this one over here, which is a bit lower down. Not that it matters, but it's nice just to keep it kind of where it should be. Is that the correct height? I think so. Yep. Alright. They're going to be made out of metal, so we should maybe just start updating that now in a sec. Although, do the keep stay on the roof, I suppose, for now. Uh, white roof. But before we paint it, might as well just do the bits that are going to be glass. So, actually, I do need to go inside from down below to decide where that's going to happen. So these poles will be removed. Uh, yeah, I would imagine along here, so you can obviously just switch it out really easily. I don't know if it should be unbroken, as in no gaps, or we should have some gaps every now and then. Probably some. There's lots of the two there. Hmm. Uh, let's just count how many this is. It's 19. Well, it is a weirdly uneven number because of this part down here. That'd be 19, 20, 21, 22. Hmm. 
Mm, okay. Maybe five? Two. I'll start from the other end. Let me just, uh, so I stop opening that menu. Just get this selected here properly. So, yeah, I guess one and two. All right. One, two, three, four, and five. And then it would be a gap. One and two. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Right. There are new things today, yeah. Every text input has it in the menu. Interesting. I'm wondering, is it better to go across? Nah, yeah, whatever. And these should probably be gaps of two. Or panels of width of two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, what's probably more important is even thinking of where the lights are going to go first, rather than these. I'll leave that inside bit there, but the outside bit is probably just going to be lights. The lights I use are the... Machine floor lights, these ones. Yeah, so I'll have to just look at something like this for a second. Damn, it'll have to be placed on foundations. Oh, that's working. Okay, weird. That might be good in the center there. And then just build these off of each other. Now they're gonna be by default blue. I don't know if I want them to be blue. <laughs> I'd just choose a more warm, natural kind of color just to light up the place. be good enough. And I'll just put that on this one as well. Uh, I should just copy it, really. And then I'll save the blueprint before I commit to it. I'm just trying to test out what this would look like. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? I don't know if it needs to go more white, more factory-esque. But I'll probably leave it at that. Alright, so it means opening up the blueprint designer and changing it. Let's see, can we get all the way up to the top? Encroaching another clearance. Ugh, come on. Just to be on the complete safe side, I'm going to brighten that just ever so slightly. Alright. Copy. And what emission strength is it? Three? Yeah, that's good, because they're going to be high up. I'll just save that for, the for now. Alright, so CCF, machine floor. So I'm going to need 30 or 40 of them. So just grab everything I have. Um, might push me to my limits of crystal oscillators at this point. Let's grab all those materials to start laying out the lights around the walkways upstairs, and then we can put the windows in, and that will give us our total brightness for that floor. And that'll be the floor done, I think. Whoa. Well, that was a big one. <laughs> Oh, I'm finally out of steel. Might have some in this one. Yeah, a little bit, not much. I need to. I look forward to just sending all of this into awesome things. Just get rid of everything here. I'm sick of it. Okay, so copper sheeting again. Again, I'll try to empty out that other crate first. Crystal. Oscillators. Oh no, I think I might be out. I think that might be it. I've just got 40 left. Am 
Motors and heavy modular frames. It could just set one up. Have to wait for that autosave. Try to just set one up in the background. Just need a little bit more crystal oscillators. Thought I had a little bit more than that. But we make everything it needs on its own. Just have to feed it in. Cable, quartz, crystal, and reinforced iron plates. Alright, manufacturer. trees man okay so quartz crystal cable and reinforced iron plate Quartz crystal can go first. That's good. Leave the rest in here for future. Cable. Cable's actually really low. I might have to go to the copper facility to get that. And what was the other thing? Reinforced iron plates. Well, we just made a million up here. Nice video, man. Thanks, Mao Mod. Uh, Mao Mod. Sorry if I said that name wrong. I'm sure I did. Hello? <laughs> What's your frequency of autosave? What do you recommend for beginners? Um, yeah, I probably do the inefficient thing, which is the later I am in the game, the longer the autosave takes. So I tend to widen out the time it takes. But arguably, the later in the game you are, the more important it is <laughs> to have it. Um, so yeah, mine is mine was set to 38 minutes. But just today, I changed it to 20 minutes. So it's on 20 minutes at the moment. I recommend for beginners 10. If you're starting off a world, 10 minutes, honestly, 5 would probably be good. Until you start to notice, like, in a significant hitch, and then maybe increase it. But, uh, yeah, maybe 10 is a good sweet spot for the first few, you know, for your first few factories. All right, I'm gonna go get some cable. I uh, just have to drive over to the copper Caterium factory. This like container is just full of it up there. And this will just make some crystal oscillators for me in the background, at least. Yeah, 38 minutes is a bit too long, but the I never really the game really rarely crashes for me. Like it only crashed for me today cuz we were just running through with mods and cheats and stuff. But it's extremely rare that it crashes for me anyway. Uh but you're right, you know, you could potentially lose a lot. But that's why I put it down to 20 now. So 20 is a bit more reasonable. I think this is the only tower that doesn't have labels inside of it to tell me where I am. All the other ones do. 
ventilation. Here we are. So there's our cables. I think we've got enough <laughs> for a while. Do you think it's a good idea to make every factory focusing only one part? For example, your iron factory gets divided into several factories and make them expandable. Will there be too much transportation? Um... It's a tough one. No. If you want a fact, if you're worried about expansion and upgrading in the future, just make a factory based on... Well, I don't know. It's difficult. There's so many different places to approach this from. The question would be then, what do you need this stuff for? You know, if you know what you're going to need in the future, then you can kind of plan whether or not a factory needs one thing to be made or multiple. Generally speaking, I think factories making three or four things is fine, but I don't necessarily see anything wrong with that. If you're worried about upgrading them though, what I tend to do, as I've mentioned before, is basically just look at the amount of ore you get out of a certain deposit, max it out to be a Mark III fully overclocked miner, like in your head, and what would you get out of it? Either it'd be 600 if it's a normal node, or 780 if it's a pure node. If it's going to be 780, then you use that 780 to divide it amongst all the machines. Sorry, I was uh, distracted. Um, you div divide it amongst all the machines that you'd need, and then that gives you like what you're going to get out. That's the max you'll ever get out of that node, right? So, is it better to have it do just one thing? Like, my iron factory splits up the iron ore into several things. Should it all just be reinforced plates? I don't know, because I don't know how many reinforced iron plates I need. Now, I know that I'll need more iron than what's in just this one factory. I decided purposefully for this build to build it with 480 belt speed in mind, not the max belt, just to make it easier. That's the factory that's built with all of the copper in grassy fields, plus a 780 belt speed in mind, and it's a monster of a factory. So your question is almost like, well, should you do that? you know, for everything. It's like, well, I mean, I guess in theory, if you want to just make the most out of every one good and you know exactly how much you're going to need of it, then yes. But it's kind of impossible. Not impossible, but it's a really hard thing to do to know exactly how much you're going to need all the time. Um, so yeah, I think having the flexibility of multiple things coming out of a factory means, like, actually helps you. But if you're really good at planning, then in theory, you could just forward plan it to the point where you know exactly what you need. And you could say, well, I'm going to need at least 300 iron reinforced iron plates per minute. So I'm just going to set that up out of these nodes. I'm going to need blah, blah, blah per minute. So I'll set it up with these nodes and so on and so forth. So you'll cut out any flexibility. But if you know everything ahead of time, then sure. What am I missing? Wire? Alright, we are making temporary crystal oscillators. How many are we making? Two per minute. Hell yeah. Alright, if we could get another um, power shard, we can speed that up just a little bit. Nice. Alright, so we could just keep working on the ones that we have. Oh, I forgot to get steel as well. I don't need that much of it. It'll be pretty quick to get that. Alright. Do you think it's... Oh yeah, I read that already. Um, just had a Big Mac for the first time in ages. I gotta say, it was pretty terrible. Yeah, man, don't do it. It's a trap. McDonald's is a trap. It sucks. Now, I've had McDonald's in Ireland. Maybe it's nostalgia or something talking, but... I feel like in, in Ireland, it's pretty good. 
Now, that's broad, right? I mean, I've only been to the ones in and around Dublin, I guess, but those ones, they're pretty good. And I find, I find anyway, that the, the quality of beef in Ireland is better. Maybe it's just what I'm used to, but I do feel like it's better than the, the your, you know, your standard, what you're get. I'm sure you can get good meat everywhere, right? But I'm talking about your standard supermarket slash McDonald's beef. I do feel like the grade is slightly higher in Ireland than it is uh, in England, at least. And I thought it was just going to be the same everywhere. I didn't think there was any differences. But since going to McDonald's multiple times in different places in England, I'm like, this sucks. It's like gray paste. It's not like I normally I'm really weird, right? I get burgers that are literally just bun, meat, bun. That's it. Maybe some ketchup. <laughs> and that's what I used to get in in Ireland because it's it tastes great. <laughs> It's like kind of fresh. There's like a little bit of juice in the meat and some like there's a tiny bit of salt on it. Really good. You don't need anything else. At least I didn't. <laughs> but over here, it's like, oh man. You'd be dying if you don't put something on to mask the shit, basically. <laughs> Anyways, that's just my experience. But not, a, you know, see, one of the only things that I think Ireland might have over any other country, which is, it is a small country with huge amounts of grassland and farmland where it rains a lot, so maybe this quality ingredients is actually a bit higher. I don't know. Now, I've been to Spain. Southern Spain, I've had McDonald's. Totally fine. Same as Ireland. No difference. It's just really when I went to England, I was like, there's something wrong <laughs> with these ones. <laughs> the McGuinness. That's funny. Alright. But anyway, I don't mean to be a McDonald's elitist. But yeah, I've started going to Five Guys a lot more. There's a Five Guys in Crawley nearby where I live, and that's quite nice. But I get that with cheese and bacon as well, because like the meat, it's like they're, the Five Guys burger is like a McDonald's burger in Ireland, kind of. It's like, okay, this is a bit better than McDonald's. Oh, sorry, we are doing that floor, aren't we? Yep. It's a Brexit benefit. Uh, yeah, I doubt it's... It might, maybe it is. Actually, I do, uh, what's the word, commonly see, um, in supermarkets over here, it'll say like Irish beef and Irish whatever. There's a lot of Irish produce that comes over here, I guess. Oh no, it is the floor above, what am I saying? Damn. Why am I so lost? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. We're here. EF. So this, I'll need to add this to this one. Hmm. Interesting problem. When you search something, you can't then hotbar it because even, I think it's because it thinks I just put it into the text field. And my problem with this is, I, is that it? What's the light for logistics? Somewhere the other... Oh, it's probably about come back to undefined. Yeah, there we go. Nice, got it. Alright, cool. Probably start it there. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's see how that does for us. Check it out. Are we looking nice? Are we looking clean? I'm pretty happy with that. I do think the uh, the little strip lighting in here wasn't as effective as I would have liked it to be at brightening this area up. Well, it's not bad. It just could be better. So we need little breaks to get in down these lanes. And these power poles will be removed as well, by the way.
Yeah, not bad. Uh, the place will still brighten up more when we add more ceiling um, skylights in. But we'll have to make sure that we add some of these lights too. So I'm thinking two layers of skylight and then these should fit between, I think. So let's try that. like the lighting around the edge walkways. Around the edge of the walkways. Oh, that's what I did for the biofuel factory, right? I added like strip lights along the edges of railing. Along the bottom of the railing in the other one as well. That was kind of cool. How about some lights above the machines and under the beams? I don't feel like they need it under the beams. I'd like to just see the glow of the actual lights under there because that way I can see if they flash red or yellow. If I'm putting my own colors on them, it kind of obfuscates those colors a little bit. That's at least my thinking. But I also don't want this to be some hyper RGB neon factory with lights running along every beam, you know? <laughs> uh, as cool as that can look. <laughs> Right, so this will be another central line here. That's really down the center point down this line, so. Like so. Alright. One down next, and then we do the next set of skylights. Because I did think about that. I thought about doing the you know, the machines are all color coded, so I was like, well maybe. There could be like, yeah, strip lighting or different colored sign lighting to represent the colors of each area as well. I decided against it. Just thought it would be too much. I didn't actually look at it though, to be honest. This feels weird because it doesn't feel like it's center aligned, but it actually, it is. <laughs> it's just because one, one part of this, this side comes out further towards the end. Clean out that outside bit in a moment. So what if it was nighttime? Yeah, pretty good actually. This could just be all skylight then. It doesn't seem like it needs to. Cause even at nighttime, it'll still be bright enough. Maybe if it was cloudy, be more difficult. This is totally bright, like I can see everything even at night, so I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I think I'll probably just keep it like that. I think less is more in this case. Has anyone tried the Nightingale game out yet? <clears throat> Shout out to talking about other games generally, actually. It's nice. I wish more people would do that. I mean, I don't mind people talking about Satisfactory. We are playing it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I love playing other games too. I haven't played Nightingale. Obfuscate, a developer word. I said obfuscate once before and someone was like, I think they gave um, a super comment, like they dropped $5 and they were saying uh, for use of the word, for use of the correct word obfuscate in the sentence or something, because they hear people say it or never say it or something. They, I can't remember what they said, but they, they pointed out the fact that I used that word and they actually genuinely gave money for it or just as like a kind of a joke, I guess. I thought that was funny that people pointed out that. Now you've pointed it out as well. Ooh, I tell you what, what's it like downstairs? I wouldn't mind adding more of the lights down here, for sure, because this bit is kind of dark, right? But now that we have this creeping through, it does add a little bit more light to the area. It does feel like these weren't big enough. They needed to be bigger or doubled up or something. To, be to brighten up this area just a little bit. Like, these signs don't have any... Um, that's kind of by design. They don't have any emission strength. I feel like they look a bit weird if they do. <laughs> They're too bright. It would be nice if you could tie emission strength to the time of day. Maybe a mod could do that. So that everything goes on to emission strength 1. When it gets dark. 
All right, I think I've got my format. I'm just going to stick to this. I'm pretty happy with it. So we'll just do this across the entire build. So the lights need to go down first. I'm pretty low on crystal oscillators now, though, so I won't really be able to put that many more. And then once they're down, the power poles can be done. We're making good progress. Is this as close over as... Oh, there's something wrong here. Oh, I know why. That one came off of the tower, and that one came off of the end of the room. Hmm. That's annoying that they're not aligned. I need to fix that. Just so that they're all the same across. It would look weird otherwise. It does look weird otherwise. People don't use that word. It's a great word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obfuscation is not security. Indeed. Programmer lingo. Been on my Anno 1800 binge recently. Nice. Yeah, I'm always super tempted to go back to it. I really want to go back and start a new series in it. I said it to my friend recently. I was like, oh yeah, going back to Anno probably. And he's like... Why would you go back to an old series and or do it again? Let's play something new. <laughs> and I kind of get where he's coming from. But at the same time, I might put up a poll, see if people are interested in that, but I think it'd be great to go back to it. Now that all the DLCs are out, you start a campaign where all of that's just active right from the get-go. I had thought, though, of actually streaming it rather than just doing it again. Mainly now streams of Anno are difficult because you can't pause the game <laughs> But I felt like that would be something that would make it different and They stay up as videos after the fact and I would have a more set schedule. It wouldn't be You know eight hours or whatever. It would be just like two to three and then that'd be it All right, so this keeps us at the same distance as the previous one so we can get rid of that and get rid of that and maybe one could run along this way or something that'll work out better and it'll keep it in line with those ones over there um but yeah i mean i'm gonna be playing some new games hopefully some people decide to tune into them and see if they like them as well but um manor lords for one it's been delayed but falling frontier will be another one I was thinking of playing that Expeditions Mudrunner game. Have you guys seen that? It's like the follow-up to SnowRunner. It seems like it's going in a bit more of a casual direction, or arcadey direction. Maybe. It has more, like, um... Objectives, I guess? Rather than just, like... Oh, here's a big open map, you figure it out? It's more like, hey, here, t here's an expedition. You take a crew. And, uh... Yeah, I, th I think, anyway, you take, like, a crew and you have to go find certain things out in the world. And then it's about, like, upgrading your vehicles so that you can do things you couldn't do before. Something like that. I thought that could be kind of a fun mini thing to do. Not, like, as a big main series, but something that could be just supplemental on the side. Maybe people would be interested. I like those kind of games, anyway. Super chill. What's it called again? It's called Expeditions Mud Runner. Weird name for it, because... There's a game called Expeditions Rome. It's got nothing to do with it, obviously. <laughs> they just use the word Expeditions again. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's made by the people that make Mud Runner or Snow Runner, Saber Interactive, and Focus Home Entertainment. Which I think Focus Entertainment are changing their name soon, weirdly. So they're going to be called something else. I think they're called Pull Up. <laughs> it's kind of a weird name. Um, but I thought it looked kind of cool, but I know for people who are hardcore sim purists, it's probably, probably anyway, from the trailer, seemingly, like, becoming a bit more casual. So maybe that wouldn't be good, I don't know. I think it'd be fun to try. I played SnowRunner on stream once before and people liked it. I'm gonna work out the spacing here. Not there. There. Not me. Not Hermione. You. Uh, something's wrong. Hang on. It's so difficult to see. Is this not coming up far enough? Oh, yeah, that's why. Uh, I don't know if you heard of it, but Captain of Industry is a really good game as well. Yeah, I, I have heard of it, yeah. I'd be interested in playing that, but the thing is, a lot of the games that I'd be considering, at least for the channel, not just on my own time, would be things that are either new or getting like a 1.0 release, something like that. So Dyson Sphere program, it's like, oh, I'd play that when it's approaching 1.0. Because as a, as a YouTuber, I just need to try and get in when other people are 
searching the game and playing it for the first time and checking it out when it's got some buzz about it, you know? Um, so that's why I'm a little hesitant when people say like, oh, what about Transport Fever? Or just games that have been out for a while. It's like, it's nothing against the game. It's just purely based on the viability of being able to do YouTube and get views for it. I would need it to be something that I can lean on to gain new audiences rather than just have portions of an old audience not watch it, you know? If you're going to have some people not come along for the ride, you need to gain new people as well at the same time, I guess. All right, looking good. Two lanes done, two to go. Jamie, <laughs> you got the... <laughs> I appreciate that. But for the Harry Potter reference, if you know, you know. Uh, thank you, by the way. That's a really considerate super chat, so thank you. Uh, so many things in Dice's for program I wish Satisfactory would put in. That seems to be true of, like, no offense to the devs of this game or anything. I think they're, I don't know, a, a small team, I guess. But it seems like the other factory games all have better features than this one. But this one's selling point is the fact that it's like, looks really good and it's 3D. Like it, it kind of tells you where their priorities are. And I agree with their priorities to be honest. The fact that they ported their game to Unreal 5 rather than adding features like, you know, tracking your factory's optimization in different places. You know what I mean? Like their their priorities clearly are on the look and the feel of the game rather than the factory aspect of it necessarily. I think where's the center point of this one? That's the edge of the factory there. So one, two, and then you're into the the three, the edge of the factory over there. It would be down the center here, but that seems different than all the other ones. Well, let me just, I suppose I could just count it over. It's just one tile over and then this line. So it would have to be this line. Yeah, if you want to keep it symmetrical. Which we do. Why this won't just... <laughs> I'm trying to just snap it to... There we go. Is that it? No, it'll have to be one over from that even. That's okay. Makes it easier now. All right, got it. Uh, it's UE5 that makes Satisfactory better, in my opinion. How do you intend to punish a truck? I mean, the worst you could possibly do is deconstruct it. Sorry, what? Oh, right. Azri. It wasn't so bad. I had room to just drain the manifold system to a sink, then reconnect everything. Now to punish the offending truck. Drive it off a cliff. Put, a, put some novelisks below it. I don't know if this would work, but underneath it, like a bunch. And just detonate them. Trucks actually do have damage. I've never thought about it before. But they have a health bar. What happens when the health bar runs out? Do they just disappear and their inventory falls on the ground or something? No idea actually what happens. Sorry, part of me thought I got rotated there for a second, but I don't think it did. I did it last time from up here, so I should do that again. Does that go outside? I can't see. <laughs> the reflection is tricking me. I keep thinking like the light is spilling out outside like it did the first time. It's not doing that anymore now. But they're, they're all, they are all lined up, so that's good. So turning off my torch, this is what we got. While it's sunrise, at least. I love this. I think it looks great. <laughs> it's really... It just, I'm always surprised. I look back at it and I'm like, oh wow. It, it actually looks pretty good. I just didn't think it was going to. <laughs> Like, I think it looks 
like a proper factory, which is pretty nice. There's still little tiny little bits here and there I need to do, but definitely taking shape. Definitely taking shape. It'll just teleport when you leave the area. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's almost like UE5 is made for a game like this. Hi, you're still there? I am. It hurts you more than the truck. I didn't say while well, you're in it. My partner keeps calling this game better Minecraft, and it makes me chuckle every time. <laughs> Yeah, it's certainly like an adult Minecraft in some ways. I, lo I like Minecraft even now. It might be a little unfair to call it that, but it does feel like that in some ways. Especially since the first factory type games I ever played was Minecraft. When uh, the mods for it came out that you could build little factories. Like Tech It. First time automation I'd ever seen happen in a game. I don't... I contest. I haven't done any research, but I actually think it hadn't been done ever before that. And I remember when I said that, some people were like, uh, Factorio, and it's like, mm, Factorio came after the Minecraft automation mods, actually. But, um, yeah, unless it goes back further than that. It's because not many games did crafting in that way, and there wasn't really that need to then refine and make, like, to have something do it for you, I suppose. But I could be just wrong. There could be a game out there I just don't know about that did do it beforehand. Probably something on PC that I just don't know about. Alright, looking good. To be honest, these could come down further. Although we had gaps, didn't we? So we had gaps at two, so you could... Oh yeah, but I was going to put lights there. Hmm. Maybe I should just leave it then like that. They're all groups of five. Wouldn't want to disturb that. Uh, okay. Lights again. Ah, so this is where things will be different now. Oh yeah, because they have two as well. This just had one. That makes sense. Good. Alright. Maybe we could hop upstairs and do that faster. The create mod? Yeah, I played with, um... Oh, what was it called? Immersive engineering. And I found that to be quite overwhelming, but Create is like insane. People are making, literally, it's like almost for real building a train <laughs> in that game. need to line up. So where are we starting from? So the s little spoke at the end starts in line with here. It's going to clip through a little bit. Okay. Oh, so close. I don't know how to get it to line up <laughs> the way I was trying to do it there. Take this one. I think it's because when I built the tower, that's is this tower lined up with that one? Uh, yes. <laughs> I think. And that's where I did the first one actually. So I think it was done like this. The long bit going forward. Alright, would that be right? So that's where the light would be starting. That is in line with that one, actually. So yeah, that's right. Good. Alright, so I have to go get more crystal oscillators. Just run a little short. Uh, but while I'm here, there's also this bit needs to be painted blue and white. But we saved that, so... No problem. That's just the color the factory uses overall. It is also the color for screws, so that's maybe mildly confusing. <laughs> I 
Everything else all good? I think so. Alright, let's see how many crystal oscillators we made in all that time. It was two and a half per minute. Not sure how many minutes passed by, but let's find out. Found a few good tips on this stream as well with that, um... That concrete coloring thing that we learned earlier. Becca Classic was dope for Minecraft. Yeah, that was like the best. I was like, so cool. I'm just going to dig out this big quarry and there's these pipes that transfer goods along them. It was so interesting how back then it wasn't belts. It was like tubes that just moved things. Sixty-four. What a great number. All right, let's go. Still have to do the walls at the bottom. Still have to do the water extractors, but I'll do that on my own. I don't think there'll be any more cosmetic stream for this place. Well, I'm glad that I got the roof on and the lights for this. This is looking good now. And we have all our stuff moving along seamlessly. Seems to be working quite well. Itself is a blueprint, so it doesn't really like me standing on it when trying to place other blueprints. It gets jealous. Ah, oh, you bastard. Right, sorry. Okay, so, more glass. This should be the last bit now. So that... Oh, is it uneven? Oh my god, after all this... It would have to be... Because that's one tile there, then two, and then one, and then it would be here. But it should come out by two. Oh. Tragedy. I could extend the walls out, and I'd be really tempted to do that. Just so it's symmetrical. I think I will. <laughs> It's blueprinted anyway, so those walls should be quick. But yeah, that's super annoying for that to happen. I don't know what's just after happening, but my cat just ran here in here. He's done something wrong. Yeah, okay. Did she do something? What'd she do? Ah, oh, And you could tell she came running. We're having issues with our cat. She's um being indoors. We have two cats, and um, we got this, we have two cats, one is like uh, four years old, and one is like two years old, just about to be two. And the, the younger cat, her name is Jinx, but Jinx is the younger cat, and she was spayed when she was like a year old, something like that. And everything was fine. Nyx is the older cat, NYX, and she was never spayed, because she has a really weird kind of heat cycle thing where she wasn't bothered by it uh, she would only get bothered by it during winter so for those who don't know cats every like six weeks or something go into heat and they basically uh, female cats and they just sit around like moaning and they can be quite uncomfortable from it you can hear them like kind of in distress and uncomfortable and they're trying to like fix themselves and all sorts of things and they just you can tell they do not like it um or at least they don't like the idea of not getting something. <laughs> Hang on, I need to find that blueprint. I'm after losing it. Anyways, long story short, Nyx, for some reason, doesn't go into heat like a normal cat. She only would go into heat during winter, just for three months of the year. But because of that, we just never really decided to get her spayed, because it just seemed like, oh, she only goes into heat like three times a year, and then she's fine. Let's just leave it. But anyways, once recently, when we got the other cat, um, she started getting more territorial. So we were like, oh, okay. Probably have to get her spayed. If we want to see if we can have these two cats live together. And, uh, cats and stuff recommend doing that anyway. She's an indoor cat, so it, we, it's not like she was out and about. Anyway, so we got Nick spayed, and a few, since then, since now, that was a few months ago. Since then, they've been kind of fighting a little bit. Um, nothing too crazy, but they're like kind of hissing at each other and they're not really getting along. And 
we kind of think like they're not really they're kind of fighting for where they pee and stuff and they have two litter boxes they have two separate ones but they'll just pee in both and then our older cat is now sort of just peeing randomly in like different places is it seems like if she goes into the litter tray the smaller cat will like kind of run in after <laughs> or be near her and kind of stress her out anyway cat problems there you go <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're just not really too sure what to do about it, because we love both our cats. And uh, it's just this ongoing struggle that we have right now, where it's like, uh, not really living together properly. And they'll sit with each other and kind of get along. But then just every now and then, they just seem to like break out into a little mini fight. Be hissing and going to the bathroom in the wrong place and stuff. Ugh, so it's just one of these issues. So I woke up this morning actually at 6am because the cats were hissing at each other. And then I went back to sleep. If you remember, I started the stream saying that I had just woken up because I had a late nap. I had a cat that would do that, never got it figured out. Even the vet was clueless. Oh, about the... Yeah, that that was strange. The vet didn't really know about it. She was like, that's really weird. She's like, are you sure? She almost like didn't believe it. She's like, are you sure? It's like, yeah, she doesn't go into eat. I promise you. <laughs> Uh, we've had her three years and we were sure of it, you know? That's going to be a door. Get back up to here. Let's go across. Cool. This looks a bit better inside now as well. Or outside, I should say. Change the colors of that last bit and then just redo this as well. But it's really funny because the the younger cat is much smaller and she seems to be and she's like so friendly it's like such a friendly cat like so friendly with humans anyway but um when they're getting fed and put their food down and they're i don't know a meter or two apart they're fairly far apart relatively speaking the younger cat just like as we're about to feed them we're like okay like it's time for food and they're getting all excited and ready for food the younger cat just constantly is like pushing up against the bigger one like just pushing her face into her and running in front of her running in front of her bowl and stuff and it's like i'm like what are you being such a little bitch for it's like kind of i don't know if she's doing it on purpose but she's like basically blocking her food it's like no you're not going at, you're not going there i'm there <laughs> And it's like, but you're in two different areas. Just stand where yours is. You're not getting any more or less. But it seems like she's being territorial. But she could also just be being playful. Uh, when we used to feed them on their own, like, they'd rub their heads up against, you know, the, the sides of the walls and stuff. I, so I feel like she's just doing that with the other cat, in a way. The other cat just doesn't want it. Right. But we don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to understand their weird world, their behaviors. <laughs> All right, so now our skylight is symmetrical. I'd love to see it. Thanks for listening, coming to my cat TED talk. Some cats uh, like to use a different litter box for one and two. Mm. Yeah, so we have two litter boxes, but we decided to move one recently. And since we've moved it, now our cat is just like peeing out on the floor where the old one used to be, or just in locations really close to the other ones. It's like so strange. Um, but not to get graphic, her number twos aren't looking so good. So it's like, oh, I think she's like stressed out as well. <laughs> she seems to be doing it in a hurry. <laughs> um, but yeah, cat ownership. All right, last thing, paint this roof and then I think we're done for the day. And then we can have a quick maybe fly around it and have a look at everything we've done. I'm sorry, I probably missed a bunch of stuff there, even if n equals zero. I could be missing the context to that. Oh, right. It's recommended to have N plus one litter boxes. <laughs> That's funny. We've had the other cat for like a year now, so it has been a while. It's like they've never had like any major problem, but it does seem like lately it's just like, ugh, 
Since they've both been spayed, they just seem to be constantly having like some sort of peeing issue like every other day now. The, the little one never has a problem. She's great. She just goes to the bathroom, like covers it up and everything. She's awesome. Our big cat is just like, she goes in, takes a shit, and then just like doesn't do anything and runs out of there. And then she's basically peeing somewhere else now. So it's like, oh great. Broken. Brain is broken for some reason with this. Sorry to be vulgar. <laughs> So last things I gotta do for this myself, I gotta finish off those towers, they're gonna be metal. White metal walls, maybe with some of that steel trim on it every now and then. The water extractor area needs just a little little enclosure kind of, little roof on it, little standard walls going around it. Might just quickly run over to the quartz one, because that's the one I'm inspired by myself. And I'll probably do something similar to that over there. Uh, and then the bottom floor just needs its walls and windows, which are gonna be pretty much the same as the top floor need to make a new blueprint for the hu different height because the floor is taller than the one we're on. Happy is one of the rankest aromas to exist. Yeah, it's not great. It's actually, I gotta be honest, it's not too bad. I don't know if it's because she's an indoor cat or whatever, but like, I remember... Oh, he just crests right over the edge of that tower. That's cool. Um... Yeah, I've, I've basically, when they were younger and kittens, it used to be really, really bad. Now, either, I hope, maybe hopefully not, but maybe I've just gotten more used to it, but I feel like it's not that bad. Not like a territorial, like, overpowering. Apparently, male cats are worse for that. So. It could be part of it, too. But they're given, like, indoor cat food and stuff, so maybe it's just not that bad. All right, here we go. White roofs. So we have to make a little bridge here. Oh yeah, the minor enclosure area as well needs to be done. That's it. That's going to be it for all the cosmetics we're doing on the stream today. Quite happy. Let's go over what we did. So, from the previous stream, I did the entire bottom floor and we mapped out all the truck stations and created the overflow system. So, that's all working really, really well. Nothing seems to have gotten backed up. I don't think any of these have powered down. They're not full of uh, ingots or anything, so that's great. But yep, they're all working just fine. And check our power line to check in on that. Um, oh yeah, I meant to add like strip lighting in there and things. So this area is looking pretty nice. I'll tell you what, we'll take off our shoes. Walk around a bit more normally. So this area just needs its walls and stuff and then the towers need to be improved. But we'll go upstairs now. That was another thing I added, the towers. But some of these windows will be just changed to concrete or the, the metal again. But our truck station area then is here. And today we've just now... Probably should have a little exit here. Maybe we could even just chop that bit away. And we put down a pattern, perhaps, on the customizer, just to say, like, it's a little... Maybe watch yourself kind of thing. Uh, need to make that secondary color streetlight yellow. There we go. And, uh... Yeah, I don't think I could do anything else with that. No, not really. Yeah, I was just thinking of doing something similar, but like with just a line. But I'll leave it. Actually, no, yeah, I'll leave it. <laughs> Alright, anyways. So yeah, we did this entire area. So we're using the fluorescent lighting I developed for the quartz factory. All the way down. So that's just using those giant crystal oscillator screens again. And then we have the skylights here just to let a bit of natural light in as well. Of course, on the edges too. Um, if you are coming in from the road, for some reason you're walking and there's just such busy traffic here and, you know, trying to be realistic and you weren't running over, you would take the pathway down this way, up and over and into the stairwell, which we have propped up with some little stilts. Kind of look kind of cool. So happy about that. Truck stations have their numeric designations. They'll probably have a sign above each one just to denote what they do, what they take and distribute. Uh, and then everything comes in that way and goes around that way. Again, signs probably above the doors. Something I need to work on. And then the sort of no-go area in the center. The trucks just to know to come down and around. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Quite happy with the area. I think it looks good. The lighting obviously just does everything for me. Here we were just playing around with um, textures on the ground. Go upstairs now. 
Uh, this is the factory that I'm working on right now. It, we're just doing the cosmetics, Andrew, and I'm um, pretty much just finishing up for the night because just hit seven hours. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this will be the top floor then. This is our iron factory. So if you've seen the video for it that went out recently, it hasn't changed materially in terms of what it does. Excuse me, in terms of what it does, we've just done the cosmetics. Some cats like a different litter box for one and two, but they also don't like to share, so that's why you need one more litter box than you have cats. Yeah, that seems extreme, though. I mean, uh, well, for my place, I'm in an apartment with four rooms, so I don't think we could do that. But um, you might be right. I mean, it might, that might have to be the case. Maybe we're hoping to move sometime either at the end of this year or next year, depending on things. And if we do get a house, then hopefully we'd have the room for that kind of thing. Maybe. Um, all right, so this area here is the overflow for... So we've color designated the factory, really. That's the important thing. And I need to create some openings in the fence every now and then just to let us in to get to the ladders and so on. So that still has to be done as I go around. That's why we walk around it to see where can we actually go. So the main two outputs of the factory would be the reinforced iron plates and the rotors. We're making just under 60 per minute. It's like 57.6 or something. It's, it's expected to see those little bits of gaps. Uh, for the reinforced iron plates, I believe it's 40 per minute. We've color-coded the factory now so that purple is the color for reinforced iron plates, red for rotors, green for iron rods, orange for iron plates, and blue for screws. And the generic kind of color of the factory is blue as well. So we can f trace all those lines back to where they come by following their color and looking for the uh, splitters and mergers where they're used, which also kind of helps. Um, every now and then we have these little ladders that can carry us up to the upper floors. We can see the percentages of the clock speed of every machine down below, so that looks quite nice, I think. Quite happy with that. So, on one of the upper floors... Um, yeah, we just have railing and kind of keeping us intact in all these different areas. I just realized that the one thing I haven't added yet is the small skylights that go into these floors. They're on the other side, but not on this side just yet. Um, but not keeping it intact, sorry, keeping it segmented away from the other sections. So, I'll have to go around and fix belt obscurities like this that haven't been colored yet, but you get the idea generally, I think, at this point. Quite liking the mix of lights and skylights, alternating. Seems to have done really well with the global illumination, just lighting up the whole place quite nicely. Pretty happy with all that, and we have our solid 480 belts coming in each way. Uh, for each group, I should say. Make a way across out here. They all connect to each other with their little catwalks and crossings. All of our 480 belts are looking good. Moving 480 at a time, it seems. Looks like it anyway. Slight slowdown on maybe the iron ingots there, but... I don't see any yellow lights or any flickering or anything that would indicate they've gotten backed up. We'd know that by now for sure, because we've been running so long, some of them would definitely be backed up by now. Yeah, we can kind of, although it is super bright, see down there. Just to get a general idea before we actually walk down, I guess. It depends on the time of day and the lighting, but we're getting a lot of reflections. Um, the only thing that needs to be changed here is that the power poles now are going to be on the roof. So I have to do that later. So you'll still see the power lines on each block, um, but it won't be... won't have the power poles in a line down here. This will just be for us walking around. I downloaded the world and it didn't let me play. I don't know why that would be the case. Nothing to do with me. The save file should be totally fine. Everyone can use it. And the instructions on where to place it and how to use it are in the... Uh, in the description of the... Sorry, yeah. When you go to actually where the saves are located, there's an instruction file on like, how to place them in and everything. Um, it's only 4 o'clock. Yeah, I'm in the UK. For me, it is now 9 p.m. I started the stream at 2 p.m. All right, I think that's pretty much it. That's it for the tour. One other thing I'd like to do up here eventually is just um, make a kind of a sign area just over here in between where these two lifts are. Also, I'm surprised they haven't changed their color yet. Supposed to have changed their color. Uh, yeah, in this area here, it's like a nice little... It just seems perfect for displaying some signs and some information about this entire build just so people can who are joining can follow it around and see where things go. Um, so I'll probably do that. But just some signs and maybe um, a crafting bench or something. 
some boxes, just some loose materials, just in case. I don't know. I always like leaving little bits around the factory like that. Uh, and that's basically it. So, still need to do the water extraction area and the mining area and put the walls on the bottom. But after that, that's it. <laughs> Alright, so we'll save it there. This save will now be available after the stream called Iron Factory Updated. And I'll be adding to it either tonight or tomorrow. I'll finish it off and then upload that save as well. I want to say something on how I use your series. I just see it as an inspiration to a build. I've not done the Copper Factory since my save isn't in need of that yet, but I have done the Quartz. Yeah, that's exactly, that's great. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. I don't think people should copy me or build like me. Um, for the people who don't have the time, maybe, or they just don't want to think about that stuff, it's a great way of offloading that to someone else who's doing the thinking for you, and you can just kind of do the building and maybe put a few little bits of your own spin on things. But I highly recommend people just do their own spin on things and take inspiration from what I'm doing. Or if they see the recipes I'm using, it's like, yeah, you can maybe use the same thing, but maybe build it in a different way. I don't know. I got no problem with it either way, though. Either way, though. It is built to be built along with, but I think it's my favorite thing is when people tell me they've taken inspiration and they just do something slightly different with it. That's usually my favorite thing. Um, but yeah, we'll just have a look over here at the water. So this is probably how I'm going to do the water. Bonk. All right, this is my quartz build. before I won't spend too long on it but same sort of idea it's where I first used that fluorescent lighting idea and uh, this is a factory that's capable of running 600 per minute on the belt it's currently running 300 so as a result we only use the first five machines the latter four machines are waiting until we make that upgrade once we make that upgrade um, yeah they'll all output onto the same belt nothing else needs to change that's really nice Oh yeah, I need to update those colors. We updated those belts, upgraded the belts, sorry, but I didn't actually change the colors. Um, so all of this stuff comes from the, or a lot of it comes from the water downstairs. Just out down this tower. I copy yours, but tweak it a bit. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Because at a certain point, I feel like you're just not really playing the game if you're just doing what someone else does exactly. Um... So it's nice to go like, yeah, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, but then I've got more time than Darren. Like, I'm, I only put one video out a week, so maybe if you're just still, still playing, it's like, yeah, you now know how to do your own things or change certain things around or make it better, really. All right, here we are, the water extraction room. So this is kind of what I want the other water extraction room to look like. Although it's uneven, because it just wraps around a very small little pond. This one is even, because it's on a big body of water, so it's easy to make it, like, symmetrical. Uh, so quite happy about that. Floors are a little wet down here. A little squelchy. Oh yeah, I love it. Super happy with how this turned out. This was a nightmare to build in terms of getting it to look as good as it does. But, and yeah, this side doesn't look great. <laughs> Uh, and then the other bridge leads all the way out to the staircase that leads down to our uh, truck stations for this stuff to actually come in. So inside of this walkway, all the output of the quartz crystal is running along it. And then it shoots out and goes down here. And out into the truck station. We need an overflow. So... I had one in mind, but I realized one isn't enough. It needs two. And unfortunately, uh, because of that, and because of the way the sand is, I'll probably end up building this, but like out here, like that. Yeah, that's probably what will happen. So I'll get rid of that when I get some time. That's the only thing that's kind of left in the world I'm not happy with, apart from the copper Caterium factory. Everything else here is good. Good to go. Oh, all right, so that's pretty much it. Have I played Terratech? Terratech. Let's have a look at what Terratech is. Uh, no. Never played it. Don't think I ever heard of it. 
Open World Sandbox Adventure. We design and build your own creations through a mix of crafting, combat, and discovery. Design vehicles from a huge library of blocks. Scavenge craft and buy new parts to survive and become the ultimate planetary prospector. Yeah, seems alright. There's like a lot, so many of these different games. Like, they all seem so similar. Like, Planet Crafter, I think, is another one. Like to me, I, I know they're different, but to me, it's like these games are just kind of interchangeable at this point. So I'm just like, eh, I'm happy with Satisfactory <laughs> for now. These, you know, really high reviews. People seem to like it. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm, I've got my content full anyway with Satisfactory and City Skylines right now. No time to do anything else. Um, all right, that's going to have to be it for this episode. Thanks again for all the support. Appreciate the new subs. Appreciate the uh, channel memberships and super chats and the gifted memberships as well. That's really, really helped. Uh, and it just keeps the support going for me to do and encourages me to do more streams. So I do appreciate it. All right, that'll have to be it for me. Uh, not sure when the next video in the series is, but I'm working on it now. I think the next video up for me is again going to be another City Skylines and then it's satisfactory. The video upload days are always Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I just don't know exactly which days get which at the moment. But this Tuesday is going to be City Skylines. So Thursday, probably satisfactory for the parts factory. One last thing I wanted to check is, how's that power line looking? Pretty clean. Pretty clean. It's just the truck stations that move it up and down, I think. I think, anyway. So I've been tempted to put all the truck stations onto one power line separately to the main grid and just see does that change anything. But you can see the production is now a nice, stable 6,000. Max consumption is obviously set as well. Yep. All right. I never see it fluctuate more than increments of 20, and every station is 20. So that's the thing that makes me think, like, yeah, that sounds right. That stations are just the ones that are activating and not activating. All right, it's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll hopefully see you later on in the week. If we do another stream, I'll let you know. Make sure you join my Discord, discord.gg slash WDP. If you want any information about this particular world, save, blueprints, all of that stuff is available. WhatDarrenPlays.com slash satisfactory. For free, you don't have to be a channel member or subscriber or anything. Um, and the save file will be up a little bit later tonight. Uh, oh yeah, I played Metal Gear Solid, Matthew. Massive fan of it. I'm not looking. I, I'm for. So he asks, "Am I looking forward to Metal Gear Solid Delta?" Metal Gear Solid Three is like my favorite, one of my favorite games of all time. Possibly like top three, definitely top three. Final Fantasy Seven, Last of Us, Journey, Metal Gear Solid Three. Possibly even Octopath Traveler 2. Um, those would be like the top fr front run and Rome Total War. Front runners from like my favorite games of all time. So am I looking forward to Delta? I'm like cautiously optimistic. Konami doesn't really so much confidence in terms of their what they're putting out at the moment. So just I'll wait and see. But even so, and like Kojima's not involved. So it's like, eh, you know doesn't take away from what I've had and what I enjoy which is Metal Gear 3 and I know the series like on the, like really well <laughs> I'm like a big lore nerd for that series it's kind of embarrassing um so yeah big fan of it I actually never played 5 though just didn't I played Ground Zeroes and then I kind of had I found out that 5 didn't have much story and then I just read the story online <laughs> so I've never really played it uh but I liked Ground Zeroes a lot just didn't like how they changed the voice actor so if Snake doesn't have David Hayter's voice, honestly, don't even think I'll bother. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be it. All right. 